विकास के सारे काम ठप पड़ गए थे इन तीन मुद्दों को लेकर और भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने जो घोषणा पत्र जारी किया मोदी जी के गारंटी एक सबसे बड़ा विश्वास था सर महिलाओं का वोटिंग परसेंटेज काफी ज्यादा रहा क्या लीकर बैंक का जो उनका मुद्दा था जो वो प्रॉमिस किए थे वो एक वो महिलाओं के बारह हजार रूपया मासिक देने की योजना और महिलाओं को आ, सम्मान के साथ पांच सौ रूपया गैस सिलेंडर में देने की बात और अठारह लाख आवास देने की बात इन मुद्दों को लेकर उनके अंदर बात आई फॉर्मर चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ and the interesting thing is when he comes out in this fashion he is in some ways staking claim he was never really projected the likes of arun sahu or maybe even an op choudhary braj mohan agarwal those are the kind of faces the bjp put out but shivraj singh chauhan and raman singh both coming out and staking claim and it's very clear from these numbers at this moment that it could be three nil in the hindi heartland bad news Some decent Rashid Kidwai or Messi, the Laddus are leaving the Congress office. It seems. Yeah, वो कह रहे हैं उसकी मिठास चली गई. तो मिठास चली गई कि Laddus भी कह रहे हैं. अरे यार मत. The message to the Congress again and again. You celebrate prematurely at seven in the morning. Who brings Laddus to the party office? And let me tell you this. Two months ago, the BJP looked in trouble in both Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Look at how they worked there. In Chhattisgarh, they concentrated on the Sahu Samaj. They concentrated on. uh bringing back raman singh into the fold so you had a older leadership as well which was being looked after they targeted the women voter consciously they targeted bupesh baghel on on corruption put up a strong candidate against bupesh baghel lot of micro management rahul the difference i maintain between the congress and the bjp especially in the hindi heartland organizationally and micro management is much better the congress on the other hand thought satishgarh is a done deal and the congress thought or so thought kamal nath that madhya pradesh is a done deal you paid for your over confidence yeah. and the bjp is just too strong an election machine to be ever uh, you know to be ever thought that you can pummel them into submission I, karnataka I, 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 and kamal nath rebuffed <coughs> sp for Hello? even four or five seats they kon hai ye akhilesh vakilesh i mean you can't talk like this kon hai ye akhilesh vakilesh during the recent uh, diwali milan and then once again over dinner recently i had a long conversation with home minister amit shah around his level of confidence for madhya pradesh and chatisgarh and Mad rajasthan i said that the polls seem to suggest a much tighter fight what gives you this confidence and what amit shah said i think is very important uh, for viewers to understand what seems to have happened in these states he says if the poll shows that 100 people are voting for the congress listen carefully to what i'm saying it's not wrong that could really be what the poll shows maybe 80 people are voting for the bjp in that poll and that poll is correct he says the limitation with the poll is that the poll doesn't account for how many people the party can bring out on polling day to the booth and get them to vote so if 100 said they were voting for the congress but only 70 showed up 30 who said they wanted to vote for congress didn't go to the polling booth did not vote the congress gets only 70 but if 80 said they wanted to vote for the bjp but if the bjp is able to pull out say 75 of them you are still 75 versus 70 on counting day he says that's the one thing the pollsters cannot account for my ability the party's ability to bring voters to the polling booth on polling day that is the big difference if the congress is losing chatisgarh at this moment it is the micro management of the bjp that's helped them if they're winning that big in uh, madhya pradesh it's their ability to manage this election the congress in telangana is doing well but in the hindi heartland of the direct power versus the bjp the congress has been bested at the hustings except for the 2018 election show me one election in the hindi heartland and now i'm going back to a decade and more where the congress has bested the bjp where is it in the hindi heartland where the congress has bested the bjp you've seen what's happened in uttar pradesh over the years the congress is a completely fringe figure in rajasthan they won last time and they lost this time they'll say it's rotational chief minister chalo we'll give you that that every 5 years the government changes madhya pradesh how can you go you know you you believed that you had the state for the grabs you lose it chatisgarh you are over confident thinking bupesh baghel won by a two third majority last time jitna bhi kam hoga 15 20 kam ho jayenge i spoke to a congressman 3 days ago i said chatisgarh mein kya hai nahi 50 55 to aane hi hai uske upar aayenge to acha how नहीं नहीं लास्ट टाइम थोड़ा कम हुआ है लेकिन इतना नहीं दैट मींस यू हैव नॉट डन योर माइक्रो लेवल मैनेजमेंट यू शुड हैव अकोमोडेटेड एन अरविंद नेतम यू शुड हैव अकोमोडेटेड लोकल लीडर्स देयर वाज यू अनलेस यू डू योर लोकल लेवल मैनेजमेंट एज यू सेड राहुल 
the last time correct me if i'm wrong the congress has won two consecutive governments two consecutive government mean reelected is uh, tarun gogoi in a big state in, tarun gogoi in 2011 mukul sangma when was the last time the congress has uh, defeated anti incumbency and won only mm -hmm. tarun gogoi last in 2011 that means for the last 12 years whenever you win also you know how to grab defeat from no, the jaws of victory then you go back to the previous election in 98 mukul sangma in 2013 and ibobi singh was at that Chota time in congress in 2000 you go back to digvijay singh in 98 no so there is no, a no, problem no. Before that, there was Sheila Dixit. Ah, she was. No, but isn't there a no, no, but Rahul? I love election trivia. So don't mess with me. No, no, but Rahul Kaval. <laughs> isn't there a isn't there isn't there a question to be asked that if you cannot, you, you know, the BJP is able every now and then to get its governments re-elected. They did it in Uttar Pradesh. Every Pradesh. now and then they're doing it again no, no, and again. Uttar every Pradesh, now and then is not the right Uttar way to put Pradesh, it. Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana are all examples where the BJP has shown the power to get their governments re-elected. So they are able to best anti incumbency by a mix of welfareism decent governance in some instances and the micro management that you spoke about on the other hand the congress party has not been able to do it for the last 10 years yeah. and then therefore the charge will be sarkar banti hai and then you are arrogant in power you know sarkar to ban gayi ab rahegi no no right no, 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 but you look at this way you see if you trust uh, you know regional leadership of kamal nath bhupesh baghel and Ashok Gehlot, you are accused of you know not doing anything. If you take everything in control, you say there is over centralisation. There are a lot of factors. It's not simple. Look at welfareism. You know, Ashok Gehlot did uh, try to do uh, uh, do that. Bhupesh Baghel tried. It failed. Maybe there is a lot of undercurrent for Ram Temple and all. I mean, we do not know why the BJP is winning with such a big margin. And, I mean, is it answer. undercurrent of, for Ram Temple, Rahul Gandhi, or is it that the Congress simply at the is unable to handle power once they are in power? the accusation is they become atm machines i mean that their governments are used to 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 you know simply finance other you know, you know if you look at rajasthan to be fair to ashok gehlot he's been chief minister three times he's run reasonable governments yeah but it is the nature of the it is he's run reasonable governments to be fair to him He's run reasonable governments. There are papers in the nature of, no, of, no, no, of but, but, a, a bipolar polity that he loses. No, I'll tell you what happened. And Preeti, you'll remember this. I, I, the youth of Rajasthan. Any young man I met said, "Look, here, paper leak. How does it happen? No one is going to be honest. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Can I be honest? I've traveled all across Gujarat as well. And at that time, paper leaks was a huge issue. Did they vote on it? No. To be honest, I don't think the vote has really come on paper leak. And to put to give Gelot at 72, Gelot has lost miserably the last time he was 21. But the first point. in indian politics you are always going to see more people unhappy with any government than you are going to see happy it's the just the nature of politics that's why it's called as cost of ruling mm -hmm. i think what like even we were all thinking that bjp has a state problem uh, and modi has to come every time to pull up uh, 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 the state in fact these elections are showing that bjp is a very agile and a very very yes. adaptable party it's more party, cohesive right? rajdeep uh, and 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 they 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 basically change uh what you call micro manage or uh, micro detailing they they plan much more like perhaps as australia planned uh, against india in the world cup finals they uh, not just outplayed but they had out thought about uh, what the soil is going to look like what the how uh, uh, in in so you're equating yeah. india with the no congress, but the central the central leadership in no, the no, congress I'm, doesn't really work with the state leadership it's happened at various levels you had Uh, you know in madhya pradesh i remember three or four of rahul gandhi's rallies were cancelled because he just wasn't popular enough you had murmurs within the congress local unit that kamal nath wasn't listening to the central leadership uh, when you look at uh, rajasthan gelot ran this campaign practically on his own could uh, sachin pilot have been better accommodated definitely you could see all was not well even though rahul gandhi was going to rajasthan you could see that all's not well in that unit okay I'm so the big story at this moment a bjp wave in the heartland 152 out of 300 230 in madhya pradesh 106 out of 199 in rajasthan and now a convincing 52 out of 90 the bharatiya janata party is taking claim to 2024 already with a very sound performance in the hindi heartland jayveer singh joins us now from the bjp jayveer a big victory for the bjp in the hindi heartland uh Chhattisgarh initially seemed a bit tricky, but now as the rounds get counted, settling in quite comfortably in favour of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, Rahul, good morning. Uh, it is going to be balle balle 
for the Bharatiya Janata Party in all the three states. The Dhol and the Laddu celebration is going to come into the BJP scam. The question is what will happen to all the Laddus which the Congress party ordered. Number two, the clear message is that Mr. Rahul Gandhi's politics of abusing the Prime Minister, appeasement and betraying the voter has been outrightly rejected. Let's not forget he conducted the Bharat Jodo Yatra in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. The Bharat Jodo Yatra has proven to be voter Todo Yatra for the Congress party as far as these two states are concerned. Chhattisgarh, it is not surprising. The voter was feeling upset. The Mr. Bhagel has only filled the coffers of the AICC high command rather than putting something in the jholi of the voter and the result is in front of you. The Another message is clear that in for 2024, Ye dil maage more Modi sarkar once more. In 2018, BJP did not open an account. The score was 5-0 and the result was in front of you in 2019. Now imagine what will happen in when BJP has three states in 2024. Will the Congress be only relegated to a regional party? I think the day is not far. Can I, can I ask you this, Jaivir, because you are well placed to answer this question. What's the difference between the Congress and the BJP? You worked in the Congress, you worked in the BJP. What's the single biggest difference, according to you, between the two parties? Rajiv, allow me two differences. Number one, BJP knows the art how to win a losing battle. Congress knows the art how to lose a winning battle. Congress fights the elections on Twitter. Congress fights the election on the feedback of psycho fans. Congress fights the election on the feedback of secretaries and OSDs. BJP and Prime Minister fight the election by putting their ear on the ground, by real-time ground pulse, and never taking anything for granted. In Congress, even before the election is announced, there is a fight about post of Chief Minister, who will get the Cabinet Ministership, which PN Secretary which accommodate which individual, who will go for the swearing-in ceremony in Bharatiya Janata Party, we take each day as it comes, we fight the same election from panchayat to parliament in the same passion. And last difference, Radeep, and I must say that because I spend a considerable time in the Congress party. In BJP, the respect of the worker is paramount. And that respect is the reason their blood and sweat that today the BJP's Vijay Rath is entering all the three states. In Congress, the respect of worker is not in Congress's lexicon. It is only a one-way traffic. You know, that. All your arguments are well taken, but with one caveat that five years ago, all these three states were won by the Congress. So we could have said the reverse then about the Congress party. I'm just saying that in politics, what we, the point we were making, once the Congress comes to power, it's unable to retain power. The BJP is able to make comebacks in these states. Why do you think the Congress struggles to retain power? Uh, I think, Radeep, you know, in politics, I'm very well aware, someday you're the pigeon. And someday you're the statue. The issue is, the minute Congress wins an election, they take the next win for granted and it's a hands-up approach. It's a complete surrender approach. Congress ke bhagya bharose aur bhagwan bharose chunao ladna shuru kar deti aur mehnat karni chhod deti hai. Look what is happening in Karnataka. Uh, they have won with a decisive mandate. There are allegations, stink of corruption coming from that state already. Infighting in that state has started already. Congress fo focuses more on their internal fiscal management and fixing management rather than delivering to the voters. BJP does not take any win for granted. One win does not ensure us a win in the second. That is the mantra we go in. We fight every election with the same Sarfaroshi and Shiddat from Panchayat to Parliament. You saw Mr. Amit Shah putting up posters in municipal elections in Hyderabad. I have never seen that culture okay. in Congress party. And that is the major difference. So two things have see. changed from the last time. One, the Congress's lead in Telangana, which had reached 73, is now down to 67. In Rajasthan, the lead of the BJP, which was 104, 105, is now up to 110. Chhattisgarh is 47 versus 42. And I want to take the margin, margin calculator, calculator to Chattisgarh. see if Chhattisgarh is settled or is Chhattisgarh still tight. So, um, Again, as I said, this level of analytics, nobody this can do anywhere on national television. 63 <laughs> seats in Chhattisgarh at this time, where the margin is less than 500 votes, ladies and gentlemen. Less than 500, 63 such seats. The BJP leading on 30, the Congress leading on 32. So at this moment, if anybody is dancing in Chhattisgarh, I'd say just give it some more time, at least one or two more hours. 
for these leads to settle. How many seats have a margin of less than 1,000? 68 such seats. 34 of those for the BJP, 33 of those for the Congress. Chhattisgarh is on a knife's edge at this moment. Very, very tight. Uh, in Rajasthan, though, the BJP's lead is increasing. The one place where one party or one platform is winning without any contest is the live concurrent data where India Today's lead continues to increase over all our competition. India Today now, almost thrice the viewership of our next rival, which is Times Now, Republic at third, NDTV, CNN, Vyond, they're like way low. Nowhere, nowhere in any polling that's happening at this time is the lead quite as much. Remember, this also in some ways is live counting data, and this counting data, Chetan, clearly shows that India today's lead is almost thrice. You could add up times now in Republic, they still wouldn't get to before, anywhere near before India. Before Chetan fact, comes in, can I crack a 80. joke? No, Rajdeep, I think you can add all of them and they still won't come can to I, India can today. I crack? You see, since you have advertised this program as double engine, right? A BJP ka double engine clear hai. Narendra Modi ji or Amit Shah. Hamara double engine kon hai? Who is Narendra Modi? Who is Amit Shah? Who, who do you want to be? Who do I want to be in my next life? No, if you had to choose between, like, between the roles between the both of you. If I had to... Uh, Raul, you go first. You no, want to no. be Amit Shah or Narendra Modi? Arre, no, Come no, on. No, Come on. <laughs> I refuse to... Then I'm you know, this, is like, this is like somebody's laying out a banana peel. That's a trap. Saying, walk over don't, the banana peel. Why will yeah. I walk you over the banana peel? You want to be Amit Shah or Narendra Modi? I, I refuse to... That's like a swinging ball. No, no, you, you just say... Arre, you just, just say, go. I'm a humble worker of the party. That's the No such delusion. And you no. know, BJP has done, I know it is Congress's Telangana, let's give it to them fair and square. But they have, people said BJP will be nowhere in Telangana. They are at seven seats, they were one last time. Uh, the vote share must have increased. They are probably going to increase their Lok Sabha tally there. They are doing really well in the Hindi heartland. I mean, whatever it is, the con whatever it is, the Congress has, like the gentleman before was saying, taken their success for granted. No, but look at that. They erased the Lok Sabha tally the last time. I doubt if they can increase the vote. I actually thought... They were sent for sent nearly. I actually thought... There is a lot happening. Telangana, only five out of the 15 ministers are leading. The 10 of them are trailing, including KCR, who is in third position in Kamareti. That's very embarrassing for him. So let me go across to Telangana. He's trailing by... I mean, show that's all the viewers for a moment. Ravens that's all the viewers for a moment. Those are the votes. chief like candidates the, uh, of Telangana. Upset the chief minister, how the mighty have fallen in Telangana. Uh, K. Chandrasekhar Rao in Kamareti is trailing. He's leading in Gajwel. His son, K. T. Rama Rao, is leading uh, Bandi Sanjay Kumar, who used to head the BJP, is leading in Karim Nagar. Revant Reddy is leading against the chief... Now, just imagine. Right? Revant Reddy is up against Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao in Kama Reddy. Some, I asked him, you're taking a panga, why are you doing this? He currently is leading and that is and, quite and Rao, a big... there's a story there. Because KCR strength is Gajwel. That's where he dominates. Why did he choose a second constituency? The first sign of weakness is when you choose a second constituency. And the first sign of strength is when the opposition leader is ready to say, okay, no, you're contesting no, the second are, place, I'll, I'll come and no, take you No, there are two off. reasons why he chose Kama Reddy. One, of course, he says that's the constituency where I was born, number one. Number two, he wanted to influence Nizamabad, where his daughter is going to stand for election in 2024. It's the adjoining sure, constituency. But when you start contesting two seats, it's the first sign of, a we of some weakness. And when your opposition is willing to take you on yeah. there, it gives a sense to the rest of the card. Because the local Kama Reddy, uh, MLA was not a, a strong candidate. There's another interesting development happening. BJP, seven seats leading. Now, where are they leading? Apart from their usual uh, places where they could have led, Nizamabad, Urban and Armour. Now, both these constituencies have a sizable Muslim population. So, what is happening in Nizamabad district is interesting. So, we can show the seven BJP leads. They're leading in Adilabad, Alampur, Armour, yeah. Gosha Mahal, Karim Nagar and Maheshwaram and Achampet, which is a reserved Dalit seat. Oh, Those are the seven BJP leads. The Congress is leading on 69. Uh, that's up 50. And if you see, the Congress has leads in the north. The Congress has leads, except in the south, where the Congress doesn't seem to have done quite as well which is in surprising. Central, which is a bit surprising, frankly. Because Mehboob Nagar is where uh, uh, Raven Reddy is contesting from, district. So. so we can come once again to some of the VIP seats of Telangana. Uh, Madhu God Yashki uh, is uh, leading in Lal Bahadur Nagar. Raven Reddy is winning on his second seat as well. Itla Rajendran training in Gajwel to K. Chandrasekhar Rao, the nephew of Chief Minister 
K. Chandrasekhar, or Harish Rao is leading in Siddhi Pet. Uh, Itla Rajendran is trailing in Huzurabad as well. Both his seats. On both, both his, his seats, seats he's trailing. Uttam Kumar Reddy is uh, winning in, in Hazura Abhi Nagar. Well. And let's now just look at the overall picture. If I look at how the, same. the map would be had this been a Lok Sabha election. So if you just added all the seats, the BJP currently leading on 325, the Congress on 243, the BJP frankly has Congress hit this ball out, out of the park. If this is a semi-final, at this moment, three. Twenty-five leads for the BJP. Okay, we are predicting one more state. We can say now with some comfort that the BJP will form the government in Jaipur. Rajasthan's reverse of governments changing every five years will be maintained. The BJP now a comfortable 40, almost 50 seats ahead of the Congress. We can say for, with some comfort that the BJP will form the next government in Jaipur. So, BJP forming a government in Jaipur, BJP forming a government in Bhopal, Congress set to form a government in Hyderabad. It is Chhattisgarh where the issue as Rahul showed with that margin calculator is still up in the air. Lots of seats still under 500 and the margin between the two leaders in single digits. Let's go to Nagarjun Dwarkanath who's joining us from Hyderabad. Nagarjun has always knew where the winner was and he's been at Revan Reddy's house over the last few days. Nagarjun? You seem to pick the winner, whether it's in Karnataka or in Hyderabad, you know where the winner is. Where is Revan Kadu? Rajdeep, Rajdeep, could you please repeat the question? It's too loud, you are unable to hear you. Can you please repeat the question? My question is very simple. What is it that, uh, how is it that you manage to find yourself always with the winner? I remember about six months ago, you were outside Siddharamaya's residence. This time you're outside Revant Reddy. Is it a done deal that only Revant will now be the chief minister? And why, did you have some inkling right from the beginning? Helps to be a pilot. Uh, Razdeep, in fact, when I moved to Hyderabad in September, it was clear cut the carders were behind Revant Reddy. And also, when you have off, off record chat with him, you know the way the way leader is thinking, you know the confidence that where the confidence is coming from and the strategy they are doing. In fact, I've met all the three parties here, but uh, it was Raven Reddy who had all the confidence within the Congress party that I kept asking him, how do you manage to get 19 to 60? It's impossible because it should be a tsunami and on, on ground when we go to people, they are still undecided. What Raven Reddy used to... Uh, you have to look at it as a fresh elections. Everyone starts from zero and not from 19. KCR is at zero, we are at zero. Both are starting afresh and this is a fresh election. You can't carry forward the previous seat, is what he used to say. But look at the celebrations already. They have decided that he's going to be the chief minister, at least his followers. They're celebrating. They're celebrating with crackers. They're celebrating with dolls flags at Raven Reddy's house and of course India Today is also here to cover all the colour and I'll try my best to get his interview first like how we got Sidramaya, like how we got Mr. Basaraj Bombay. So uh, Raman Singh is speaking to uh, our correspondent in Raipur. I want to go across and see if we can catch uh, that interview. Here it is. PSC ki bharti aur mahilaon ke saath jis prakar ka kaam hua, jis prakar ghosna karke shrab bandi ke mahila ko chal gaya, ye uska natija hai. Kya lagta hai aapko? Koon koon se issues? Corruption ko aap pure 5 saal tak uthate rahe, berozgari ko aap uthate rahe. Lekin gaon mein jaisa kaha ja raha tha ki Congress party achha karegi, aisa bhi hota hua nahi dikh raha hai. To kya lagta hai aapko? Koon se issues hai jo aapke favor mein jinhone kaam kiya? गांव में और शहर में जबरदस्त रूप से भूपेश के खिलाफ आक्रोश था उनकी नीतियों के खिलाफ आक्रोश था उनके कार्य पद्धति के खिलाफ आक्रोश था और उसको न... <coughs> आज जो रुझान दिख रहा है वही उसका नतीजा है आपके पड़ोसी राज्य में भी आ, जो भाजपा है वो अच्छा कर रही है आ, लगातार आप पांचवी बार मुख्यमंत्री बनने की तैयारी में है शिवराज जी भी बधाई दूंगा राजस्थान को भी सारे कार्यकर्ताओं को बधाई दूंगा राजस्थान में मध्य प्रदेश में छत्तीसगढ़ में तीनों जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी का परचम लहरा रहा है इसका यदि क्रेडिट एक लाइन में दूं तो मानी प्रधानमंत्री जी की योजनाएं प्रधानमंत्री जी की गारंटी और नरेंद्र मोदी जी और मानी 
अमित शाह जी ने माननीय प्रदेश राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष जी ने जिस प्रकार नड्डा जी ने मेहनत किया उसका नतीजा तीनों राज्यों का रिजल्ट है सस्ता सिलेंडर देना और जो मैदारी योजना है आपको लगता है कि ये सब चीजें भी लोगों में गई और इनका फायदा मिला आपको निश्चित रूप से महिलाओं के लिए बारह हजार के देने की योजना का असर हुआ और किसानों को इकतीस रुपये में धान खरीदी का वादा और दो साल का बोनस मेरे सा, मेरे सामने मिठाई रखी हुई है मैं जाऊंगा मेरे कैमरा पर्सन दिखाएं आपको खिलाएगा आला कमान और दोबारा से मुख्यमंत्री पद पर आसीन करेगा तीन पंद्रह साल आप रहे मुख्यमंत्री बीजेपी का बनेगा ये तय हो चुका है कौन बनेगा ये चेहरा विधायक दल तय करेगा होगी बैठक आज हमारे वरिष्ठ नेता आएंगे शाम को और एक बार बैठ के चर्चा करेंगे धन्यवाद हमसे बात करने के लिए ये थे डॉक्टर रमन सिंह यू हैव टू चीफ मिनिस्टर रमन सिंह 47 leads for the BJP, 41 for the Congress. I want to walk across to the election intelligence dashboard and give our viewers a sense of whether Chhattisgarh is settling in or could there be a twist in the tail. If BJP wins Chhattisgarh, it's 3-1. In the heartland, it's 3-0. That's a big win for the BJP. So it's Chhattisgarh which will determine whether the match ends in a 2-2 draw or it ends in a big victory. And the margin calculator is very important in determining where things stand at this moment. In the live data feed that we are getting, there are 63 seats at this moment where the margin between the winner and the runner-up is less than 500 votes. The BJP is leading on 31 of those. The Congress is leading on 31. So unless you're a betting man, you keep your money in your pocket because at this moment, Chhattisgarh is a very closely fought race, Rajdeep. Rahul, we want one super over. You and I want one super over given the way the other three elections have gone, where we predicted who's forming a government in Hyderabad, in Bhopal, and in, uh, and in Jaipur. But in Raipur, I think all bets are off. And remember, others are now two. One of them is Hamar, I'm told. That's the Adivasi party, which is leading in one. The other one is BSP. So what you have possibly in Chhattisgarh is, you know, we've been talking about resorts and, and post-poll politics. I don't think many people expected that Chhattisgarh would throw it. Most people thought Rajasthan. I think that's where the polls have gone wrong. But Chhattisgarh is a tightly contested fight, except for 2018. Go back to 2003. Every election in Chhattisgarh, vote shares between parties have been within the margin of error of 3%. So you could see either of these two sides emerging victorious at the moment. The BJP looks in poll position. And I still think that uh, you could have an election that goes to a super over. But uh, it again shows the sharp rise in BJP's fortunes. You can and the see sharp that on decline. the line. Look at and where the Congress from 68, Congress is down to 40. Rajdeep, and the it's BJP's best, come up from 50. Instead to of words, it's best illustrated through this data visualization. Look at this map from 2018 of Chhattisgarh. Look at how blue dominates all the way from the south to the north. Come now to 2023, where there's been a saffron surge in Chhattisgarh, a big pushback against the kind of dominance the Congress had. The dominance clearly took their position for granted, thought Chhattisgarh was in the bag. The BJP in Chhattisgarh at this moment seems to have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. 49 versus 39. The, the BJP is engineering an election marvel at this moment in Chhattisgarh. This is election magic from a BJP Percent. perspective, Rajdeep. No, uh, I think, uh, Rahul, it's a complete wave in that region, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. It's a complete wave, and I don't see Congress forming government unless they have 48, 49, 50 in, uh, in Chhattisgarh, because others are not going to back uh, Bhupesh Baghel at all. This is the thing. And I think there is a very strong under... It's a pro-Modi, pro-Hindutva, pro-Ram Mandir kind of wave, because it was not visible in the ground as such. No, I, I think it is actually uh, a belief that the BJP is a better organized party than the Congress. Yeah. You know, elections are increasingly yeah. about last mile organization and no, your no, micromanagement. Who, who played no, no, better cricket? cricket? It's like, sometimes, you know, it's like they just played better cricket. That's right. No, and, 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 and Rahul, used, no, no, Rahul used the Australia analogy. The Australia analogy, when they played the final, they prepared for all conditions. They chose, you know, uh, they had the right people at the right moment. Pat Cummins knew when to slow down the game. You put Travis Head at the top. I think the BJP is a part. One thing Rangi we don't. Will be no, no, one minute. No, one thing you don't realize about the BJP, and this is the problem with a lot of people. There is an election machine that works right down. I think Jaivir put it well. They are willing to be flexible. They realized that perhaps things were not going so well in Chhattisgarh uh, a few months ago. They made those cost corrections. You know, I'm, you know, willing, I'm willing to bet that somewhere in the BJP office, in the top echelons, this week they will have a meeting on Telangana 2024. 
and and you know they will hope with these numbers a police officer just sent me a message saying look bjp will hope with brs out of the picture seemingly because they will start occupying that space what can we do? because the moment the congress is in power the congress will now see telangana as an atm and then you will uh, uh, the bjp will because try and capitalize on because that because the no, bjp want, always finds it easier to oh, take on the congress rather than a regional regional party. Party. I, want, That's right. I want to argue with you with about job? one point yes. so he talks about ram mandir with due respect where was ram mandir an issue in this election this election in madhya pradesh mr ashok malik in every public meeting prime minister spoke about it no but where was it a, con a contested and issue? there were a lot of kathawa chak no no you, you look at the ground you see madhya pradesh we don't like i'm just telling you no i'm not suggesting ram mandir Lot of kasa watchers were out on the ground, and there were there were all kind of this thing. And this campaign was very much there. In yes. Rajasthan, yes, Mr. Malik. You know, not but in Madhya Pradesh. Not but in Madhya Pradesh, Pradesh. Yes. been going on not for, for months. You know, there were some pundits in our studio, some of them outside, who, when the initial trends were coming, were talking about how great a day today is going to be for Rahul Gandhi and how this is the comeback of Rahul Gandhi in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. I mean, if this is the data that holds, it doesn't really show Rahul Gandhi, Rajdeep in very good light. I it mean, because initially all the, no, because, yeah, because everybody was making it. Rahul Gandhi ne aisa kar diya, yeah. aisa kar diya. Now what? Can because Rahul Gandhi is a wave. See, no, no, one minute. The welfareism was biased by uh, Ashok Gehlot and Bhupesh Baghel. So welfareism is not a you know a kind now of. Now if it go, earlier all of you were saying, or oh, Rahul Gandhi has no, done this, no, done I, that. Just, His credibility is much higher. Now what's happened? No, one minute. Can I just make this point that Rahul Gandhi, Bharat Jodo Yatra. is working south of the vindhyas where the congress organization is already well established and the congress is the principal challenger either to the regional party or the bjp But, he, he has he not to work he has not he has not offered any narrative let me finish he has not offered any narrative which can shake up the hindi heartland where clearly mr modi is neta number 1 no but two hours distance, ago the narrative in this studio was different yeah, no, no but everybody was talking about so, how great a job rahul no, gandhi no, has done now it's a big victory for rahul gandhi i'm saying it you see rahul i'm saying that rahul gandhi is this thing of mohabbat ki dukan has not clicked wo dukan band ho gayi aap to subah bol rahe the click kar gayi no the results have proved otherwise I, that's what I'm saying. saying. No, that's the problem with Pop Panditri. No, no, it's not Panditri. It's you see, the thing was not when Prime Minister Modi was talking about you know Ram Ram Temple issue. People thought it's not an issue. It's not finding traction. It shows that it has found traction. When no, Kathawa was just going town to town, town, to town Bali, city to city, Rambandir, village Rambandir, to village, you can't say Madhya Pradesh. I don't think Rambandir this Rambandir. election has anything to do with Ram Mandir exactly. or Hindutva. Yeah. Elections, state elections are fought distinctively on local issues. based on the quality sometimes of your local leadership your organization of elections your last mile connectivity i have been saying this for the longest time that the congress on all these fronts is weak in the hindi but not that in a multi you one doing one bharat jodo yatra is not going to repair the damage organizationally that you've had over 20 years so in the hindi heartland no, no. on the other hand just a minute sir in the uh, because let's be fair in the southern part we make sweeping statements either way there are nuanced statements to be made in the hindi heartland for the last 20 years the bjp has been the dominant party the congress is organizationally weak you can't recover it with one yatra on the other hand in south india the congress is organizationally more robust come on in telangana they hardly had an organization before it, karnataka lot of so you're not put together now no no you can't, so, no, you can't the point i'm making was to give this because i see you no, can't no. have it both ways and say south india i will give no credit to the congress but no, i will no, give no. all the credit to the bjp in the hindi army i am giving all the credit to the bjp in the but hindi army but you're totally misunderstanding i'm giving credit to the congress you are telangana. misrepresenting what i'm saying the point i'm making is that if they won in telangana it's because there was massive anti incumbency against the state yeah. government it was not a they were congress uh, it's, vote it's not it as if our pundits sitting no, on one side no, no, were making it seem as if rahul no, no, gandhi no, no, has led the party rahul to power in telangana there is much happening at the bjp headquarters let's, no, no, let's take a look you know, at the images over there i don't know why in bopal ashwini vaishnav the union telecom and it minister he played a big role this was one of his big sanghatan responsibilities he and bhupendra yadav he has been in madhya pradesh for a very long while it's a big victory 157 leads make no mistake the biggest victory of all today is in madhya pradesh and the reason for that is you are up against four terms of anti incumbency from there for the bharatiya janata party to pick up 157 seats is a phenomenal achievement that you simply cannot take away the bjp they are celebrating at its office uh, ashwini vaishnav you know he seen largely as a technocrat swav uh, minister he's really been put out there in a 
a, in an attempt to try and up his organizational skills as well, given a tough challenge. This is uh, Jyotiratya Sindhya. Lots was being said again about problems in integration. You can see the relief writ large on his face in Gwalior Chambal. And I'll take you through those numbers. In Gwalior Chambal, the Bharatiya Janata Party has done very well. And that would give a lot of hope and a lot of respite to Jyotiratya Sindhya, who really was up against it if the party had not done well in Gwalior Chambal. In Gwalior Chambal, the BJP, in fact, 19 seats up from the last elections. In Bagel Khand, down two, Bhopal up one, Bundel Khand up four. The biggest gains are coming from that Gwalior Chambal belt of Jyotiratya Sindhya, where the BJP is up 19. In Mahakaushal, they're up 15. In Malwa, they're up 17. In Nimar, they're up four. The BJP really, Rajdeep, hitting it out of the park and making electoral history in Madhya Pradesh. So many terms of anti-incumbency when you're up against this, to get this verdict is a phenomenal achievement. It shows that after Gujarat, Possibly, after Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh is going to be the next BJP dominant state. Because you're going back to 2013, where the BJP had swept the state. And after the comeback that the Congress made in 2018, to be back to square one in a two-party two state, suggests to me, BJP on the, on the march in Madhya Pradesh. And remember, there are 29 seats in Madhya Pradesh Lok Sabha, 11 seats in, in Chhattisgarh. Add the two with these numbers and what you've had in Gujarat. Let's listen state, to Ashwini BJP Vaishnav. all the way. Double engine car ke prati jo jana jana ka vishwaas hai. Modi ji ke netratwa ke prati jo jana jana ka vishwaas hai. Aur jis tarah se Shivraj ji ki performance rahi kaam hua hai. Uske aaj parinam sabke saamne hai. Sangathan ne jo kaam kiya uske parinam sabke saamne hai. Baut achhi jeet hai. Madhya Pradesh ke janta ko ek ke sab ko badai. Sir, Rajasthan aur Chhattisgarh mein bhi lead mil rhi hai. Chalo, sir. Thank you. Okay, that's Ashwini Vaishnav. His stock in the internal BJP circles, Ashok, Vaish, Ashok Malik, will also go up because he's largely seen as a technocrat kind of guy but he's, to now help the he's, BJP. He's, he's held the organizational reins for an election and delivered. Uh, there's it's one... also interesting how they upskill their own resources. So but you don't want to present him only as a technocrat. He's sitting in Delhi, you send him out there and, he, and he's had to work hard, he's delivered. There's one point I'd like to make. We, you know, we talk about Rahul Gandhi, Narendra Modi, Individuals, and of course, individuals do matter. I'm not denying that, but there is something to be said about the party organization as well. In Chhattisgarh, the Congress is finding it difficult to def defend a one-term government. A one-term government. In Madhya Pradesh, the BJP has defended a 20-year government and reinvented itself in a sense because this election campaign in Madhya Pradesh has been very different from the last one. You know, I think, I think, and particularly, let's look at the last five years. You've had two years of COVID. When, when uh, uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan took, uh, took office, COVID had just, a lockdown had been declared. So they had two very difficult years. You come out of those two very difficult years and you're virtually facing an, a fresh election. So I think all credit to Shivraj Singh Chauhan. And Chhattisgarh is achieved. also settling. Chhattisgarh, which for a while seemed tight. Ladies and gentlemen, Chhattisgarh seems to be settling in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Let me take you through the numbers for Chhattisgarh. In Chhattisgarh, the BJP now has 51 leads, the Congress has 36. Let me take you through what the seat share numbers in Chhattisgarh are looking like and what the new assembly in Chhattisgarh could look like. From a Congress wave in 2018, the BJP now coming back very strong. 36 seats up from the last time. Uh, if we look at uh, some of the regions of Chhattisgarh and take you through how the party has done, it's often said the power map of Chhattisgarh really comes through Bastar, where the BJP is leading on eight, up seven from the last time, the Congress only on three. These were the seats where elections were held in the first phase. If I look only at the first phase, just for what it's worth, if I look only at the first phase of Chhattisgarh and show you the seat share in the first phase in Chhattisgarh, 11 wins, leads for the BJP, eight for the Congress in Chhattisgarh. And if I look at the overall picture, if all these 638 seats are added up, the BJP 328, the Congress only 239, the BJP really hitting it out of the park in the semi-finals in a head-on-head -head fight against the Congress. No, I think, I think what you've got there for is now a scenario where you've got three fault lines. One, old versus new electionary. The BJP does new age electionary. The Congress does old age election. In some places, they're also doing new age. Where they're doing it, like they did in Telangana, they've been reasonably successful. You've got the BJP more willing to effect a generational change. 
the Congress less willing to effect a generational change. And in my view, you've got a clear north-south divide in this country. North of the Vindhyas, the BJP today is a real machine. You can call it a wave, you can use whatever terminology, it's a machine. South of the Vindhyas, I would say the Congress on the other hand is recovering some of, uh, some of its lost ground. So I think you've got to see this in the larger context. But remember, India has only 135 seats south of the Vindhyas. It has the more numbers. than 200 seats north of the Vindhyas. You know, I just yes. have to take, make, take one point you made about the generational change. My sense is we may be looking at a situation where the BJP gets three first-time chief ministers mm -hmm. and, and builds a team for the 2030, you know, the 2030 milestone rather than for now. So who do you think could be? I don't know. I don't, I don't have names. But, but Mr. Malik, I, I just please call me Ashok. Uh, I don't think the BJP would want to repeat the mistake that the Congress made in 2018, when it went back in time for chief ministers rather than uh, empowered Sindhya and Rajesh and Sachin Pilot, which would have given it at least a talking points for the Lok Sabha election. But Alok, if you look yeah, at yeah, this is the pilot Sindhya, your point is very valid, but they did appoint, uh, you know, uh, Bhupesh Baghel, relatively younger face, uh, and they did relatively background better. with no results. That's why I'm saying this is a wave election. This is not a wave. This, this is, is a wave. I, I don't think this is a wave, but Congress relies a lot on unforced errors. They, they feel like BJP will make a mistake and will somehow win. And the BJP rarely. No, but makes, BJP doesn't make they mistakes. They don't make mistakes. It, they're, they're Usually. Trying, in, Sometimes it, it can happen. No, in an, if you think of in it as Karnat, cricket, you really have to play much better than the BJP to win. Yeah. If, if, it's, if you're you counting know, on the BJP making it, mistakes, you'll find very few yes, of them. Yes, Preeti. You know, I will, if, yes, Preeti. I remember, you know, uh, where the Chambal area was in Gwalior, I spent an evening with the cadre of the Congress. And one thing they said really stuck home on how, what even Jaivir said, on how they treat their own. And it's interesting because what they pointed out was, agar Congress chahati, to wo ek rajya sabha seat. Uh, Digvijay Singh ke chahite Vivek Tankha ko nahi agar Jyotir Aditya Sindhya ko de deti, aaj humko ye nahi dekhna padta Gwalior mein. So, on that account, and even if you heard Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav there, Alok, he did say that it is under the leadership of Shivraj Singh Chauhan. You okay. had Jyotir Aditya Sindhya, who I spoke to, uh, you know, the eve of election, and he said, I'm fighting this election under Shivraj. You know, the fact is, to create a pro-incumbency wave is what the BJP has learned, and that's a challenge. That's not a joke. You know, that you're, you're in power, and you're asking people to vote for you again. So I think Raja, that's they, what they, the... they cannot be a pro incumbency wave. It's just performance. Yeah. So I mean, how can it be a pro incumbency create... wave? No, you're able to ensure that so you. Then, then if 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 if, if uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan gives 200, 1250 rupees to women, you know, he clicks. If you know the same thing Ashok Gehlot was doing, or same thing Bhupesh Baghel was doing, a series of you know, welfareism, it doesn't work. No, because, Ashok, Ashok, because Mr. Ashok, Mr. Ashok, Gehlot, Mr. Ashok Gehlot woke up yeah. six months Shivraj ago. Has been doing it for for two years. years, Ashok Gehlot versus Sachin Pilot was the running yeah, team of Rajasthan. TV, seeing, I mean, you can't wake up. I'll, I'll give you Can we go to Puja Shali? Yeah, She's sure. at the residence of uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan in Bhopal. He has led the BJP in Madhya Pradesh to a historic victory. In governments ruled by the Congress, they're getting voted out after one term. To come back four times over is nothing less than a massive electoral performance. Pooja Shali is on the ground. Pooja, is Shivrat Singh Chauhan expecting to be Chief Minister once again? Well, that's uh, what here I can tell you maximum support for him is. And there are two reasons, Rahul, that people here are telling us in Bhopal. The reason for this thumping victory for the Bharatiya Janata Party. One, of course, Shivrat Singh Chauhan's welfare scheme on the ground, specifically for women and young girls. But two, aggressive campaigning by the Bharatiya Janata Party, by Prime Minister Modi, by Home Minister Amit Shah, till the last days when Congress likely could have become slightly light in their campaigning. The BJP was in full-on mode till the last day. Let's talk and get a quick check because I I'm expecting uh, the Chief Minister to likely address in some time. We are waiting for that confirmation now. I want to also add here quickly, Rahul. I spoke to Sadhana Singh Chauhan, the wife of Shivrat Singh Chauhan, who's of course now going to become uh, uh, the, who's the, now the wife of the Chief Minister, likely for the fifth time. And she told me why she cannot speak on camera, but uh, the joy knows no bound today for uh, the Sadhana Singh as well, because she's watched her husband constantly fight it out and fight even when uh, he was wanting to come back, retain the government. That's an important, that's the perspective around. Let's get a quick word from the supporters here. Kya aapko lagta hai, kyu reason hai ki Shivrat Singh Chauhan aur Bhartiya Janata Party itne margin se phir wapis a rahi hai? Dekhiya, kya laadli vehna? 
आज तक के देश के इतिहास में किसी भी भाई ने अपनी सगी बहन को भी रक्षाबंधन पे सौ रुपए से लेकर के एक हजार रूपए दिए होंगे लेकिन शिवराज सिंह चौहान देश के ऐसे पहले व्यक्ति हैं जिनने बारह सौ पचास रूपए हर लाडली बहना के खाते में डाले हैं मोर देन दूसुअल राखी गिफ्ट दैट इज गिवन टू वेमेन ये आगे भी साढ़े बारह सौ तक नहीं रुकने वाले ये तीन हजार तक जाएंगे ये मामा का कहना है हमारे लाडली बहना की स्कीम है और भी कोई आपको क्या लगता है बताइए क्या रीजन लाडली बहना योजना चलाई बहनों को पैसा दिलवावे और सारे निष्ठावान कार्यकर्ताओं का इसमें निरंतर सेवा दे करके ये इनको फते किया है बताइए कि सिर्फ शिवराज सिंह चौहान का चेहरा है अब बात अटकले चल रही है कोई और चेहरा भी आ सकता है support is for mama ji who is also the brother who is also in the very world of father he's become that figure a figure who you can connect to as a local resident sir aapne bol you wahan ko jitna prabhavit shivraj ji ne kiya hai kyunki swami vivekanand ji kehte the sangeeno ke raaye mein aise liya jata let's just go straight to our correspondent piyush who's with ashwini vaishnav at the moment also rahe kya kya karan प्रदेश में छत्तीसगढ़ में राजस्थान में पूरे देश में आज मोदी जी की गारंटी का मोदी जी की गारंटी पर भारत का भरोसा है जन जन का भरोसा है जन जन का विश्वास है कि इस देश को मोदी जी ही विकसित भारत में ले जा सकते हैं विकसित भारत बना सकते हैं इसी गारंटी का आज ये रिजल्ट है और आप देखिएगा मोदी जी बार लोकसभा में सीटें थी उससे भी अधिक सीटों से वापस आई बाकी राज्यों में भी सर लेट्स गो स्ट्रेट अक्रॉस टू सुप्रिया श्रीनेत द कांग्रेस इज नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन हेड ऑफ इट सोशल मीडिया सेल हू ज्वाइन सुप्रिया श्रीनेत इट्स बीन अ बैड डे इन द ऑफिस फॉर द कांग्रेस यू आर जूबलेंट इन तेलंगाना बट यू आर बींग स्वेप्ट आउट अक्रॉस द हिंदी आर्ट लैंड यू आर इवन लूजिंग नाउ छत्तीसगढ़ सो इट्स क्लियर इट्स थ्री वन Shrine Thank you very much for having me on the show and I will first begin with Telangana it's important to talk about the positive news first and I think wresting a state from a regional party 10 years after Telangana was formed is pretty historic for us and the way we are winning Telangana I think that's very very encouraging the fact that we are trouncing a regional party is big that's a trend that one doesn't see very often that's point number 1 uh, my own numbers and the numbers that i'm constantly seeing that we're getting internally tell us the tide will turn in chatisgarh and i'm very reasonably confident about forming the government in chatisgarh uh, the margins could no, have no, been but better but ma'am the yes, tide the, the, ma the, 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 the tide is not turning if anything it's going towards the bjp in chatisgarh the bjp is pulling ahead so i am coming to I am coming to exactly the question you asked me. Have the patience to hear me out. Once I'm done, you can of course counter question me. The numbers will turn around in Chhattisgarh. You wait and watch. Yes, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, and particularly Madhya Pradesh, is deeply, uh, deeply shocking, if I may, because I think the uh, the the way we read the election and the kind of uh, feedback that we're getting from the ground was very different from how Madhya Pradesh has turned around. So yes, Madhya Pradesh has been very disappointing. Rajasthan. I see a little bit of glimmer of hope, even though the numbers are not going to put us back in governance. Uh, the, I think the hope in Rajasthan is that each time we had contested an election as an incumbent, we were trounced to the low twenties or the thirties. I mean, here we are standing at about sixty-six. That's not too bad, and I think that gives us 
some room for solace as far as Rajasthan now is concerned. Clutching concern, at straws. We have traditionally been trousers. Ma'am, with due regard, 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 regard ma'am, yeah. you are clutching at straws. I had Jaiveer Shergil, your former colleague on the show, and he made an interesting point. He says the problem is the Congress takes victory in elections for granted. It doesn't contest elections as, except for Telangana in a new way. Micromanagement, last mile connectivity. You miss that. You took you took Madhya Pradesh for granted. You took Chhattisgarh for granted. No, no. Let me. No. No. I don't think anybody in their right mind in any party, whether it's us or the BJP, can ever take an election for granted. I don't think anybody can put their feet up and say that the election is long over before it's over. And when you lose, there are multiple reasons that will be attributed to it. I think there was a spirited campaign that was put up in almost all the states that we contested election in. Yes, we haven't won in some of the states that you've mentioned, whether it's Madhya Pradesh or Rajasthan. I continue to be very hopeful about things turning around in Chhattisgarh. Could things have been better? Sir, absolutely. Do we need to learn our lessons? Absolutely. But what? touching and who's accountable? Like that, I think it's it's uh, it's uh, you know headlines. Now what are the lessons? What are the lessons? And who's accountable? You them. see, the Congress, the Congress man with due regard is full of platitudes. What are the lessons? Every what are the lessons? Who is accountable? You keep going back to the same figures. You don't affect generational change, and you pay the price. No, I don't think so. I think, you know, all of you said regional leadership should be empowered. They were hugely empowered. Now, what should we do? We should hang them upside down because they haven't been able to deliver. I think, you know, we read the mood wrong, perhaps in Madhya Pradesh. And I think in Madhya Pradesh, maybe the regional uh, schemes of Shivraj Singh Chauhan has put him back in the driver's seat. Maybe we underestimated the power of something like a Ladli Yojana, which was an ongoing scheme. What we were promising But you didn't to misread the mood only in Madhya Pradesh. I'm sorry. Power, but this was if an the BJP scheme. wins in Chhattisgarh, 53 leads at this moment, up 38 from the last time. You've massively misread the mood in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. In any fight where it's BJP versus Congress, you're no, being pounded. No. This is not, when you're saying you hope to turn it around, ma'am, you're not clutching at straws, you're clutching at thin air. But I do believe that we will turn it around in Chhattisgarh. So should I come to your channel and not say that? I do believe we will turn it around in Chhattisgarh. Yes, Rajasthan has been disappointing. But I'm at least hopeful of the fact that we have not been trounced the, the way we were when we were incumbents the last time around. And which is why I do believe that our schemes have... Well, half of the, the BJP ground, in Rajasthan. BJP is at 120. Rajasthan the Congress continued. is at 630, 63. You're saying you haven't been trounced. I mean, how else does somebody get trounced? 121 versus 62, you're roughly half of where they are. Uh, I will tell you how else. Rahul Kaval. Rahul Kaval, if you hear me out, you will see the reason and why I see hope in Rajasthan and why do I believe there is a glimmer of hope. Because the last time around, in the last few decades, when we have been incumbents and we have gone to sort another mandate, we have been very badly trounced. I think compared to that, these numbers are encouraging. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not rocket science that nobody is trying to why understand. Is it? May I, I may think, I, may yes, I press we take the verdict with... Ma'am, may I press you on that? Why is it that when you have incumbent governments, you have not been able to repeat it? Even in Karnataka in 2013, in 2018, you were not able to do that. It seems that once the Congress comes to power, they don't need, they don't seem to know how to handle power and create a pro-incumbency mood. The BJP has done that successfully now in state after state, especially in the Hindi heartland. I think the one big lesson that all our governments will have to learn, whichever government we form next and whichever elections we win next, will have to be that when you do your work, you have to spend more time communicating it to people. I think we fall short there. I don't think we are as good as marketing as the BJP is. And that's a lesson we should learn from the BJP. We do so good work and we presume you... that the people are beneficiaries right. and they are going to vote you back. So I think that's a lesson that we have to learn. And I, I, I'm saying it with all humility. It's a lesson we have to learn. If you're doing good but work, you have to What's the lesson that you've learned from a Jyotir Raditya Sindhya? And with what went down? Because look at what's gone down in Chambal. It's a complete washout for the Congress, which you came back so strongly in 2018. What's the lesson on Jyotir Raditya Sindhya? Now do you admit you mishandled the so situation? So what is the lesson I can... You're facing a round so in the what Chambal is the region, I can learn from somebody who quit the Congress and joined the BJP? No, no, I'm answering your question. What is the lesson I can learn from somebody who quit the Congress and joined the BJP? Is Maybe there a lesson I can learn from I don't think so. 
I mean, what is the lesson I learned from a man who does an ideological somersault? I think there is something but, called political ideology. His political but, but ideology Supresh, Rene, and ours in a do state, not match. So what lesson can I learn? In a state you know, where you practically snatched defeat from the hands of victory, that's or the jaws of victory. That is what is being said in Madhya Pradesh. We spoke to your leaders. Most of them turned around and said, janta jita rahi hai. You can't rely on the janta without really having a cohesive narrative, the, Supriya Shane. The Congress at this moment is half the BJP in Madhya Pradesh, half no, the BJP I, I in disagree Rajasthan. With you. Uh, and me, the BJP is settling into a very here. comfortable lead in Chhattisgarh as well. We're getting some visuals from Bhopal, Rajdeep. In These fact, are visuals of a historic victory. Shivrat Singh Chauhan there, one amongst the masses with the BJP workers celebrating one of the most historic victories because till a few weeks ago, the BJP was actually trailing in their own internal surveys. From there, to turn it around and to script election magic, the Congress taking their position for granted, that's the BJP's post today. Desh mein ek hi guarantee chalti hai, wo hai Modi ki guarantee. And make no mistake, the biggest hero at this moment in terms of asserting once again his command and connect with the Indian voter, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. 55 leads now for the Bharatiya Janata Party in Chhattisgarh. It's not a tight fight. Supriya Shrinath was saying, oh, we hope to turn it around. If it's 55 versus 32, it's game, set and match BJP. A, we are back to 2013. In these very states, this was exactly what happened in 2013, when the BJP swept these states. So you're back a decade ago. Number two, since then, 2014, Mr. Modi takes over. Nine years now in power, Mr. Modi only amplifies the BJP's appeal in the Hindi heartland. It makes the BJP the most on. dominant force in 2023. I think these results, in a way, have virtually settled what happens in 2024. It will now require a miracle for the India Alliance to recover from this because the Congress, which was at the heart of that alliance, will now be demoralized in the Hindi heartland. They will have to rely on southern India. Southern India doesn't have the number of seats. It will also mean the regional players like the Mamta Banerjee's and all will demand more from the Congress. We don't know what the Ahmadmi Party, how that equation will work with the Congress. At the moment, with these results, Narendra Modi, the double engine, you didn't answer my question, who's Modi and who's Amit Shah in our double engine, but it's clear that... What do you want to be? No, I don't want to be either. I want to be Sachin Dendulkar, but that's another story. But the fact is, at the moment, I think you've got Narendra Modi as your mascot. You've got a strong organization led by Mr. Shah. He played a lot, big role in Madhya Pradesh in particular. And you've got a sense of a, a political ideology that fits in with the dominant ideology of the Hindi heartland. The Congress is not able to combat them on leadership, on ideology and narratives when it, and organization when it comes to the Hindi heartland. I think Supriya Shinet should accept that. And I, and I think the narrative thing is, you. it's not like the Ram Mandir worked or it's like that one thing worked. There needs to be a narrative. What do you stand for? And I think this whole thing of nationalism, whether it's Chandrayaan, whether it's G20, whatever it is, there is a certain nationalism, bring India to the world stage. It seems to be working in the north. The Congress came, the Bharat Yatra, inclusivity. I guess Mohabbat Ki Dukan is also kind of like an inclusivity. The India Alliance is also kind of like an inclusivity. But it's not very clear that what kind of inclusivity is it. It just means everybody stands on stage together. It just means everybody gangs up and defeats the BJP? Is there inclusivity to defeat the BJP? Or is it something else? And okay. I think it's not clicking in the North at all for people. And it should have clicked in a big way to have any chance in 24, where you're going to have your master hitter, Narendra Modi, in the Lok Sabha election. No, even in, what, even in, even what is going, what chutney making of the Congress is going to happen then? No, even in South India, I mean, Razi spoke about a different narrative in North and different narrative South of the Vindhyas. Even South of the Vindhyas, my sense is that the BJP will now sit together to look both at Karnataka and Telangana. Mm -hmm. These are two states where the BJP would hope to make gains in April 2024. R.P. Singh joins us. Massive victory for the BJP in Madhya Pradesh. A massive victory now for the BJP in Rajasthan as well. And a huge victory in Chhattisgarh. It also shows once again how disconnected the Congress leadership was in the Hindi heartland to think that they had Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh in their pocket, you know, just to take things for granted, take things casually, assume that you've already won before you actually have, that is just foolhardy. And that too, when you're up against the most formidable election modern day politics in India has seen, you cannot take anything for granted. They took it for granted and they've now been smashed to smithereens in the Hindi heartland. Massive victories 
in Madhya Pradesh. Massive victories now in Chhattisgarh. Rajdeep was hoping for a super over. You were quite convinced Rajdeep was going to go down to the wire. 55 versus 32, this is nowhere close to a super over. I think what it has shown is the voters, unlike us in the studio, do not share our excitement at a super over. They don't want it. I think you're seeing in state after state, voters have consciously chosen one side of the, or the other. In three of the four states, if I may say so, the incumbent government is, is being voted out. In Rajasthan, in Chhattisgarh and Telangana, the incumbent vote, government is being voted out, which is makes Shivraj's and the BJP's achievement in, in Madhya Pradesh, Pradesh all the more greater. See what happened even earlier. Except for Gujarat, you saw it in the last nine months, Himachal Pradesh and in uh, Karnataka, incumbent government voted out. The BJP is the only party which in Uttarakhand, Goa, uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh and now Madhya Pradesh has arrested this anti-incumbency against their government. And I think you've got to give them credit for the way they run their governments in the North Indian states. They managed to create a certain connect, which means that even after five years in power, they're able to win. So I think that makes it, because the last five years, Rahul have been tough. Two years of COVID. So let's go to have struggled. Nabila Jamal joins us from the BJP office in Jaipur. 109 out of 199. This is not a tight fight. This is a massive mandate in favor of the BJP and against the magician uh, Ashok Gailoth. Lots of people, were, including some here, were hoping that he'd be able to spring some kind of magic. That hasn't happened. The magician has been vanquished. Nabila Jamal, what's happening at the BJP offices in Jaipur? <coughs> we can see those images of the BJP office in Jaipur. A saffron surge across the state. The BJP with a 60% strike rate in Rajasthan. The Congress's strike rate only 32%. The BJP close to double where the Congress is. In Rajasthan, also in Madhya Pradesh, solidifying now its lead in Chhattisgarh. This is a big victory for Prime Minister Modi, for the BJP, organizationally, for the likes of Amit Shah, the Home Minister, who micromanaged the campaign in Madhya Pradesh and has led the BJP to this massive historic victory. Look at some of the images that we are getting. The BJP is dancing. If it's 3-0 in the Hindi heartland, that becomes then the big story. The Congress did win Telangana, but Telangana is a part of the story, the larger national picture. 2024 looks quite assured from the BJP's perspective. Their cadre, their leadership will be that much more enthused. Rahul Verma, what impact could these numbers have on the battle for 2024. As we have been arguing that, you know, uh, BJP did really, really well in Northwest India in uh, 2019. And if they want to be anywhere close to that number uh, between 272 and 300, uh, they have to repeat that performance in uh, this part of the country. Uh, because South, it seems, is out of bounds for BJP still. They may hold on to what they had in Telangana, gain a seat or two, uh, and would be tough to hold on to Karnataka, the number they had in 2019. So unless they do uh, uh, perform similarly in Northwest, it would be difficult to cross the 270 to 80 mark. Now, with this kind of performance, I think uh, BJP is sitting in a much sweeter spot than it was uh, five years ago, uh, and uh, uh, for a couple of uh, months ago. And the road for Congress has become very, very difficult now. Not just the road for Congress, the India Alliance. You know, this whole India alliance that was created was premised on the fact that you can create this large coalition against the BJP and that purely in terms of arithmetic will work. Arithmetic doesn't work with chem without chemistry. We A, the India alliance will suffer with, for the lack of chemistry and an alliance never works, Rahul, without a strong centre or a magnet. If you recall, past alliances that have worked had a strong magnet. The Congress was still a 150-200 MP party when they won in 2004 and 2009. Now it's shrunk to a 51 member party. And with these results, what's clear is the Congress's recovery in Hindi Artland is a long way away. Dilli do rust. Raj, we have to say it. Raj, Dilli do rust. On the but contrary, Rajdeep, there are many leaders from the India Alliance would parties who would be very happy today because they were thinking that the Congress was A, overconfident and taking on the role of the big brother where they hadn't quite earned it. So, but Nabila Jamal remember... is with us from the Sorry. BJP offices in Jaipur. Let's go across to Nabila and try and capture the celebration because the big story at the moment is this massive BJP win in the Hindi heartland. Nabila Jamal is in Jaipur. Nabila, explain what's happening around you. Can you hear me, Nabila?
There's so much noise, I think, behind where she is. I'm not 100% certain that she can hear us. The BJP supporters are dancing in Jaipur. The polls predicted that it might be tighter than it is. 119 versus 64. BJP hitting it out of the park at the Savai Madhopur. Hitting it out of the park in Bhopal. Also in Chhattisgarh now. I'm up proud. 40 from As the I last see, time. Go I'm for right it, Nabila. I'm proud of the BJP office here in Jaipur. I'm sorry, it's, it's really loud and unable to hear you. But this is, these are the visuals that are currently um, are playing out outside the BJP office in Jaipur. There's Gajendra Singh Shikhawat, who was right, who's right inside. But this is really a moment of immense joy for uh, people here in Rajasthan because they knew very well. उस दलित बच्ची की चीख की जीत है जिन्होंने दलित लोगों के बच्चियों को भट्टी में डालकर चलाया ये जीत उस कन्हैया लाल की गजल काटने के राष्ट्रवाद की जीत है की जीत है ये जीत उस कन्हैया लाल की जिन्होंने राष्ट्रवाद के नाम पे गला काटा था उसकी बदुआ की जीत है ये जीत उस महिला सोशल की जीत है chants of Modi, Modi all over Rajasthan. So whoever becomes Chief Minister, the fact is that decision will be taken by Prime Minister Modi. He is the man of the moment for the BJP across the Hindi heartland, powering that double engine as the BJP calls it. Who Joining me now is Sumi Rajapan. She's uh, from Raipur, where a real turnaround... We will join her in a moment, but yes, who will become Chief Minister of Rajasthan? Now, I'm, I'm, yeah, putting, you, I'm putting you on the uh, I'll just give you the uh, names. I'll give line. you the names. Baba Balaknath, sitting MP from Alwar, a counter to a yogi, Adityanath, self-styled, uh, you know, uh, a yogi, uh, campaigned with the bulldozer, number one. Number two, Bhupendra Yadav, close to uh, Amit, Shah. Amit Shah. Om Birla, the current speaker, is another contender, if I would think. Uh, Diya Kumari, you interviewed Diya Kumari. They are trying to style her right next to uh, Vasundara. Vasundara Raje. So that could be an option. Gajendra Shekhawat has always fancied his chances. Uh, CP Joshi, who is now the party president, sitting uh, MP from uh, uh, the, uh, from Chittorgarh, he also fancies his chances. So a number of Rajendra them. Rathod. Ra Rajendra yeah. Rathod is not, Rajendra Rathod is trailing right now. If he yeah, doesn't win his seat of Tara Nagar, then leading now. he's leading now. Okay. Then uh, Rajyavardhan Rathor, I believe, is out because yeah, no, I think Rajendra Rathor, yeah. party, uh, uh, the opposition leader, yes. the leader of opposition, uh, is another. Uh, so they've contender. got lots of names. Lots of names. At 116, 
are we now safely saying it will be someone other than Vasundra? Your sense of the BJP, Ashok Malik, is they use these occasions to effect a generational change. My sense is Mr. Modi won in 2014 with a, a certain agenda, a certain generation for 10 years. In 2024, the BJP does need a refresh. Okay. It's a favourite to win, but it needs a refresh for 2030. Who oh. do you think is the contender? I don't have names. Only Mr. Modi knows. And Mr. Amit Shah knows. <laughs> let them decide. Let me not guess. I think oh, whoever I, we I, think it won't be that person. Just one sec. I <laughs> think there will be new chief ministers in all three states. Even Shivraj Singh will go, you think? In my in my yeah, hunch is Ashok has been saying this consistently. Yeah. He believes there will be a new chief minister there as well. Nothing we, that dramatic. You know, Nothing that dramatic. I think they, they will be some changes maybe, but the BJP also doesn't do something crazy or like game changer. It It, it is... Sensible. It's still five five months is twenty weeks to the next election. Okay, yeah, there it is. There we are killing. seeing. Meanwhile, what we know at the moment is that at, in uh, in Hyderabad we are all set for a change in guard. That the is, police has already started <laughs> arriving at Raven Reddy's Jubilee Hills that residence. Is the, that is the DGP of police, Anjani Kumar, on on Raven's left, and uh, that is Sanjay Kumar Jain. So the two senior most officials of Telangana Police greeting. The person who could be the next chief minister of So, Canada. are we very clear that it would be Revant Reddy, no one else? That Pretty it is much. only Revant all the way? Pretty much. Just like in 2004, it was very clear that it would be Vice Rajshekhar Reddy if the Congress came to power. I think Revant has been the face of the campaign. The campaign songs of the Congress carried Revant Reddy's name. So, in many senses, he was seen as the person who was leading the charge against uh, KCR. And the day he filed his nomination from Kamaradi, it was certain that irrespective of the verdict of Kamaradi, where incidentally he is leading, he would okay. be the chief minister. I just want to go for a moment to Raipur because that's really been the turnaround. If all exit pollsters, you can go across exit pollsters. The one state that no exit pollster that I can recall picked up is the BJP will be solidly ahead of the Congress in Chhattisgarh. And that's exactly what's happened. Sumi Rajapan, to her credit, said it's going to be close. Sumi is not just close, the BJP is pulling ahead. Is there a sense that it's a done deal now? that the BJP will form the next government in Raipur? And if so, who will be the CM? Yes, absolutely. In fact, celebrations are already taking place at the BJP headquarters. Dhol, Nagadas, everything has been out that were, that were kept preserved uh, till uh, late at night yesterday. And in fact, the polls are out. We are witnessing colourful visuals here. कार्यकर्ता ही बनेगा और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि भ्रष्टाचारियों का समाज विरोधी लोगों का भ्रष्ट लोगों का सफाया कर दिया गंभीर करने वाले धर्मांतर कराने वाले लोगों का इस प्रदेश की जनता ने सिरे से खारिज कर दिया नकार दिया है भारतीय जनता पार्टी की जीत जनसंघ जन सामान्य की जीत है मोदी जी की जीत है मोदी जी की पॉलिसीज की जीत है आपको ये लगता है अभी एक बजे तक इंतजार करना चाहिए एक बजे तक नहीं है ट्रेंड तो क्लियर सेट हो गया है इसलिए हम नाउ गो क्रॉस टू पूजा शाली उस स्पीकिंग टू ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया लेट्स लिसन इट जनसेवा के पथ पे चली है उसे इस प्रचंड बहुमत मध्य प्रदेश की जनता ने दिया है और इसका अगर श्रेय किसी को जाता है तो प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को जाता है हमारे दोनों मार्गदर्शक अमित शाह जी जेपी नड्डा साहब को और प्रदेश के अंदर हमारे पार्टी के अध्यक्ष बी डी शर्मा जी को और हमारे लोकप्रिय मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान जी को जाता है भारतीय जनता पार्टी का एक एक कार्यकर्ता जिसने तन मन के साथ खून पसीना के साथ इस पार्टी को सिंह किया है उन सभी को जाता है सभी को मेरे दिल के गहराइयों से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और मध्य प्रदेश की जनता को दो मेरे तरफ से कांग्रेस कह रही है धर्म का कार्ड चला और बीजेपी कह रही है कि मोदी की गारंटी देखिए कांग्रेस को थोड़ा स्पोर्ट्समैन स्पिरिट सीखना होगा खेल के समय में जीत होती है खेल के समय में हार होती है जो जीतता है उसके एक गले में माला पड़े जो हारे वो भी अपने दिल पर लेकर हार को स्वीकार करे 
ये ईवीएम मशीन एक बार एक हां इनकी जो हो जाए एक पहला उनकी हो जाए उनकी हो जाए इसके बाद में कर स्पेशल के लिए और जनता का नतीजा हम स्वीकार करेंगे हमारे साथ है मुख्यमंत्री को लेकर के सवाल कर रहे हैं मध्य प्रदेश में हमारे मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान जी उनके जन देशी नीतियों के आधार पर और प्रधानमंत्री जी के पूर्ण एक तरफा एक सोच विकास और प्रगति के आधार पर प्रचंड बहुमत आप खुश नजर नहीं आए तो आपकी खुशी भी देखेगी तो आप चलिए आपको बहुत बहुत बधाई खुशी के लिए जैसे सोशल मीडिया पर टैग कर रहे हैं कि ये मेरा नंबर वाली मोदी की गारंटी मोदी जी की गारंटी एक एक प्रदेश के लिए है मोदी जी की गारंटी पूर्ण देश के लिए है और मध्य प्रदेश और देश को विश्व पटल पर उजागर करने की गारंटी प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया इट्स वेरी नाइस टू सी हाउ ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया नरेंद्र सिंह तोमर एंड शिवराज सिंह चौहान ऑल द सीनियर बीजेपी लीडर्स सिटिंग टुगेदर इन भोपाल watching the results come in live us a sign there of sportsmanship and teamsmanship dk shivkumar is speaking at this moment in hyderabad let's listen to what the karnataka deputy cm is saying voters of uh, telangana for having shown the confidence on us we will restore the confidence but you seen that mr raven K Shiv Kumar there all congress people looking quite glum at this moment because the BJP and their supporters are the one who are ones who are dancing this afternoon a historic victory in Madhya Pradesh a historic victory in Chhattisgarh and in Rajasthan as well the congress consigned to Telangana which is a big victory make no mistake but the only victory which they actually won against a regional front in a direct BJP congress Rahul Gandhi Narendra Modi battle Prime Minister Modi showing who's boss. See, basically, Congress at the end of today will be in power. Correct me if I got my numbers right. In three and a quarter states, they are in power in Himachal, small state. They are in power in uh, Karnataka, and now in power in Telangana. The quarter I am giving them is for Jharkhand, where they are a very much junior partner in the state. So that's three. Tamil Nadu DMK. Three, yeah, but they are not in government. They're not they're, in they're, government. You know, the government is DMK. So three and a quarter. On the other hand. the bjp has now got three important north indian states to already add to uttarakhand to uh, uttar pradesh to haryana so if you do a map of india and and gujarat and maharashtra where they are in government with shiv sena the northwest monsoon as i call it rahul is blowing through this country you start in goa goa gujarat maharashtra come into central india chatisgarh rajasthan madhya pradesh and then go into north india into haryana and uttarakhand uttarachal that's a large number that's Rajin, a huge geographical area can i ask you a question sure turn it around your state maharashtra yes what does what is mr pawar thinking right now what does he think i mean he's already his own <laughs> party is imploded uh, we've seen in recent panchayat elections if anything ajit pawar has taken a large chunk of the party organization so mr pawar frankly has to worry about first you see all these india alliance leaders have to first worry about consolidating their home turf forget about winning delhi you see i think what today has done is put the momentum so firmly in favor of the bjp i don't see the india alliance recovering from this blow in a hurry let's listen to jyotiradya sindhya who's speaking to pooja shali at this moment president jp nadda ji who has directed us asked us to rise to the occasion it goes to our chief minister shivraj singh chauhan ji whose schemes have resulted in this victory our party president bd sharma ji but most of all it goes to every bjp party worker on the ground in madhya pradesh through your channel i would like to thank every voter in madhya pradesh who has blessed us for the fifth time and i bow down to them i bow down to the marti of madhya pradesh and i thank every individual worker from the bottom of my heart and i promise them that our party will work untirelessly for their development and their progress and to take madhya pradesh to new heights you don't want to take credit for snatching the congress seats now the into complete the credit for this victory BJP. goes completely to every worker of the bjp every single worker of the bjp who has worked tirelessly what about those who said anti incumbency bjp don't want shivraj singh chauhan sab sabko jawab mil gaya 
कल तो मैं आपको बताऊं कांग्रेस पार्टी तो पूरे दुकान के लड्डू खरीद रहे थे बधाई के पोस्टर लग गए थे हम चुपचाप अपना काम कर रहे थे कल मैं अयोध्या में था मैं लखनऊ में था मैं ग्वालियर में था मैं पूर्ण निरीक्षण एयरपोर्ट का कर रहा था भोपाल आया और हमें पूर्ण विश्वास साथ रहेगा सभी को अपना जवाब दे दिया जो जो शब्दों का उपयोग कांग्रेस के बड़े बड़े नेताओं ने मेरे प्रति किया पिछले तीन वर्षों में उन सभी को जवाब मैंने नहीं जनता ने दे दिया और जो कहा था मेरे कद के बारे में उसका जवाब भी ग्वालियर चंबल संभाग की जनता ने उस नेता को दे दिया और मध्य प्रदेश की नेता ने उस जनता ने एक्सेस माय इंडिया इंडिया टुडे पोल बिकॉज ही सेड वन फोर्टी एक्यूरेट डेड ऑन टारगेट एज ऑलवेज माय सल्यूट टू मिस्टर प्रदीप गुप्ता सम सेड शिवराज सिंह चौहान में नॉट बिकम द चीफ मिनिस्टर आव एम आई लुकिंग एर न्यू फेज दर्कर ऑफ द बीजेपी हैज वर्क टायर्डली स्ली फॉर दिस इलेक्शन Our Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan ji has worked tirelessly for this election. All leaders of the Madhya Pradesh, we have worked unitedly for this election. Our central leadership has been the one that has powered us, and most of all, it is Prime Minister Narendra Modi that has resulted. Congress, what will they say? Congress, Congress, who is so confident? Congress, I have no doubts about Congress. As much as they have given me the last three years, I have welcomed them. On my side, in my heart, they have given me good feelings. On my side, in my heart, they have given me good feelings. On my side, in my heart, they have given me good feelings. On my side, in my heart, they have given me good feelings. On my side, in my heart, they have given me good feelings. On my side, in my heart, they have given मैं उनको शुभकामनाएं देता हूं ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया यू नो मेनी दे आर स्पीकिंग टू इंडिया टुडे चेतन वांट्स टू मेक अ क्विक पॉइंट आई जस्ट वांट टू से दैट इट्स अ बिट सैड इजंट इट लाइक इन पॉलिटिकल टर्म्स ही इज अ टैलेंट आई मीन ही इज गॉट द ब्रांडिंग ही इज गॉट द लेगेसी ही इज गॉट अ रीजन ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश वेयर ही हैज अ कनेक्ट एंड द कांग्रेस दैट बैड दैट टैलेंट मैनेजमेंट इज या ही जस्ट दे जस्ट लेट इट शो बैड दैट यू लेट योर बेस्ट मैन गो and if they had just appointed let us say for 2 years even and then the people of madhya pradesh may have said well he's young okay. let's give him a chance i mean they lost two governments because of that right the let's previous one also let's listen to shivraj singh chauhan nadda ji ka hame margdarshan mila main kendra ko pranam karta hu phir humne pure chunav ko puri taakat se samuh ke netritva mein lada हमारे प्रदेश अध्यक्ष वी डी शर्मा जी और संगठन के बाकी सारे कार्यकर्ता भी काम में लगे और सबसे बड़ी एक बात और है कि डबल इंजन की सरकार नरेंद्र मोदी जी का आशीर्वाद सदैव मध्य प्रदेश को मिला तो केंद्र सरकार की योजनाओं का भी आदर्श क्रियान्वयन हमने मध्य प्रदेश में किया और मध्य प्रदेश सरकार ने इतने वर्षों में चाहे सड़क हो बिजली हो पानी हो शिक्षा हो स्वास्थ्य हो सिंचाई हो कोई भी क्षेत्र ऐसा नहीं छोड़ा जिसमें बेहतर काम न किया हो ये एक दिन में परिणाम नहीं आता लगातार बेहतर काम करने के कारण परिणाम आता है और मैं शिवराज सिंह चौहान who's led the bjp to a historic re-election after being in power for four terms to have a 163 tally out of 230 this is nothing short of an electoral miracle because you've got anti incumbency building up all this while to counter it rajdeep is quite a phenomenal achievement and i think you've got to look at shivraj singh chauhan and his persona you know a five time chief minister of north india is not easy these are turbulent these states these are very big states it's a big state it's a turbulent state to stay on in power and look at how he came into power in 2003 the bjp won madhya pradesh by a comprehensive majority what did they do they edged out their whole old guard sundarlal patwa kailash joshi all were pushed they brought in uma bharti she didn't succeed in governance they brought in the old guard in the form of babulal god he didn't succeed and then they took a gamble with a much younger leader close to uma bharti yuva morcha leader but made him the chief minister and over time shivraj showed that he is a durable leader able to and take people no, along and, and that's the, his biggest strength there is space in indian politics for that old style consensual leader there's space for modi who's this charismatic figure no one will call shivraj charismatic but mama ji has a connect which is very very also personal also make no mistake it also shows how the likes of kamalnath and digvijay singh have watched this up 
in quite an epic fashion for the Congress. Even the BJP's internal polls were showing a tougher fight till recently. The BJP pulling off a historic victory, snatching a massive victory from the jaws of a possible defeat in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. I want to go across to Amit Malviya, National IT Cell Chief of the Bharatiya Janata Party. The BJP dancing to victory in Madhya Pradesh, looking extremely strong in Rajasthan and also now in Chhattisgarh in a very comfortable lead. If there was any question about what would happen in a BJP Congress duel, I think you've smashed the Congress uh, to smithereens in this election. Mr. Malviya, welcome and congratulations. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, I think this is a win for Prime Minister Modi's leadership. Modi ki guarantee, as he said in these state elections, particularly the Hindi heartland belt. And I think uh, no other leader today, other than Prime Minister Modi, has a vision for this country to see a developed India by 2047. Uh, and that is what you see in uh, action. He has delivered everything that he's promised, his credibility, the trust people have in him is what is driving the BJP to success in these three Hindi heartland states. The sweetest would, would victory... Would I be right though, people, Amit Malviya, would I be right, sir? First of all, congratulations. A it's, a, it's a huge day. Would I be right in saying there's a big difference now between the Hindi heartland where you're a dominant party, where Mr. Modi is larger than life, and South India where you would say that the Congress is the principal national party? Am I right? Or is that an exaggeration, you think? Let me finish my point, Razdeep. I will come to the question on Southern India and Telangana as well. The important issue that I wanted to bring to your notice is that the Congress lost power both in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. The two states where they were in power for the last five years. It is therefore quite obvious that the Congress does not know how to govern. The Congress does not know how to retain power after being in office. Perhaps it's a lesson for the chief ministers in these two states that running behind the Gandhis can secure you your job for five years, but it's not a guarantee for re-election. On the contrary, you have the BJP, which has won after 20 years again. Barring a brief period of two years when the Congress was in power, it's been BJP all the way. It is what governance does, it is what good governance is all about, and governments do get elected on governance. That is the message that is coming through. Coming to southern India and Telangana in particular, let's be very clear that this is a mandate against the KCR government. It is not a mandate for the Congress. Similarly, in Karnataka also, the mandate was against the incumbent government. It was not for the Congress. So let's not make the mistake of assuming that the Congress is gaining ground in southern India. It is the default uh, am I, am I to understand, therefore, from what you are saying, that, it, that people are you may saying, have Amit against Malviya, the that 2024, in these states. Are you saying, Amit, then for you, 2024 is a done deal? Given what's happened, the fact that you won three big states and you've taken two of them away from the Congress, do you believe, therefore, 2024 is a done deal now? Look, we do not take any election as granted. We are going to work very, very hard for 2024. We are going to go to the people asking for a third term for Prime Minister Modi. And that is how we fight all elections. We don't take the electorate for granted. <coughs> we have never done it. And we uh, never leave any election to chance. And 2024 is another election after these uh, five states uh, you know, are done with. We will look at 2024 afresh as a new uh, battle for the BJP. And at the end of the day, we have so much to talk about. And Prime Minister Modi has ensured that India today is uh, looked up to in the world order. It is doing exceptionally well as far as the economy is concerned. Uh, unemployment is at lowest ever. Uh, things are on the right track. We are on path to being the third largest economy. Uh, by 20, uh, say 25, 26. So there is a lot that is riding on the governance that Mr. Modi has delivered. We are going to talk about all this to the people of this country and of course hope that we will win the mandate. And let me tell you, 
that the BJP will do exceptionally well in Lok Sabha in both Karnataka and Telangana. Take my word for it because uh, every time I kept telling your team that we are winning Chhattisgarh, uh, there weren't too many takers. I'm telling you again, we will do exceptionally well in Lok Sabha and Telangana and in Karnataka. And that is what the tr truth of what is on the ground is. Talk to us for a moment, Mr. Malve, about how the BJP turned it around in Chhattisgarh and in Madhya Pradesh, where the party's own internal surveys were predicting a much tougher fight in Madhya Pradesh. Some of them showing the Congress in the lead in Chhattisgarh till a few weeks before polling. From there, to turn it around, the fact that the Home Minister himself picking the tough states of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, camping, going down on every seat, trying to figure out how to win, and probably the Congress taking their position a bit for granted, thinking they had it in the bag even before the votes had happened. Now, let me start with Madhya Pradesh first. Unfortunately, the popular discourse in media is often what people in the media want to see and not what is on the ground. Having said that, when you are in power for 20 years, there is obviously some element of fatigue, if not anti-incumbency, and that was also the case in Madhya Pradesh. But the BJP leadership put its head down, looked at everything that was coming to them as feedback, made the requisite changes in the strategy, we fielded heavyweights across the state. Some people thought this was a sign of uh, lack of confidence in uh, the local representative. That wasn't the case. We look at what is coming to us and you decide on the basis of uh, that, which is exactly what the BJP did. Uh, of course, Mr. Shah was on the ground. He was minutely looking at every region. In fact, he traveled to every sambhag of the BJP in Madhya Pradesh and held meetings with party workers. That is what the commitment was, really down uh, to the uh, lowest level. And uh, you see the results. I mean, the BJP has massively won Madhya Pradesh. Uh, coming yeah, one to Chhattisgarh, one big question, Amit. Answer uh, no one gave the BJP a chance till... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No one gave no, BJP a chance in Chhattisgarh three months ago. But uh, if I can take you back to the first rally that Prime Minister Modi held in Chhattisgarh, we realized that there was a great deal of spark in his rally and there were people who were flocking to it um, in very large numbers. And uh, that made us think about the undercurrent, the corruption, the lack of governance, the uh, apathy towards uh, farmers, the liquor scam which destroyed families in Chhattisgarh, it was all there. There was huge anti-incumbency against uh, Baghel. He may have been popular with the, with the section of the media in Delhi, but he had not delivered on ground. And we started building on it. We realized that the people did not vote us out um, you know, five years ago because they were unhappy with governance because after all, we had been in power for 15 years after Chhattisgarh was formed. It was because uh, we could not uh, deliver on the bonus on the uh, paddy is the reason why we got voted out. We made good that. We announced that as part of our manifesto. We ensured that we met people's expectations. And because of the trust that people have in Prime Minister Modi's leadership in the BJP, that they voted for us the way they have. And Chhattisgarh is like I said again, the sweetest victory because nobody gave us a chance. But the party, the leadership, our cadres, and of course the people of Chhattisgarh have entrusted the BJP again with a mandate and we are extremely grateful for that. Are you seeing therefore a generational change now in these states? There's much speculation. Korn Banega Mukhya Mantri. Does Shivraj Singh Chauhan stay on? Does Vasundha Raje come back? Do you find a new face for Raman Singh in Chhattisgarh? Is the BJP seeing these elections? as a moment for generational change? Look, I don't think it's a matter of uh, discussion in a television studio. It is something that the party's uh, parliamentary board will deliberate upon. And we'll take a decision uh, depending on what the mandate is all about. It needs a quite a deal, uh, a, you know, deal of deliberation and we will go through it. Um, no sense. And we will come what's, up with the best sense? possible alternative. What's your sense? Has the time come that you don't make the same mistakes the Congress makes? Will you all bring in generational change? 
Uh, Razif, allow us to decide who our chief minister should be, and my sense is really not of much consequence here. On another note, Mr. Malviya, uh, there were lots of laddus coming to the Congress office this morning at 7 o'clock. I was told 200 kilograms of laddu. Are you sending them a message that, bhai, hume bejdo, aapke to kisi kam ka nahi hai? Well, I think, uh, I don't know about the laddus, but one thing is quite clear. If the Congress thinks that it is their ordained right to rule in this country, then it is not the case anymore. If they uh, persist on continuing with Rahul Gandhi's leadership, they will uh, face a lot many more disasters in the days ahead. You should perhaps ask the Congress spokesperson, how many days did Rahul Gandhi spend in uh, Madhya Pradesh and in Rajasthan as part of his Bharat Jodo Yatra. You speak about marginalization of leaders. Mr. Kharge, a Dalit president that the Congress claims to have put in the job, his pictures went missing from Rajasthan advertisements. I mean, is he the president of the Congress party or is he a rubber stamp president of the Congress party? I mean, and what is Rahul Gandhi's credibility to be the face of uh, the Congress party and their campaign? He could not even win a Amethi. He had to uh, go to Vaina to secure himself a seat in the parliament. But if they are not willing to look beyond the Gandhi family, okay. good luck to them. I mean, I hope Rahul Gandhi sticks around for as long as he can. But uh, that's not the kind of leadership people of India are looking at. And it is quite obvious now that Rahul Gandhi and under his leadership, the Congress has probably lost now 55 elections. But he still continues as their tallest leader. So it's for them to decide, not for me to say. And they can no, cut the you, do. We leave you, it. You, have, you, have no, you have no great, when you're sad, you have no great love for Steve Rahul. Does good. Yeah. You, you make an interesting point. You believe in a way that Rahul Gandhi still remains your biggest asset. No, I don't think Rahul Gandhi remains our biggest asset. He is certainly a big uh, catch for the Congress because they can't seem to look beyond uh, him. And if they persist with him, then the people of okay. India have already given their mandate not once but several times. So, I mean, it's not for me to say whether he's an asset or not. It's for the Congress I mean, to decide and it's for the people of India to reject him again and again like they have done for the last 55 elections. Can I get a nice smile out of you, Amit Malviya? We've had very fractious... Uh, interactions on counting day. Today is a day for you to smile. You've got to smile. Give us a nice Amit Malviya smile. Well, Rajdeep, I am always smiling, but I have advice for you. Instead of going to chief minister's residence and stuffing your face with the food there or singing melodies to chief minister in their private jets, if you had read the mood and reported it correctly, you will not be feeling so embarrassed okay. today. No, here it is. Here it is. No, no, one minute. No, no. Mr. Malviya and I, you please see Neta Nagri one week ago. Congress to uh, lose in Rajasthan. It's here. It's on video. Since you follow video, social media, get your team to please see the video of 10 days ago where I said, and I also said Chhattisgarh will be a tough fight. But it's not you and me, but I hope you'll watch the video, Amit. Okay, so we'll I'll send there. it to you. Well, Rajiv, you know, frankly, I think in your, uh, in your last days as journalist, you should try and restore some of your credibility because anybody who saw your coverage thought that you were reporting what you wanted to see and not what was on the ground. Achha, okay. I'll just leave okay. it at that. No, 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 I, I, I am going to send this to you. Amit Malviya, you unfortunately, I asked you to smile. You end up saying something bitter and caustic, which is again, you know, this is not a social media where you can pick what you want. I'm going to send it to you and to your followers. What I said on Neta Nagri exactly a week ago, who will win? Now smile nicely. I want to see a nice Amit Malviya smile. Well, if you can get yourself to smile after after the Congress's route in three states, I'm certainly smiling okay. ear to ear. Bas, yeh hui na baat, yeh hui na baat. That's that's what I like to see. That's a hint of a smile that you've got. Good. That's a no, start. but it's a big victory. Look at it's how a big man Of course it is. And for the most part, uh, you know. He was being very balanced in after a very big victory. I thought he'd come go boom, boom, boom. He didn't. It's a big victory. I think the BJP there acknowledging and respecting the mandate because if you come back to power on the back of the number of years Shivrat Singh Chauhan has been in power in Madhya Pradesh, that's a huge victory. To win Chhattisgarh in this fashion, snatch victory from the draw from the jaws of imminent defeat. Again, that's a marvel election management. It really shows we're seeing a very unequal contest between a Congress that somehow thinks 
जनता जिता देगी एंड बीजेपी विच इज नॉट विलिंग टू टेक एनी चांसेस अमित मालविया थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस बिग बिग फ्रीज इन द हिंदी हार्टलैंड Uh, the Congress now, and interestingly, is down to just 62. There are 119 seats. You need 60 plus to get the mandate. They were earlier at 73. From there, they've now come down to 63. And remember, and can if, I they, just... if they go below 60, as I said, it's game on. Let if me let me just show that. If they go below 60 in Telangana, it's game can on. Can I just show on the election intelligence dashboard as I welcome uh, uh, Akshita Nand Gopal? I want to look at Telangana and tell our viewers who are watching us in Telangana about the margin calculator for this uh, state in Telangana at this moment. Can the Congress fall uh, around 60? There are 38 seats at this moment where the margin between the winner and the runner-up is less than 500. BRS is leading on 13 of those. The Congress on 21. So 21 of those 65 leads at this moment are quite slender. The Congress, of course, will hope that they'll stay the way they are. But 21 of those leads very slender. Akshita Nand Gopal is the Congress celebrating, or are they just being a little calibrated to see how the final outcome really shapes up? I, I, I don't think they seem to know that things are still a bit uh, dicey and nothing's really concrete, Rahul. Because you look at what's happening around me. There's music in the air. Everyone's dancing at Congress flags. Raven Reddy is expected to come here to the Congress headquarters. He's currently on his way, so he's going to be joining all the Congress cadre here in all of their dance and song, joining in on the celebrations. There's going to be a mega celebration through the day. Uh, this evening, we understand that the entire Congress leadership here in Telangana come together. They have essentially one reason to celebrate, which is in this state, which is in Telangana, Rahul. So they're pulling all stops here to ensure, you know, that they put out this message that Congress has won Telangana. Telangana is theirs now. Devan Reddy will be joining this crowd here, joining the dance. Uh, Telangana, from the point of view of regions, because I think that tells you the story at the moment of Telangana. Take a look at North, which is the TRS bastion. They swept it last time. This time it's the Congress that's sweeping, and remember, this is where the BJP also has a hold in areas like Adilabad and Nizamabad. The BJP leading in three. Take a look at Central uh, uh, Telangana. Here, the Congress, which was hoping to sweep the area, is finding a tougher fight. The BRS leading in 11, the Congress in 19. But the moment you go to Hyderabad, you see how the game changes. The Congress now leading in just one, the BRS in 12. Others in three and OACs, whose party usually wins seven, is leading at the moment in five. And then come to the last region, South. This is where the tsunami of sorts has taken place. The Congress overturning the results of 2018. So it is a rural tsunami, not urban. A sharp urban-rural divide in Telangana. But it puts the Congress at 64. But for safety, the Congress will need 65. Will want to be 60 plus. Anything below that, and then all options open out. For now, the Congress at 64 appears relatively safe in the state of Telangana. Just to take a look at VIPs, K. Chandrasekhar Rao. We've been saying this. This is the major one in Kamareddy at the moment. He is trailing against Revan Reddy in that critical uh, battleground of Kamareddy. Now Azharuddin, who was winning earlier, is trailing in Jubli Hills. It was expected that Maganti Gopinath is a very tough candidate, and he would probably come through in that state. There is no major surprise in that sense in what's happening. Etala Rajendra is trailing in both his seats. He is the BJP's face. Came to it from the TRS, and he is trailing in both his seats. An important loser at the moment is the finance minister of the state. Harish Rao, nephew of KCR, who's trailing at the moment. But overall, if you look right round at the moment, it appears that the Congress is holding its own in rural Telangana, which is why it's ahead. In urban parts, it's the TRS which is holding its own. Does that, you know, Rahul Varma? When you have such sharp rural-urban divides, TRS, even in an anti-incumbency wave, the BRS holding its own in Hyderabad. so it's less to do with uh, rural urban divide but much more to do with congress's structural presence in the state uh, congress has been uh, a weaker party organizationally in the hyderabad region plus there is some kind of understanding between 
uh, 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 BRS plus AIMM, AIMM. So that makes Congress's uh, uh, chances of uh, winning uh, seats in the greater Hyderabad region much more difficult. Okay. Let's go across to Yogendra Yadav, Chief of Swaraj India. He's joining us, uh, sharp political mind. Um, Mr. Yadav, what according to you is the big national takeaway from today's election? How would you sum up the results that we've seen so far? Uh, Rahul, uh, the major turnaround of the Congress in Telangana, which could have been a national story, has been overshadowed by a very major setback in the Hindi heartland. And it's a setback not just for Congress party, it's also a setback for all of us who want to see a change in this country, who want to see uh, a political badlaw at the national level. Uh, I could, I must confess that while I can see why some of these elections became much closer than they needed to, because the real setback is that Congress could have actually won all the three. These are not impossible elections that Congress was destined to lose in the big, right in the beginning. That's why it's a setback. I must honestly confess, I do not fully understand the extent of BJP's victory in Madhya Pradesh. They are leading by 8%, closer to what your exit poll had shown. I understand it. You had anticipated it. I don't fully make sense of how a party which had almost lost the last election came back illegitimately and did not do a great job in governing in the last four years against which there was a broad sentiment of badla. That party has won with eight percentage point. But whatever, this is a fact and one has to reckon with it. To my mind, the three big lessons, while one could always blame and the usual tendency, at least in political analysis, Unlike cricket analysis, Rajdeep would appreciate, is that in politics, whoever wins, we say that they also they fielded well, they bowled well, and they batted well, which normally doesn't happen. To my mind, in the case of Rajasthan, uh, it is there was no anti-incumbency against the chief minister nor against the government. There was anti-incumbency, intense anti-incumbency against MLAs, which the Congress did not acknowledge and ended up rewarding them the tickets back. Also in Rajasthan, the second major factor was that Congress could have struck two simple alliances, one with CPM, the other with BAP. And to my mind, these two have cost Congress at least 15 to 20 seats so far. So it could have been a much closer election. In Madhya Pradesh, I think Congress fought organizationally a better election than they did last time. But uh, they did not have an overall narrative and they did not have a social strategy. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, uh, the story is different. Again, a government against which there was no broad anti incumbency but which failed to translate that into a political narrative. So that is what seems to have happened. But, uh, but I, it's a very major setback. Yeah. Can I therefore summarize, you know, you're, you're giving us what you believe has happened in these three Hindi heartland states. What if I said in a single line that basically the Hindi heartland is Modi-fied? You can call it BJP-fied, Modi-fied, but that we are seeing consistently Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, now Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh across the Hindi heartland. The BJP is virtually becoming a dominant party in several parts. How do you combat a dominant party? Is that in a sense showing the weakness of the Congress or the strength of the BJP? But may I add to uh, it, Mr. No, Yadav? No. May I just let, add let, to that yes. question? Yes, may, please, may I sir. add to that question, Rajdeep? The sheer fact that uh, the Congress now sees, especially in the Hindi heartland, the OBC card caste census as a game changer going into 2024. Mr. Yadav, you've been also one of the biggest proponents of that. None of that seems to be catching on ground, at least where the Hindi heartland is concerned. Um, I would not call it modified, but because, you know, you have to include uh, what happened in Himachal Pradesh. You have to think of what happens in Bihar and so on and so forth. But the fact is that BJP is very strong in this North Indian Hindi leading up to the West India uh, bet. In that, what should Congress do? Uh, on the OBC card, it is true that Rahul Gandhi spoke about caste census very clearly. But was this actually an election issue on the ground at all? Did the Congress candidates speak about it? Did the Congress workers even know about it? Did the Congress take this message to the OBC and SC at all? At least I did not see that on the ground. The Congress doesn't so even, me, with due regard, Mr. Yadav, the Congress doesn't seem to have a strong, viable OBC leadership. 
You see, the, the questions, we, we've been raising this about Bharat Jodo Yatra. You were part of that Yatra. The Congress is taking uh, credit in South India, saying the Bharat Jodo Yatra galvanized us. But look at North India. It also went through Madhya Pradesh. It also went through Rajasthan. And it has zero impact. So you start wondering whether Rahul Gandhi is... And even in, in Telangana, there will be those who will say this is just an anti-incumbency vote. Nothing to do with this Bharat Jodo Yatra. So questions again over Rahul Gandhi's leadership? Uh, Raj, that anti-incumbency is something which is invoked as and when a ruling party loses. The question is, why did anti-incumbency not happen five years ago? Why has it not affected uh, BJP and so on? So to, and, and about the OBC leadership, let's not forget that uh, Congress's CM in Rajasthan and in Chhattisgarh were OBCs. To my mind, the three broad lessons that I see for Congress are the following. Number one, Congress's overall national posture of its leadership is not aligned to its actual ground level political campaign. Number two, Congress's own vote base, which is which is the bottom of the pyramid, namely the poor, SCST, OBC, that is not aligned with Congress's own leadership uh, and Congress's own policies. And number three, Congress needs to, so Congress needs to be, uh, the third lesson is that Congress could be more harsh on dealing with people within and more liberal in dealing with people outside. Uh, this is what we saw in Rajasthan. These are three broad lessons at the national level, but indeed it is a setback. And unless some of these lessons are learned by Congress and by the opposition in general, it is much tougher than it looked this morning, the 2020. Looked at from a BJP perspective, Yogendar Yadav, would you accept that this makes the path to victory in 2024 that much easier? for the BJP and for Prime Minister Modi on the back of this kind of success in the Hindi heartland, it now becomes very difficult to dislodge uh, the BJP and prevent Prime Minister Modi from winning a third term. If you did simple numeric calculations, you would not say that because uh, uh, the fact is that BJP had swept all these states. Telangana was one state where BJP was had four seats and was hoping to improve. So while today's verdict dashes BJP's hopes of increasing the numbers, the fact remains that Congress needed to do something to BJP's complete dominance over this region. And today's results do not affirm that hope. And therefore, the opposition really needs to think hard about okay. its strategy. No, so you're they not, need to you're have not a accepting it's a done state. deal? You're not Sorry? accepting 2024 is as close to being a done deal? Because remember 2018, the Congress won all these three states and yet lost. Now they've lost all these three states. Does it make it even more difficult for the opposition? Uh, difficult, yes. Done deal, no. The reason I say no is that in the South India, in a sense, uh, it's curtains for BJP in South India as far as 2024 is concerned. Uh, in Karnataka, BJP has 25 seats. No one, not even BJP spokespersons, I hope, on this channel would say that they, they are going to get 25 in Karnataka. In Telangana, BJP had four. They were hoping to increase. This was the only state where BJP could have gone up. They are not doing so. Okay. So, that larger challenge still remains. But yes, if you ask me, has it got tougher? Of course, it has got tougher today. And the so, opposition really needs to think fresh. Has it, we'll leave it there. We'll hope to have you back in the evening. For the time being, Yogendra Yadav, thank you very much for joining us. I want to welcome Sanju Verma, national spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janta Party. She's joining us at this moment. Ravish Pal Singh is in conversation with Shivrat Singh Chauhan in Bhopal. Let's listen to Shivrat Singh Chauhan, who's led the BJP to a historic victory in Madhya Pradesh. Here is the former, uh, the current chief minister, the man who hopes to be chief minister once again. Let's listen to Shivrat Singh Chauhan. सर सर रोल इस वक्त हमारे साथ मौजूद है मध्य प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान जिनके नेतृत्व में भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने एक प्रचंड जीत की ओर कदम बढ़ा दिए मध्य प्रदेश में तो सबसे पहले शुभकामनाएं आपको जीत धन्यवाद आपने एक बात कही थी भोपाल की एक सभा में मैं फिनिक्स पक्षी हूं आज वो साबित होता दिख रहा है देखिए जो काम हमने किया है प्रदेश के विकास का वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है 2014 से श्रीमान नरेंद्र मोदी जी प्रधानमंत्री हैं उनका प्यार आशीर्वाद और मार्गदर्शन और जनता के मन में उनके प्रति आगाह श्रद्धा और प्रेम डबल इंजन की सरकार के काम 
उसका परिणाम आज सामने सर तीन राज्यों के खास तौर से हम बात करें छत्तीसगढ़ राजस्थान मध्य प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ और राजस्थान में तो जो सरकारें थी उनके खिलाफ गया लेकिन मध्य प्रदेश में सरकार के साथ वोटर गया इसके पीछे सबसे बड़ा फर्क देखेंगे तो बाकी राज्यों में एंटी इनकम्बेंसी थी मध्य प्रदेश में एंटी इनकम्बेंसी नहीं प्रो इनकम्बेंसी थी जनता का प्यार सड़कों पर मुझे झलकता हुआ दिखाई देता था आपने एक जिक्र किया था अभी तीन दिन पहले सीहोर में कि कांटे कोई नहीं है बहुमत की सरकार में जो कांटे थे वो निकल गए वो कैसे निकले लाडली बहनाओं ने निकाल दिया अब प्राथमिकता अब क्या रहेगा क्योंकि मुख्यमंत्री का चेहरा तो क्या आप बार बार कहते हैं संगठन तय करेगा लेकिन कहा है वो पूरा करना है अब यहाँ से आपको क्या लगता है एग्जिट पोल जो एक्सिस माई इंडिया ने दिखाए थे वो आपको लगता है सटीक बैठे हैं लगभग वही परफेक्ट निकले हैं एक्सिस माई इंडिया चाणक्य इस तरह के जो कुछ आए थे मैं एक एक की बात नहीं करूंगा लेकिन वो परफेक्ट राहुल गांधी ने एक पनौती शब्द का इस्तेमाल किया था आज कब क्या कहेंगे जनता ने जनता ने जवाब दे दिया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ये थे मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान जिन्होंने आज तक से खास बातचीत की रवीश पाल सिंह लेट्स गो अक्रॉस टू संजू वर्मा नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन ऑफ द बीजेपी द बीजेपी रॉम्पिंग होम टू पावर इन स्टाइल इन मध्य प्रदेश राजस्थान एंड इवन छत्तीसगढ़ इंटरनली सम इन द पार्टी व थिंकिंग ओके एक तो निकल जाएगी दो आ जाए दैट विल बी टू टू दैट विल बी अ गुड वन यू इन फैक्ट हिट द कांग्रेस आउट ऑफ द पार्क इन द हार्टलैंड you know uh, rahul i was not there on your channel uh, yesterday or on the 30th but on our rival channel uh, without any ifs or buts because i don't uh, uh, hold any prisoners i say it as it is i said we are winning all the three madhya pradesh rajasthan and chatisgarh without any ifs or buts whatsoever and i'm so uh, glad uh, that you know uh, it's not just a victory एक होता है कि आप जीत हासिल करते हो एंड दूसरा होता है देर इज अ राउट ऑफ द ऑपोजिशन लुक एट दी शेयर मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द बीजेपी विक्ट्री इन मध्य प्रदेश सो कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू प्रदीप दैट वीडियो डूइंग द राउंड ऑन सोशल मीडिया वेर राहुल कवल इज सिंग अरे लोगों को नींद नहीं आ रही है सच होगा ना हमारी फजीहत तो नहीं उड़ेगी ना तो राहुल कवल जी आपकी फजीहत नहीं उड़ी ना बीजेपी की फजीहत उड़ी एंड राजदीप सर्दे से टेलिंग प्रदीप प्रदीप यू बेरक गेट दिस राइट अदरवाइज वी विल बी इन डीप ट्रबल सो राजदीप यू आर नॉट इन डीप ट्रबल बिकॉज प्रदीप इज गॉट इट राइट एंड आई थिंक द रीजन वाई आई रिमेंबर वॉट ही सेड इज बिकॉज इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गो अगेंस्ट द पॉपुलर नेरेटिव एंड स्टिल होल्ड योर ग्राउंड Uh, so you know, um, kudos to that. Uh, but I just want to say one. I think Rahul Kaval uh, is bored of this particular tanktia, which I quote so often on his shows, and I've done a zillion shows with him. But I always uh, say this, and uh, I don't think it's going to go out of style. I will repeat what Prime Minister Modi told the opposition a couple of months back on the floor of the Lok Sabha. तुम्हारे पाव के नीचे ज़मीन नहीं है. तुम्हारे पांव के नीचे जमीन नहीं है लेकिन कमाल तो यह है कि तुम्हें यकीन नहीं है लेकिन कमाल तो यह है कि तुम्हें यकीन नहीं है एंड आई थिंक दिस इज सो एक्ट बिकॉज द ऑपोजिशन हैज बीन रनिंग हेल्टर स्केल्टर ऑन थिन आइस एंड येट इट हैज फेल टू एक्नोलेज दैट इन मध्य प्रदेश एंटी इनकम्बेंसी है ट्रांसफॉर्म वेहमेंटली इन टू प्रो इनकम्बेंसी इन छत्तीसगढ़ Why I said that the BJP will win because on another channel I said nobody gave us credit for the fact that we undertook a massive organizational revamp. We made Arun Sau the chief of BJP in Chhattisgarh. We inducted uh, O P Chaudhary, a former bureaucrat who's been doing a lot of groundwork uh, quietly but resolutely. Uh, you know, we uh, made sure that we gave a relevant opportunity to uh, Kedar Kashyap. Uh, the son of Baliram Kashyap, a stalwart in Chhattisgarh uh, politics from the BJP's end. Earlier, Chhattisgarh BJP was all about Saroj Pandey. It was about Raman Singh. Uh, it was about Bridge Mohan Agarwal. But the BJP has expanded its footprint in Chhattisgarh in terms of the sheer organizational revamp by inducting new blood, which finally seems to have paid dividends, which nobody. Either from Godi Media or Pappu Media was willing to take cognizance of point number one. Point number okay. two. Okay. Point. That was just point number one. Sanju Verma, you know, <laughs> I, keep it short today. I just want to understand one thing. Which Rajiv, is interesting. Today, please, don't, please don't. Please don't try you? and you know teach me lessons on how I should conduct myself yeah. on national television. No, no. You seem we to are, be giving are... homilies to BJP all the time. 
I don't want to trivialize a victory. I don't want this okay. to be Rajiv sure. versus Sanju Verma. But let truth be told. I don't want it to be either. Let truth you... be told. So I want an explanation. Saw some no, can I... today. Ma'am, just a minute. Simple. Can I just understand one thing? Four state governments today, three are being voted out. One of BRS, it appears, and two of the Congress. The one BJP government is being voted in. What do you think the BJP does right that the Congress doesn't? Simple, so nice question. Speak. Yes, so now let me... I'm not a cricket uh, buff, uh, nor am I a movie buff. Uh, but uh, let me speak in cricketing, uh, you know, uh, terminology because that is what Rajiv, Rajiv Sardesai appreciates. I think, and at the uh, expense of sounding, you know, uh, to be a blind bhakt, I say blindly, you know, haan bhai, modi bhakt hai, galat kya hai? It is better to be a Modi bhakt than to be a Panati Pappu's bhakt. But be that as it may. Uh, Narendra Modi has the reliability factor which MS Dhoni has enjoyed for the longest time. So the reliability of Dhoni, the flamboyance, flair and aggression of a Virat Kohli and the perseverance and style of Sachin Tendulkar. Never give up. And the sheer dedication. I'm telling you, I'm not a seasoned politician. I've spent longest time, donkey's years in the corporate sector. But trust me, even on the smallest matter, the kind of organizational homework, the kind of groundwork that is done, I mean, you have to be a part of the system. It's unbelievable. Sometimes, you know, I ask myself, this is a textbook classic case in management. And, you know, having been a management student, I am told, you know, uh, a small thing that I want to say. Philip Kotler always says that the greatest disservice you can do to a bad product. And listen to this very carefully. The greatest disservice that you can do to a bad product is to continuously market it. And not realize that it is the time to abandon it. product problem with the opposition that is the problem they don't re they don't uh, seem to realize they are banking on a product that is well past its expiry date sanju says she doesn't uh, watch much cricket or bollywood that's because <laughs> she watches a lot of india today that's one of the reasons why that's uh, why our ratings are up huh Sanju, I, I hope you've been watching the channel since the morning. Now, don't uh, say no, you haven't. No, no. I, I, yeah, that reminds me. I have been watching India today more than I have been watching other channels. I would uh, uh, not uh, disagree on that count. But I just want to say one thing, Rajdeep. What is the new narrative you have North versus South divide. I remember Rahul Kaval is the only anchor. Even on 30th November, when everybody was writing of the BJP, in the 36th grade, look, the BJP has been cleaned up, blah, blah, blah. He said, let us not you know, run ahead of ourselves in terms of pop punditry. So, this pop punditry ka culture, hai, I think that also is responsible uh, for, you know, uh, the opposition today feeling let down because inko to laga tha bhai hum 36 garh mein 36 garh mein sarkar hamari hai telangana mein to humko no, waise is logo ne mandate diya hai wait 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 supporters and leaders sanju were had no. all their lines ready about how great a victory this is going to be for exactly, rahul gandhi exactly and how rahul gandhi has led the congress and it's the return of rahul gandhi exactly. all that panditri and all those lines will have to be kept for another day and i remember you never... kept saying that let us not engage in panditri but i just end by saying one very small uh, you know uh, a small observation that i want to make had rahul gandhi's party forget about madhya pradesh rajasthan if they had even won chatisgarh rajdi bolda two for two Halaki, you know, you have 54 seats from Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan alone. And from Terengana and Chhattisgarh, you have about 28 Lok Sabha seats. And 54 Lok Sabha seats from Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. So comparing Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan on one side and Chhattisgarh, Telangana on another side would have been like comparing apples with watermelons. But now the whole game is over for Congress. Chhattisgarh is also winning BJP, Madhya Pradesh. It's a route for the Congress. And Rajasthan, where they were banking on this hung parliament thing, people were saying, hey, law and order is not an issue. Oh, women have been gang raped in Bhilwara, in Dosa, in Pali, in Jodhpur, in Karoli. Kaun se badi baat hai? It's a given. You know, so when you okay. try and rationalize lawlessness, when you try and rationalize, uh, you know, uh, corruption uh, which has uh, run its course in Chhattisgarh, that is when okay. you okay. are doing a disservice to the electorate which is far smarter than you. And as Rajdeep says, ye public hai, ye sab jaanti hai.
and you know you cannot fool the electorate because it's not gullible anymore and i just want to say one more thing why okay. do you forget why do you forget please why do you forget one thing bharat jodo yatra is a failure point number 1 rahul gandhi cannot be launched any longer unless the congress wants to really ensure its complete demise Point number three: There is no north versus south divide. North of the Vindhyas and south of the Vindhyas. Narendra Modi continues to be the tallest leader by far, with zero competition. And if you want to call that the Tina factor, uh, be that as it may, the fact is that the most important point, the biggest takeaway, is that you cannot start this narrative about caste census three months ahead of state elections and expect okay. the people to not see through your charade. Tell me, Rahul. Thank you very much, Sanju Verma. Population in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh is OBCs. If the caste census was such a big issue, why could not the Congress capitalize on the Madhya Pradesh and Telangana OBC electorate? Fifty to fifty-two percent. Okay, we'll call you back for more. OBCs. Sanju Verma, thank you so much for your time. Many congratulations on these historic victories. And I love how when any of the guests come, no matter which party they come from, they're able to quote back what we've been saying verbatim. and that's the risk with pop panditri you say something which is slightly out of line on the back of initial trends it can come back to bite you very badly later so you have to be very very calibrated in what you say i want to go across to akshita nand gopal she's at the congress headquarters in hyderabad and what i love about the telangana elections is that they're all glued to india today everywhere no matter which party office it is they're all watching india today That's Revan Thredi, 64 leads at this moment, up 45 from the last time. That's the one sliver of hope, and the one piece of good news for the Congress in what's otherwise been a pathetic day at the box office. Very true, Rahul. Uh, and let me just show you what's happening around here. The celebrations continue. Revan Thredi is right now here at the Gandhi Bhavan. He's inside meeting with many of the Congress men and women. Who's toiled for months together to ensure this kind of a victory? So celebrations at its peak here. The only state, as you pointed out, where there's reason for Congress to celebrate. But I think looking at the kind of crowds that have gathered here, Rahul, looking at the kind of celebrations and and the grand heroes welcome that Raven Reddy got, I think it's safe to say that there's no real suspense over who will be the chief minister. Of course, uh, it has to come from the Congress High Command. But you can see that uh, all the songs, and if I can. Just tell you about what this song is. It's all praise for Raven Reddy, and this has been playing at every single one of his rallies. Today, they're playing it at the Congress headquarters, and everyone's dancing to these beats, knowing full well that there was a Raven Reddy factor involved also in ensuring this kind of a victory. Let me speak to some of them. Who is responsible for the win yes. for Congress? Who is responsible for the Congress win in Telangana? Raven Reddy. Raven Reddy. So you want him to win? Yes. Raven Reddy will be the upcoming chief minister of Telangana. He is the only person who has been working hard in Telangana. Jai Raven Reddy, Jai Congress. Yes, On December 9, Raven Reddy will be. Yes, he will be the chief minister. Bye bye. Yes, he will be. Bye bye. But none of the experts are yes, he will be. He none of the experts, and he is the winner of this year. The Telangana chief minister is the 9th of 9th of December. Raven Reddy, chief minister. Will you accept anyone else as chief minister? Sorry. Will you accept anyone else? From Congress no, 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 no. Never accept the uh, PR of team. PR of team. Everything is not accepted. But uh, okay, Congress so, is the. So these are Congress supporters, but they're also very, very important. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. They're also very importantly Raven Reddy supporters here who have gathered. He's become synonymous with the Congress here around. So if at any point you know there's some big surprise that's coming our way about the Chief Minister face, it's going to lead to all of these people also being very, very angry with the decision by the High Command. But from what I've heard to the senior leaders that have spoken here, all of them are saying that this is a post that belongs to Raven Reddy. Given how popular he is, given the fact that. the india today access my india post poll study clearly puts him at number 1 in the congress uh, pack of leaders and contenders rajdeep the congress has to be suicidal to pick anybody else apart no as of now he will be cm and i'm told he's going to be sworn in on the 9th of december which is sonia gandhi's birthday so they want to give sonia gandhi that's what revant is thinking no i'm told that's the date that he wants yeah. and that's the date that they hope that the congress leadership will agree but there are others bhatti vikramarya is someone who hopes That his name will come. His his supporters are already trending, but T for CM. 
He's a Dalit face. He's been the CLP leader. But I think this leader, this victory is largely, I mean, at the local level due to Revan Reddy. Just think about it. A couple of years ago, he was a kind of backbencher. He'd won a member of parliament. He was, had spent a long time with the Telugu Desam, brief spell with TRS, and of course, had been in the ABVP. So he was seen as the outsider. But he's come in and galvanized them by going, you know, taking his battle, his Vijay Yatra on the front foot. I think there's a lesson in that. If you give someone, empower someone, give him that power, he also worked very well with Sunil Kanagulu. Sunil Kanagulu is the election strategist of the Congress. They gave space to each other. In North India, Rahul, the problem is the old guard of the Congress is just not willing to relinquish the space and not willing to accept any new ideas. And accept professional advice. The problem with someone like a Kamal Nath was he was so certain that he knew all the answers, that he wasn't listening to professional strategists. And that, I think, is an epic botch up. Because you have to look at data, you have to look at what the polling is saying, and you have to go with professional advice. This old generation of netas and journalists, including journalists, who sitting in their studio seem to think they know it all, always trying to find some ways of reviving Rahul Gandhi's career, and announce, waiting to announce how the Congress has bounced back. You know, you have to allow for the data to do the talking before you put your theories out, because that's really more reflective of bias than it is of anything else. So you go by the polls. You will recall, India Today's cover, a week, uh, five years ago this week, Rahul Gandhi on the cover, you know, being seen as the man of the year. That 2018, six months later, Mr. Modi sweeps. In politics, nothing is permanent. Therefore, you know, I think we've got to recognize I keep maintaining, Rahul Gandhi has just not been able to find a connect in the Hindi heartland, which is why he's gone from Amity to Wayanad. I mean, why did you go from Amity? You lost Amity, you went to Wayanad. The Congress increasingly has become a party of the southern states, even in Western India, in Maharashtra, Gujarat. In Maharashtra today, you could argue Congress is party number three in a state which was once a dominant Congress party state. So I think the Congress has serious... You know, my problem is to pin it only on Rahul Gandhi is not the answer. The answer is, this is a party which has serious no, organizational you know, crisis, you know, leadership since crisis, since the crisis of ideology did, and narrative. I want to walk across to election intelligence dashboard, which is really getting rave reviews from our viewers. But just the kind of analytics we're being able to put out. And I want to give you a sense of the way things look at this and moment. The biggest victory, as we've been saying, comes from Madhya Pradesh. In Madhya Pradesh, the BJP at this moment leading in 160 Five seats out of 230. That is a ginormous victory, given especially the fact that you're up against four terms of anti-incumbency. The BJP's gains coming from virtually all the regions of Madhya Pradesh. In Bagelkhand, they're down one. In Bhopal, they're up three. Bundelkhand, they're up three. Chambal, they're up 11. Mahakaushal, up 15. Malwa, up 17. Nimar, they're up four. That's a very big victory for the BJP across Madhya Pradesh. If I look at the overall national picture that emerges out of the 638 seats, where counting is on at the moment, the BJP leading on 337. No wonder JP Nadda looks very pleased with himself and Malikarjun Kharge is looking circumspect. 233 for the Congress. That's a very poor show in comparison with the last elections. From here, let's come for a moment to Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is the biggest surprise from a BJP perspective because they weren't expecting this clear a lead. I spoke to a very senior, one of the top BJP leaders this morning while our coverage was on. He thought Chhattisgarh would be tough. He was hoping that they do well, but he acknowledged that it was looking tough. From there, the BJP at this moment, they were at 15 in the last elections. They've jumped up 38 seats to 53. The Congress is down 34. 234, Chhattisgarh really, Ashok Malik, is an example of the BJP snatching a big victory from the jaws of near imminent defeat. Well, even BJP leaders who were half confident about Madhya Pradesh were, you know, even. I'm telling much you, I spoke to one of the top leaders this morning. They had, they had more or less he, said, Nikal, nahi, he said, no, it'll be tight, but mushkil lag rai. Just this morning, no. while the counting was going on. But it, it tells you something about the BJP, not just in terms of leadership, but in terms of the organization, that it has managed to def defend a 20 year incumbency in Madhya Pradesh, while the Congress has found it difficult to defend a one term incumbency, in, even with a strong chief minister. No, and also. For a moment, think about the prowess in election management of Amit Shah. 
He didn't go to Rajasthan. He told people around him that it's easy, you know, I don't want to spend there. That's where J.P. Nadda went. He went to Madhya Pradesh and he spent time in Chhattisgarh, rotating candidates, bringing in new faces, and the fact that in these tough elections, the Home Minister himself driving the campaign on the ground, taking the tough decisions, and moving things around in the political chessboard to ensure that on the day of polling, he's able to get his voters out. He said, and I mentioned this earlier, that maybe the polls are showing us behind, but in the numbers that we are getting, I'll get more people to the polling booth. So the poll may show Congress in front in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. They'll be able to get lesser people to the polling booth. So there'll be people who intended to vote Congress who may not go. I will get more people who intend to vote for me to go. That really is that, micromanagement of a very high order. You know, each BJP worker at the booth level is given a list of names. People he has to ensure come out of their houses and vote. That sort of micromanagement, that sort of last mile determination is frankly not there in other parts. But Chetan, in some senses, you know, this is like a super heavyweight champion up against a bantamweight boxer. You put them in the ring and but the result is likely to be the same each and every time. Why, why is he a superweight boxer? He's also, they are also Indian citizens with the same passport and Aadhaar card as Rahul Gandhi has. I mean, how, how did they become superweight champions? They were not born with it. In fact, they are homegrown, they are like first generation. And that shows the difference hunger, passion, hard work can make in any profession. You know, I mean, but, to but keep on look. assuming, I agree, they are the, I said in the morning also, they are the 900 pound gorilla in the room. They are like Google in search and Microsoft made chat GPT and made them dance. Congress needed to have made them dance today for have but, any hope. They but can't. you know, look at what they've done, for example, in Karnataka. They lost Karnataka five months ago. So, for all the micromanagement organizational skills, there are limitations to it. But what have they done since then? They had marginalized Yadurappa and believed that they could move to a post Yadurappa Karnataka. Now they've gone back to Yadurappa. His son has been made party president and they seem to be giving the sense that we believe that we need Yadurappa for the Lok Sabha. So, you're willing to swallow your pride. You made mistake. JDS. Amit Shah, Rahul Kaval, you will recall at the conclave said, JDS and Congress are two sides of the same corruption. What have they gone and done? They've gone and tied up with the JDS. Why? Because they believe that in southern Karnataka, you may well need the JDS to offset the rise of the Congress. So you're willing to learn, you're willing to cause correct. Sam, Dam, Danda, Bhed. Let's be clear. And you don't put your ego ahead. You, like Kamal why, Nath could have why, given a few yeah. seats to the Samajwadi party which, in the areas neighboring Uttar Pradesh. He chose not to. No, even, is, even in, even in, even in uh, Rajasthan, you realize at some stage that you will need Vasundra. You had to mollify her. It didn't take, you know, it wasn't easy, but you eventually did it. She went and campaigned without being projected as the face. Shivraj Singh made... Chauhan, let's be clear. Today we are playing encomiums to Shivraj Singh Chauhan. BJP in September was not mentioning Shivraj Singh Chauhan's name. By October, he was suddenly out there as one of their faces. So the BJP's ability to cause correct. correct. Koi, you know, it's not as if this is some uh, invincible machine, but it is a machine that is willing to do what it takes to win elections. The Congress, on the other hand, did exactly the opposite. Please tell me, for five years, you could not resolve the problem between Gaylord and Pilot. Only on the last day, you had a photo op. You know, look at... When I look at these numbers, Congress could have been close to the BJP True. in Rajasthan had you been able to prevent a united front six months ago. You failed to do that because you thought Ashok Gaylord, the man who challenged you, Ashok Gaylord challenged your own leadership of one year ago and you Twice were not over. able to do anything. Twice else. over. Twice no. over. So what did, what did you do? You couldn't do anything. Look at what you did in Chhattisgarh. You last moment met T.S. Singh Deo, your deputy CM. You had promised him chief ministership. For half the term. Uh, for half the term. What happened? So the Congress, unfortunately, the point that Yogendra makes is well taken. There's a huge gap between your national leadership and how your local uh, leaders look at elections. But that also shows how weak your national leadership is, Rajdeep. Or disconnected. Where disconnected or weak. Where you're working in Telangana together, you're completely disconnected and have no idea in the three heartland states. Absolutely. See, they, have, they are in power. They had Rajasthan. They had Chhattisgarh. And it's like that Avis, the car rental company said, we are number two, we work harder. You just had to work hard and show that when Congress comes to power, we do a better job than BJP. Yes, all these things also, organization, all that. But you had five years, you were in power. And what did we see? Like there's a division in the party. You know, people are just watching drama unfolding on screen. More drama, drama, drama. No, yeah, Rajasthan is a classic it's... example. Rajasthan yeah. is a classic example of the Congress shooting itself in the foot. True. You, 2018, you had Sachin Pilot, young generation leader. You had Ashok Gelot, experienced leader. Get them to work together. If they don't, 
find a way. That's management. Look, management is about managing no, no, but conflicting Rajdeep, if you look at, Okay, if you just look at the numbers right now of Rajasthan, 109 by 73 where the Congress stands. If the Congress had its act together, they could have put at least 15 more on the board. 100% and that at would have brought... At least 15 so more So it shows that the Congress is unable... You know, management school is about managing people. You are not able to manage people. You keep promising the pilots is, something, it in, didn't happen. In both Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, the BJP actually managed a much more factualized party organization much better. It managed to send central leaders, including ministers, and told them, go fight MLA level elections. I agree with you, Ashok, with one caveat. When you are in power in the center, you can get away with you it. You can get away with a lot. When you have Mr. Modi's own personal popularity, you can get Mostly. away with a lot. I would like to see the post Modi BJP being able to deal with factionalism the way Mr. Modi is. Today, because Mr. Modi is India's number, Neta number one, he's like Amitabh Bachchan. From one to ten, in the late 1970s, Bachchan was number one. You didn't know who was number two, whether it was Vinod Khanna or anyone else. Therefore, he's able to, you know, if Mr. Modi decides Manohar Lal Khattar banega, Khattar hi banega. So what in will, the Congress, you can't do that. So what will happen now is that with the Congress national leadership further weakened, you will have these regional satraps demanding their pound of flesh. I do not rule out a DK Shivakumar tomorrow saying that I want to have a date by which I would be made the chief minister. No, Sudhir, Kamata. you tell me here. I am seeing trend number six on tw Twitter. Bhatti Vikram, uh, Vikram Arka for CM. So he'll tomorrow say, Mujhe bhi banna hai. If yeah. he's not made today, he'll say two years from now. Yes. And the party leadership es will be left helpless again. Especially when they have only 66. It's just six above the uh, halfway mark. Yeah, so he you, can move. So you could have a group of, let's say, uh, SC MLAs or SC and ST MLAs saying that we want our pound of flesh, we want these many ministries or we want to Do see... Do you see that happening today or six it months or one year now? Because Ravant will have the national leadership's backing. He's seen as the man of the moment. But sooner than later, depending on what, how it transpires, let's say in Karnataka, where DK, as you know, was also promised some kind of a bigger role, not just a deputy CM. It would, those no, rumblings no, will DK, happen. Once DK, the honeymoon period is over, those rumblings will DK happen. DK's supporters have already sent out a message that DK has been promised two and a half years, two and a half years. What will happen when two and a half... Same thing, T.S. Singh Dev. Yeah. I still recall the day Rahul, T.S. Singh Dev and Bagel came to Delhi. In the morning, we were told that Bagel is being replaced by T.S. Singh Dev. By the evening, Bagel stayed on. Poor T.S. Singh Dev was wondering what had happened to him. Now, that's... The Congress's inability to manage factionalism because of a weakened high command is a now going to no, the joke work the against CLP them in state was, after state. The joke the CLP meeting was where everyone, where Sachin Pilot sat down with Mr. Marker and Mr. Kharge, hoping that by the end of that CLP meeting, he'd be the, uh, the chief minister in the final leg and there were no MLAs. So I think there are serious problems for the Congress. I think the good news, therefore, you know, who will be very happy today are the India allies. Yeah. Because they will feel that Congress wale aate hai, meeting mein humko dictate karte hai. Whether it's a Kejriwal, Mamta, Banerjee, uh, all the smaller parties, Akhilesh Yadav, they will now say, you want to work with us? You Akhilesh, can't work only on your own Kamal terms. That's what Kamal said, no? Akhilesh, Akhilesh, Korn. No, no, I met Akhilesh Yadav at a wedding last night. So I said, you know, Kamal Nath ne aapko kaha, Akhilesh, Akhilesh. He said, jane dije, kal dekhte hai kya hota hai. But you know, so, it, you know, they will all have a feeling of schadenfreude at what has happened today. They may be happy, but the point is, the India alliance as a, as a political factor, as a rival to the BJP and the BJP's alliance, the NDA, becomes that much weaker in state after state, including the crucial state of Maharashtra. Yeah, it should have been 2-2. You know, in, in what you're saying would have happened if there was a 2-2, like Congress is so, you know, still kept in check, but they're still performing somewhat. But now, what is this India alliance? Like, wh what... Yeah, but why should it be 2-2? You see, if you're a party... No, I'm saying, I'm saying if Congress had won two states today, they could have at least gone to the India alliance. Now it almost feels like the whole idea of like boycotting 14 reporters, and the whole thing made a lot of news, but it's not working, right? Are you any of the boycotted ones? By the way, I met some of them and they're saying all the India Alliance leaders are coming on their channel today. No, you see, the fact is... <laughs> That's separate. Issue. The fact is, all of this may make headlines. Eventually, yeah. you have to connect with people. You know, India, Indian elections are about last mile connectivity. The BJP has mastered the art of booth level, bundle level, uh, communication. The Congress, to some extent, did it in Karnataka. First, they made they this name, right? They made this name and they said, we have won the war on the name. The name has connected. India name has connected. Master stroke, master stroke. Then they boycotted 14 reporters. No, but let me give you an example, <laughs> just to show how it's worked. You do an India Alliance meeting in Mumbai. You say we are going to hold a grand meeting in Bhopal next month. We are In the first week of October, we are going to hold a grand Dali. meeting in... What does Kamal Nath say? 
I don't know about any such thing. I don't want a rally. Why? Because the DMK may attend and the DMK has <laughs> used certain words on Sanatan Dharma. So he didn't want the DMK around. Samajwadi Party, which has some hold in Bundelkhand and Bagelkhand, you don't want to have a tie-up with them, even though Akhilesh was desperate to have a, you know, he said, give me four or five seats, at least we'll give the impression of being together. So you have an India alliance in Delhi that sits in a five-star hotel, either in Delhi or Mumbai, but on the ground, what's happening? On the ground, you're fighting Arvind Kejriwal. It'll be interesting to see how much, how many votes he's picked up in Chhattisgarh. When you went in Chhattisgarh, Amarpi Party was fighting the Congress and you saying know, that Bukhaj Bagel is corrupt. Okay. The loudest voices against Bhupesh Bagel I heard on the streets of Chhattisgarh were from Aam Aadmi Party uh, activists. So no, how because you... the Aam Aadmi Party wanted to get into an alliance with Mr. Bagel, especially where the tribal areas were concerned and they were completely slighted by Mr. Bagel. But for no reason why, but what is the Aam Aadmi Party's take in a place like Chhattisgarh? So that was the reasoning given by Mr. Bagel at that time. No, no, you can't. You, you, are, you, are, you can't. In Indian politics, this True. has to, you know, if yeah, you want, got... when you are fighting Narendra Modi and you Amit Shah, you have to have, or you've got to play the perfect match. Australia won the World Cup final by playing the perfect match against India. India is a better team, much better team, but they played the perfect match. The big story today, far from the loser's lament, is the BJP sweep in the Saffron State. These are images from the Congress headquarters in Hyderabad. Revan Reddy has just reached the Congress headquarters. They are fully watching India today in a manner that I am delighted with. The fact that every single person, no matter which party office it is in Hyderabad, we love all of you for watching us so closely. And the fact that our poll also turned out to be correct helps that, of course. And our coverage and the fact that all the leaders have been speaking to India today first. All that now playing out in the Congress headquarters where Revant Anna has just landed up. Leading, giving the Congress some saving grace. Imagine if they were less than 60, there would have been so much horror and anger in the Congress camp. The only fact that they're still holding on to the straws that they are is because they won an important state like Telangana. You know, a state which was created in a way by the Congress. Yes. And was also one of the many blunders of the Congress. When you list the blunders, many will say, here was Andhra Pradesh, solid 40, uh, 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 42 oh, MLA, uh, uh, 42, 42 MP. MP state. 33 you won by the Congress in 2009. That's right. You, you won 2004 and 2009 on Andhra. Sudhir will tell me, but I have still not understood what was the compulsion to push through Telangana. You did so, you lost out to KCR. Today, in a way, it's payback time for the fact that you gave Telangana. But Andhra Pradesh, the Congress is a wipeout there at the moment. I don't think this is going to change anything in Andhra. Though, interestingly, Sudhir, someone has sent me the arrest of Chandra Babu Naidu also affected KCR because the Kammas have taken revenge, some say, because KCR was seen to be hand in glove with Jagan Reddy. Is there any truth in that or is this Congress victory confined now to Telangana? It will have no impact on Andhra that goes to the polls in a no, few months. The, that impact of Chandrababu Naidu's Kamma community influencing the vote would be seen only in some constituencies the settlers, in Hyderabad the so and some in Khammam district and probably bordering Nalgonda, but not beyond that. But the feeling was that the TDP, even though not contesting this election, was in a sense, in a tacit sense, supporting the Congress this time. Even though its alliance partner, Janasena, was contesting along with BJP. So that's a bit messy. But the Telangana effect will be felt on, uh, uh, on um, uh, Andhra Pradesh politics. The interesting part is that Chandrababu Naidu in 2018-19 went against the BJP, fought against, lost both Andhra Pradesh, also got reduced only three Lok Sabha seats. Chandrasekhar Rao, the other Chandra of Telugu state politics, also pretty much reduced to the same state. We'll have to see how the BRS performs in April 2024. You know, it, it, it's therefore, you know, the, the Congress therefore can find this southern comfort. But unless it can build a bridge beyond South India, it's going to find it very difficult to sort of remain relevant uh, see, to we, the national we discourse. Talking about it's, it's not well, dominating. Right? We keep yes. talking about southern comfort. Let's face it, if there's a referendum or a presidential contest between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi just in South India, Mr. Modi will win. Our, our, if, if, if we recall on political stock exchange, the only two states where Mr. Modi was well below Rahul Gandhi, if correct me if I'm wrong, was Kerala Tamil and Nadu. Tamil Nadu. These were the only two states where he was Let's below Rahul Let's listen to senior BJP leader, Union Minister Smriti Rani is reacting on these big BJP victories. Jis prakar ka kataaksh vipaksh ke netao ne Narendra Modi par kiya, wo kataaksh vipaksh ko Gandhi khandan ko mehenga pada hai. जनता जानती है कि विकास के मुद्दों पर सिर्फ नरेंद्र मोदी का नेतृत्व भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ही खरी उतरी है और जनता ने उसी पर भरोसा करकर पुनः 
मोदी मैजिक के माध्यम से आज ये परिणाम हमारे सामने प्रस्तुत किया है तेलंगाना में मैं अनुरूप नहीं आया नतीजे मैं इतना ही कहना चाहूंगी भारतीय जनता पार्टी के कार्यकर्ता प्रतिबद्ध हैं कि नरेंद्र भाई के नेतृत्व में हमारे राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष जी के मार्गदर्शन में हम पार्टी को हर प्रदेश में सशक्त करेंगे आज के परिणाम हम सबके लिए सुखद हैं लेकिन साथ ही दो में जीत का संकेत है The BJP there, massively reassured by these victories, now almost certain of a strong showing in 2024, unless something disastrous happens. And given the astute political management of the BJP top brass, even when something seems to be going wrong, they quickly make the corrections that are required. This victory pretty much seals 2024 for all practical purposes. The Congress will have to slog it out for another six years to try and put together. a machine which can take on the bjp in chat if you can snatch chat the bjp can snatch chatisgarh from the congress an election which is really something that the congress should have won the congress will find it very difficult to beat the bjp in a head on head fight 2024 i know nothing is a done deal in politics but it's as close to a done deal today that's my say let's you know let, let's say it because The BJP won 62 out of 65 of these Lok Sabha seats as well. That was some would say post Bala Court. This is not Bala Court effect. This is your state leadership proving itself. Your national leadership adding its ammunition. And I can only see the BJP, frankly, once again looking close to 300 at the moment. I'm trying. No, they're to... going for 400. There are. There are only... No, one second, one second, Rajdeep. Like we saw in Uttar Pradesh, where everybody was saying 200 par, the BJP said 300 par. The BJP's big war cry. When the Prime Minister speaks, he'll be going to the BJP headquarters at 6:30 p.m. this evening at Din Dayal Upadhyay Mark. Their big war cry will be "Up ki bar 400 par." So there are there are four states where I see the BJP still vulnerable. One is uh, Karnataka, one is Bihar, one is Bengal, Ma and one is Maharashtra. These are four states that the BJP. But see what they've done in Maharashtra. They've broken the Shiv Sena. They've broken the NCP. So they've consolidated themselves. they will i'm sure in karnataka they've effected a leadership change they brought in the jds in bihar i think they are very clear that they will try and craft their own caste coalition to take on lalu and amit shah's first rally i mean think about this campaign over on the day that voting is taking place in telangana where was amit shah in bengal addressing a huge rally so this is you know this machine that keeps See, roiling on in bihar the bjp bjp alone last time won 17 seats in alliance with jdu won 39 party for the bjp to repeat 17 may not be that difficult repeating 39 will be tough i agree yes raul a lot of people are asking what the lok sabha trends could look like so what we'll try and do in just a moment is to give you a sense of in the conversions which have happened so let me first first let me stand in the middle try to explain nobody takes a screenshot and gets it all wrong let me explain what we're going to do in the seats which we've converted uh i'll show you what the parliament conversions are going to look like if you aggregate the assembly wise vote share what does parliament look like i'll show that to you akshita nandgopal is just trying to get a mic in to see if she can speak to revan reddy let's listen and if we can catch in there So as I explain, what we'll try and do, and I'll build on this over the next couple of hours. This is the first cut I'm showing you. Each Lok Sabha seat is made up of assembly segments: seven, six, eight. If I add, we haven't added for all just yet. If I add each of those assembly segments into Lok Sabha trends, what does it look like? So we'll do that. I'll start, for example, with Madhya Pradesh, and we'll try and show you what the conversion of these assembly segments into Lok Sabha trends could look like. so there are 29 parliamentary seats in uh, madhya pradesh if we convert and obviously it doesn't work like this the factors are different the elections are different the mechanics are different but if i just did a simple arithmetic just for the sake of adda you know you want to have adda you want to talk what will happen so instead of just talking let me give you some data if i convert the trends that have come so far from assembly segments into lok sabha leads the congress would have seven lok sabha leads the bjp 22 so at the very least and the bjp will of course hope that this goes up at the very least the bjp would have 22 lok sabha leads in madhya pradesh from there let me come to chatisgarh there are 11 lok sabha seats in chatisgarh on these 11 lok sabha seats if i convert the 
assembly trends into load. This is all being done live. I'm seeing this for the first time myself also. So if I now convert assembly leads into Lok Sabha trends, on these 11 seats, the BJP at 8, the Congress at 3. And remember, a Lok Sabha election is easier for the BJP than this. So 8 already, the Congress only at 3. So from there, I now want to go to Telangana. Let's see what's happening in Telangana. Uh, in Telangana, if we just did an arithmetic conversion, as I said, this election intelligence dashboard is quite magical. It will typically take people many days to do those kind of conversion. We can do it live for you. So if we convert assembly leads into Lok Sabha, the Congress leading on nine uh, uh, Lok Sabha seats, the BRS on six, the BJP had four last time, this time at one, but they'll hope to do better in a Lok Sabha context. And uh, lastly, let me come to uh, Rajasthan. In Rajasthan, when I last checked, the data wasn't complete, but for what it's worth, from the seats we've been able to convert so far, the BJP leading on 16, the Congress only on 3, the other data I don't have just at this moment, I'll update it next time. It's looking pretty good. The BJP is looking at this, ha, okay. they won't take it for granted, but they'll say, okay, we're looking strong. And in the Lok Sabha contest with Mr. Moody sure. on the ticket? Yeah. Just There's add 5, I, I mean, just add 5 to 10% market share, uh, uh, vote share <laughs> on this. And then make the graph. And the stock market will boom in the morning, you know. That is I was job. speaking to Shell Bhatnagar, who heads uh, markets today for Business Today Television, and he said, you know, if the BJP wins two Artlin seats, you watch Rahul tomorrow. When the markets open, the BSC and NSC will be at historic highs. They weren't expecting three wins. With three wins in the Artland, yeah. the markets will be on a roll. Absolutely. And just, you have, I, I mean, this is, I understand they're just doing a literal translation, but the vote share is going to be very different. Um, in the next, and the, it's going to be advantage BJP, and uh, I don't know what the India Alliance will do. Maybe they'll come up with another story. You know, we'll know. In a world which is so volatile, huh? in a world that is so volatile, with with, with elections uh, so unpredictable in democracy after democracy, if India gets the same government and same prime minister for three successive terms, that's remember that's Margaret a Thatcher and Tony Blair, two other transformative leaders in their third election struggle. I mean, they did win, but it was a lot of struggle. They, any leader, you know, uh, any leader internationally, if you're looking at these results, globally, they'll be envious of Narendra Modi. India's Prime Minister, after nine and a half years of being in power, to have this kind of popularity across the heartland is quite amazing. It's an astounding achievement to be able to keep voters on your side. The pundits may not be on their side. They're just itching and waiting to write his obituary. The voters have a mind of their own, Rajdeep. And it's not going to stop. On 22nd of January, you'll have Mr. Modi doing the Ram Mandir inauguration. If anything, that will give it even more emotive resonance across North India. Uh, in that sense, he's got the narrative. He's got the leadership, uh, uh, I, I, you know, the, the leadership battle, in a sense, sewn up. If I was the opposition, I wouldn't really know what to do. You know, assume that you're actually talking of a, of a rival who's ticked all the boxes at the moment. Uh, there was even talk that the poorer sections of society, those on the margins who suffered during COVID, are the ones uh, who perhaps would vote against the BJP. But look at what's happened in Chhattisgarh. The poorer parts of the country, Chhattisgarh has some parts of the country where a large number of Dalits, tribals, who live on the margins are there. They've all reposed their faith in the BJP in this election. So, in parts of Madhya Pradesh, Malwa Nimad, for example. So, clearly, I think he's built what, with Shivraj Singh Chauhan also is true, Bharosa, trust. So when you're looking at a double engine then... He's also built a welfare architecture gets, that gets linked directly to the union government and to him. And you know, even when you went across the states, Rajdeep, which we spoke of during the exit polls, when we were trying to conflate both the two, you can't. Because mm -hmm. the voters, which were very clear, who were very clear that they were going the Congress way, made it very clear that when it comes to 24, they're going to vote the Prime Minister. Hello? Okay, let, let's just uh, listen in to Akshita Nand Gopal, who's finally Arre, caught sir. up with Revan Haan, Reddy, the one Congress leader who's beaming at the moment, even though at 63, the Congress is only three above the halfway mark. Think about it. If there's a split tomorrow in the Congress, what happens next? I'm happy for that. I'm happy for that. You have assessed. Your party has won. They want sir. We are going to close the show uh, with those pictures of Revan Reddy. These are the only pictures that the Congress can be gleeful about today. 
else it's been a saffron sweep. So from there, I'm going to show you the pictures across BJP offices in different parts of the country. Kabi khushi, kahi gum. Khushi in the BJP camp, gum in the Congress camp. Today has been the BJP's day out. The BJP reasserting its supremacy in southern India. Revant Reddy there. Those are pictures in Hyderabad, but I'll ask my producer to shift to all the pictures that we've got from other capitals of the country, from Jaipur, from Raipur, and from Bhopal, where it is the BJP's day out. On that note, I must take our first break. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back in the evening with plenty more. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. As much as we thought that the Rajasthan result is going to be neck and neck, it clearly looks now that the BJP is taking a lead. The numbers are showing BJP leading. You are already celebrating. What's the mood? Bilkul Bharatiya Janata Party prachand bhooma se Rajasthan mein sarkar banane cha rahi hai aur ham iske liye bahut bahut dhanyavad karte. राजस्थान की प्रत्येक नारी शक्ति का जिन्होंने की इस महिला विरोधी कांग्रेस सरकार को उखाड़ फेंकने का जो प्रण लिया था वो आज पूरा हो गया है और पूरी महिला शक्ति हमारे शांत धारीवाल जो महिला विरोधी बयान देते हैं वो पीछे हैं और राजस्थान ने महिला जाति ने उखाड़ कर फेंक दिया कांग्रेस सी एम कौन है सी एम कौन हो गया अगर सी एम कोई भी बने राजस्थान में बहुमत ऐसी सरकार बन रही है कोई भी सीएम बने हम जीत गए सीएम कोई भी बने हमें स्वीकार है अच्छा सीएम कोई भी मिले आप मोदी के लिए वोट किया है या किसके लिए राजस्थान की सुशासन लाने के लिए और मोदी जी के लिए आप गहलोत अगर हारेगा तो क्यों हारेगा अगर नहीं हार गया गहलोत 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 लिपट गया नारी को सुरक्षा दे न सके वो सरकार निकम्मी है You had the BJP already doing the victory dance here. Uh, massive ju jubilant celebrations as we see here right outside the BJP office. There you have the entire setup here all decked in saffron. BJP flags, orange balloons, people wearing orange gear. A lot of them painting their face in orange. Uh, it's, it's quite an ecstatic moment here for uh, the BJP cadre in Rajasthan undoubtedly. watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. Co-presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. Co-presented by Nexa, Create Inspire. Co-powered by Parul University, Vadodra Gujarat. Co-powered by 
आर सिल और मित्तल ने पहुंच स्टील इंडिया बनाऊंगा मैं बनेगा भारत वेलकम बैक बिग डे फॉर द बीजेपी स्वीपिंग द हिंदी हार्टलैंड थ्री स्टेट्स टू ऑफ विच वर अर्लियर विद द कांग्रेस राजस्थान एंड छत्तीसगढ़ एंड रिटेनिंग पावर इन मध्य प्रदेश द कांग्रेस इज सोल कंफर्ट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम तेलंगाना एट द मोमेंट वेयर आई कैन टेल यू द लीड आल्सो हैज नैरोड द 63 इन दैट 119 मेंबर असेंबली वन ऑफ द हीरोज ऑफ द डे राहुल इज शिवराज सिंह चौहान यू कांट गेट इनफ हिम ऑफ हिम ऑन अ डे लाइक टुडे Shivraj Singh Chauhan. This is second or third public appearance that he's made. It's interesting, Raul. It's uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan's second or third public appearance he's made, and look at it. Right down the line, all the front rows dominated by women, and he's been open about it. Ladley Bena, he's giving it credit. He's got women right there. He's projecting himself as the next Chief Minister. Ashok Malik may not necessarily believe that he will be one, uh, but the fact is that Shivraj Singh no, Chauhan. No, 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 purely, is there, is there the any cuts. leader who's come out as often as Mama Ji has this morning? That's right. He is coming himself. out at every available opportunity, from the Bhopal gas uh, tragedy anniversary to meeting a Ladley Bena to coming out and speaking to speaking inside his house. This is a victorious Shivraj Singh Chauhan. 
signaling to voters in Madhya Pradesh, signaling to his bosses in Delhi, signaling to the BJP karyakarta across the country that this is a big victory. You cannot take credit away from Mamaji. So there's a lot of posturing and signaling as well. Raman Singh's done a bit of that in Chhattisgarh, but he's on a shakier wicket because he, A, wasn't projected, B, he was in opposition. Shivrat Singh Chauhan is in government. government. And while he acknowledged the role of Home Minister Amit Shah in micromanaging the campaign, in helping on the ground, it then becomes very difficult for the BJP at this juncture to institutionalize a generational change, even if they were thinking about one. Huge difference between Raman Singh and Shivrat Singh Chauhan. Shivrat Singh Chauhan, incumbent chief minister, uh, with his back to the wall, wins an election, wins such a massive mandate. On the other hand, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Chhattisgarh, the OBC factor is important. Raman Singh comes from a previous era where the BJP could perhaps was the what I call the pre-OBC uh, BJP. Now you've got a BJP which at every level is dominated by OBC leadership, starting with the Prime Minister. And to counter what the Congress says about OBCs being discriminated, I see any one of three or four names within the BJP's, uh, within the BJP's Chhattisgarh unit who are from the OBC uh, community, who are the front runners to become uh, the Chief Minister. Meanwhile, the breaking news we are getting is the BRS appears to have conceded. KCR concedes defeat in Telangana. KCR says... Uh, no, no, this is uh, Krishank Mane of the BRS saying that... Uh, we we respect the verdict. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact is that the first time the BRS is coming out and saying it, even though Sudhir, the margin isn't as if, you know, it was, it was looking like 70 about an hour ago, it's down to 63. And we want to make very cautious, if it were to come to anywhere below 60, then all options again open in, in Telangana. Because the BRS so far was in the 30s, it has moved to the low 40s. 63, incidentally, was the number that KCR's TRS won in 2014, the first election after the bifurcation or around the time the bifurcation took place. So 63 is not a safe. In fact, many Congress leaders, including Renuka Chaudhary, said below 65, we are not safe. Okay, so 41 for the BRS, 63 for the Congress. The Congress, which looked to be winning big, is now winning, but just about crossing the finishing line, not looking comfortable. And that's been the case. Where the BJP is winning like it is in Madhya Pradesh, it's picking up 161 seats. Our poll was bang on in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, but this is just a phenomenal victory. After 20 years of being in power, 18 years of being in power, to win in this fashion is just an electoral marvel. This is the command, the BJP machine, the chief minister, the party leadership has with the voters of the state that the Congress is less than half of the BJP. Look, there are two really major verdicts, I think, today that have come, or you could say two and a half. One big one is Madhya Pradesh. The surprise of the day is Chhattisgarh. I think Chhattisgarh has given the BJP a sense that this is a momentum that they built. It's not just about Madhya Pradesh, not just what the exit polls are like Axis said. We've turned around Chhattisgarh, a state where no one gave us really... I mean, out of 10 pollsters, 8 predicted a BJP defeat in Chhattisgarh. They've won that and winning no. it handsomely. Not in a super over, as we thought, winning it handsomely. Rajasthan, you could argue that, you know, compared to 2013, it's not as big a win, but it's still a big... A win is a win. So, for the BJP, all three coming together, perfect. Two and a half, I said, because in Telangana, if the Congress is able to go above 65, it is some southern comfort. But... Boss to win 161 after 20 years in power is tremendous, no, remarkable. But they, they won in different ways in different states. Madhya Pradesh is a pro-incumbency vote, women voting for Shivrat Singh Chauhan and the BJP on the back of Ladli Behna and various other schemes. Chhattisgarh is a management ka election. You know, in that micro-management that is required, throwing up new leaders, removing your uh, old leaders who have this, uh, who have disaffection or anti-incumbency and finding a way of making the Congress lose and finding a way to win. And all the big Congress leaders are losing. T.S. Singh Deo has go not lost an election that? in 15 years. So let's show that on the election intelligence dashboard. We'll go through the VIPs in different states. You mentioned Chhattisgarh, so I'll start from there. In Chhattisgarh, if we look at the key candidates and how they are faring. Dr. Raman Singh in Rajnand Gaon is leading uh, Bupesh Bagel in Patan, the chief minister who's now on his way out, is leading. T.S. Singhdeo uh, is actually trailing in Ambikapur. He comes from the Targuja area. He's trailing deputy chief minister. Amit Jogi naturally trailing in Patan if Bupesh Bagel is winning there. 
Vijay Bhagel, again the third, uh, the MP over there, he's trailing. Uh, apart from that, Arun Sao, now the, listen to this man and his story carefully because he's one of those who could potentially be chief minister. He is leading in Lormi. Uh, he is the state party chief. He's a sitting MP. I was on a flight with him on the way back from Raipur. He thinks he's going to be chief minister if the BJP wins and now they've won. So he thinks he'll be fancying his chances. Fancying his chances also will be Bridge Mohan Agarwal. The problem though is that he comes from the Banya trader community and therefore it's much tougher for him to be made chief minister in a tribal state because you know the tribals versus the traders, that's the, that's the dynamic at play over there. So it's complicated for him. Uh, apart from this, let's take a look at, uh, for example, another senior congress leader uh, is trailing again in Durg Grameen. Uh, Tamraj Dwat Sahu is trailing the state home minister. So that's as far as Chhattisgarh is concerned. From here, let me come to Rajasthan and take you through some of the key VIPs for Rajasthan. Uh, Ashok Gehloth leading in Sardarpura. He though is on his way out. To his credit, if there is credit, he hasn't been hammered as badly as he usually gets hammered at the end of his term. He's been beaten, but not as badly as he usually gets beaten. Vasundra Raja Sindhya in Jhalra Patan. She has uh, won. Sachin Pilot is leading in Tonk. CP Joshi Nathdwara uh, is trailing. Rajivardhan Rathor is leading. He was trailing initially in Jotwara. Rajendra Rathor in Taranagar is trailing. Pratap Khachare was interestingly Preeti. He is trailing in civil lines. Satish Punya of the BJP trailing at this moment. Govind Dotasra is leading Lachmangar. Professor Gaurav Vallab, the spokesperson who is contesting in Udaipur is trailing. Uh, Shanti Dhariwal is leading. Vishwaraj Mewar, interestingly, in Nathwara is actually beating C.P. Joshi. Apart from this, Kirori Lal Meena is uh, winning in uh, Savai Madhupur. Dia Kumari is winning uh, she's in Vid she's, she's won in Vidya Dhanagar. That, that is one of the safest safer seats. seats. Mahan Balaknath is leading in Tijara. Now, these two candidates are also those who would be fancying their chances, Ashok Malik, if the BJP is to institutionalize a generational change in Rajasthan. I mean, but they can do a change in Chhattisgarh and in Rajasthan if they wanted. In Madhya Pradesh, because you got because an incumbent, incumbent, incumbent chief minister, chief minister. And he's one with 162. But, it's that much. Now you have changed. You are saying that you are saying that you are saying that you finally been able I to convert him to our point. The moment for a generational change is when you have 150 seats rather than 120. But that's my hunch. I'm not in politics. I think, I, I think the change but, that... I think, in, I, I think, Rahul, the generational change will take place in Rajasthan. And Rajasthan, there are because, many. Because I don't think that Vasundara... You see, you fought this election without projecting her. And you've yet won. Unlike the past. So once you've done that, once you've not projected her, you had a Parivartan Yatra, she was not necessarily the only person part of it, then you've got options. Then you've got every reason to say... As no. in Chhattisgarh. As in Chhattisgarh. In Chhattisgarh, almost certainly, as in Rajasthan. or In Rajasthan, they will look at the caste calculus. Do you want to, in some way, look at OBC politics again in Rajasthan? Do you want to look at possibly a, a tribal face? You see, the BJP always looks at caste calculus. My sense is it will be someone from the OBC community there. And they have plenty to go by. There plenty. Is, there is Baba Balaknath, there is Bhupendra Yadav, uh, there is uh, Gajendra Shekhawat who fancies his chances as well. Yeah. Uh, there is CP Joshi who comes from Chittorgarh. Okay, and those are interesting images there. DK Shivkumar giving a laddu. The only laddu the Congress can eat today is in Telangana. Revan Reddy, likely to be the next Chief Minister, is getting a nice big laddu from DK Shivkumar. He went there to safeguard his MLAs. Hopefully, that's not required. 65 is where the Congress there, is at. There's a new party which has been formed today called Congress S. Which is what? Congress South. In the past, there used to be a Congress S, which Shadat Pawar and others ah. had broken away and formed in the 1980s. A new party has been formed called Congress S. This party is the party which is dominant south of the Bindya. You know, I That's want to ask a question to Sudhir. Sudhir, I'm looking at the trends, especially where the AIMIM is concerned, and it's fascinating because it's completely shrunk. It's the decimation of the AIMIM. So that... Though uh, what, it is, yes. Yeah, it's still leading in seven seats, so they may still win their seven seats, but, but the margins will be much, much lower. Much lesser. Uh, Yakutpura was what I was getting the figures for where the BJP is said to be leading. So no, I don't no, know. Let's be fair, just to correct to our friends, oh, Mr. OVC. He's, he's come back. But, Okay. He's won out of but, he but won he, seven last seven. time, so he, he's winning in six. Only Nampalli, which was expected, 
You see, we have, we have to we have to go with the way the wind has blown. Yeah. Now he's but, he's winning his bastions. But no, has he, it struck that no, no. OVC is team B of the BJP? Has that narrative struck? No, that. See, the thing is that the way the Hyderabad old city is that it is seen as an MIM citadel, which is why the voting percentage is also low. People don't go for vote. Vote karke bhi kya fayda? MIM to jeetne wala hai. So that's the general attitude. But this time, it has kind of fluctuated a lot, which normally does not happen with the MIM seats. You know, it, it goes in exactly. one direction. Exactly. This time, the BJP has also made inroads into uh, the MIM citadel, which would be a matter of worry for OVC four months down the line. Okay, Pradeep Gupta now joins us, lead pollster at Access My India. Pradeep, welcome. Uh, you've got the Telangana poll, right? You've got Madhya Pradesh, right? Madhya Pradesh bang on and, and a real outlier. Madhya Pradesh is a real outlier. So full marks to what you got in Madhya Pradesh. Telangana. Rajesh. Telangana full marks again. You Rajis. cannot compare my performance with others. My okay. performance is my performance. Okay, so Good two you've got no two you've got bang on Madhya yeah. Pradesh Telangana. Your Raj, Rajasthan directionally you are showing the Congress in front. The BJP doing much better than you would anticipate. No, you've got. Let, let's be honest. Also, let's call. We've got to be honest. You got Rajasthan wrong. You've got Chhattisgarh badly wrong. That's the truth. I have to say this. Uh, Rajdeep, uh, in both the cases, we have also projected that BJP is likely to win the majority. We may not have called it accurately as of uh, the you case You got of... Rajasthan wrong last time as well. What no, no, it's wrong not the time? wrong. Last time also we got BJP 72 seats, but Congress, we said 110, they yeah, got Yeah, that last 100. time was okay. This time you got... Hey, directionally to... also, this time we well, have projected I... as the... It cannot, you cannot say it is wrong. I agree, it is not right as well. It's all depend half glass full or half glass empty. Yeah, you know, However I, way you want to see. I, I will say one thing. Sir, if I, it's not right, it's wrong. No, Pradeep got, <laughs> Pradeep got, Pradeep went where no journalist went and predicted Madhya Pradesh spot on. All of us no, went. No, more than the BJP also. Yeah, even the BJP Kar, didn't. Even care. I said BJP ahead, but Karti ki tukkar. I I've got that video. So, oh, Pradeep is way, is spot You've on. You've said so many different no, things. No, 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 I've got it all here on... I'll tell you exactly, but we all, both of us got, uh, Preeti and I got Rajasthan right, Pradeep has got it wrong. I he, got Madhya Pradesh also no, right. No, you said also, uh, slide Achha, this Nobody is not said about 150, journalists. 160. Let's be clear. Okay. Let's I, I all be honest with yeah. ourselves. It's a way to do We journalism. didn't say wave. Yeah, yeah I didn't nobody say said a wave, it's a wave. On the other hand, in Chhattisgarh, most of us who went there, including pollsters, predicted Pradeep that the Congress would be ahead of BJP. BJP has gone well ahead. What has gone wrong? What changed in Chhattisgarh? Let's start with Chhattisgarh because that is the real election weather turned around compared to pollsters. Yeah, that's right. Chhattisgarh also, Rajdeep, we projected Adivasis are voting more in favour of uh, BJP, particularly in case of Bastar region, which is the case. Now, coming to the why BJP got extra vote, 3% extra vote than the our projection and as well as the uh, more than Congress, 3% more than, is basically the OBC's vote. Sahu, we projected very well that BJP is getting lion's share this time, which was not the case uh, the last time. But the Dalit votes, Dalit votes, particularly Satnamis, which is in the large numbers in Chhattisgarh. Which used to be once with Ajit BJP, uh, sorry, BSP and GGP formed the alliance and good amount of these Dalit and Adivasi votes shifted towards the uh, this alliance which dented the prospect of Congress. This is the case and the story of Chhattisgarh. Very interesting because you, I remember you mentioning, and let's give Pradeep credit, that he mentioned others could be a critical factor in, uh, in Chhattisgarh, and you're saying they've taken over the Dalit vote. You also spotted a trend which may have got a little more magnified in the results, which is women. Yeah. I sense that women have voted for the BJP in much larger numbers than men. Large. So clearly the welfare schemes that the BJP promised in Chhattisgarh have worked among women, just as they did in Madhya Pradesh through Ladli Bena. Absolutely. And that particularly Mahatari Yojana, which they... Mahatari Vandana Yojana. Mahatari Vandana Yojana, virtue of that, 12,000 rupees they promise in a year to female of the Chhattisgarh, which is the same case of Ladli Bena type. And these are the more or less same state, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And people believe in that, particularly female, and voted large number in favour of So uh, you're BJP. saying uh, the uh, others, in a way, took away a bit of the Congress vote, especially Dalit vote. Dalit and the Adivasi. BJP's got the Sahu vote back. They put 14 Sahu candidates yes. up there. And the woman vote has gone towards the BJP. What about Rajasthan? What you had said in Rajasthan, and you're right there, that you had said... It's possible that the BJP could, in one of your scenarios, get a majority. But the gap, the Congress has come nowhere close to the nervous 90s. They've fallen to 71. BJP has pulled out. Is it the Gujar vote 
in particular eastern Rajasthan when I look no, at actually, it? if you look at the map, no. So it's the Jaipur division, Jaipur. Uh, it's Bikaner, it's uh, Hanumangarh, it's uh, Nagore. If, if, yes. if that's the area where they've So, so, what, so what, what changed? Here also, the others damage the prospect of Congress here, I would say again, because BJP vote bank is largely the same as Brahman, Rajputs, OBCs, which is the same. But if you see the Jat votes particularly, and then the Adivasi and Dalit votes, it seems here as well, BSP has played a very big role in Rajasthan. If you see the vote share of BSP, Overall, is 2 to 3 percent is a significant vote for BSP in the state like Rajasthan. In fact, a, others, that's others are about. That's the 3 percent difference between BJP and Congress. That's the 3 percent right difference, difference, between, difference between, between BJP well, and Congress. Well, actually, others right are now. about 18 percent at the moment. So, yeah. others are very significant in Rajasthan. We projected now, a, a local journalist in Rajasthan has told me that the all, you know, the biggest problem that Gelot had was repeating candidates. You only gave, cut 17 tickets. And the sense one gets is that has also cost the Congress local anti-incumbency because region after region, Preeti, there's mm -hmm. not a single region at the moment where I see the Congress ahead of the BJP in Rajasthan. No, Shekhavati. That's the only region. Shekhavati, then. they are ahead. But if you look at it, Rajdeep, it's a, it's a complete split. Just look at it. Look at where the Jaipur That's division the is region. concerned. No, even Ahirwal, Jaipur. Look at Jaipur. Jaipur region at the moment, uh, we've got the BJP leading in 25, uh, uh, Congress in 18. Okay. The Congress had done very well there last time. Yes. In Ahirwal, which is a Gujar dominated area. What BJP we were 11, INC 8, last but time. But Rajdeep, what we were suspecting is that East Rajasthan will uh, give the benefit to uh, BJP. It's happened, but not entirely. But it's come more from areas which are. Look at it. Look at the map. The saffron surge is completely where. The biggest saffron surge. The Bikaner Jodhpur area is. No, the biggest saffron surge in Rajasthan is in Mewar. 25, happens, 25 yeah. to the BJP, 6 to the Congress. So some element of polarization on the ground. Remember the Udaipur, Udaipur incident was magnified. The Prime Minister spent a lot of time claiming that if the Congress came back, there Kanaiya would be, Lal be the, the, you know, the, the Kanaiya Lal story was played out. So across Rajasthan. But this has always been that, the stronghold. This yeah, has been a are, BJP stronghold. Are we saying therefore, Pradeep, picking up others is the challenge for a pollster? You see, and, and who those others are picking up votes from becomes a bigger challenge. Bigger challenge. You can get the vote share of the top two parties right, but the others, where, where do they get Even their votes Even in from? case of Rajasthan, that two others numbers also we got a spot on. We said between 14 to 18, and 18s are likely to win as per our uh, whatever current uh, trends now. What is more important here, whose vote share they are getting more in numbers. And you whether think they, they got denting, the Congress's vote share? Yes. Whether they are denting to the Congress or to the BJP, that is the precisely reason why last time also our poll was not spot on, though directionally absolutely right. That, what does this verdict mean for the Lok Sabha elections? I don't think it has any bearing on the outcome of Lok Sabha 2024. But yes, it does... Moral booster for the party, for the Karkartas, for the uh, 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 for the trained kind of a setting in media. You will talk lots on this direction, the way you we have been talking in last one year in for Madhya Pradesh. We were always saying too much, too much, too much anti-incumbency, anti-incumbency, fatigue factor, this no, and that. No, but this is not fatigue or anti-incumbency. Uh, other way around, we were talking about the Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is, last time it was a landslide, 68 versus 15, for Congress to BJP. And that is the precisely reason why whatever, whatever is available before us, we, but, we have no choice but no, to no, analyze but, that. No, no, but Pradeep, look at 2018 and what happened in 2019. That's what I'm saying. There was about a 10 to 15 percent, 10 to 15 percent incremental vote in these states for the BJP between 2018 and November, well December. Happen. Which is what I'm saying. Now you've gone on a higher base. You've already, you know, for an example in Chhattisgarh, Rahul, the BJP fell to about 33, 34 percent of the vote. Now they've come back over 40. So, Imagine if they get a 15 percent bump. So over let me that. ask Pradeep that question because a lot of the BJP top leaders who are messaging and people around them, their big thrust, and we'll hear a lot of this from the BJP in the hours and days to come, is Apki Bar Char So Par. Given the electoral <laughs> arithmetic, is that possible? Is that a campaign cry that's or is what, that possible? That's what, again, I am telling you, whatever people and everybody will see in front of them, they are going to do analysis based on that. That is the reason why we have been saying Chhattisgarh to Congress ka secured hai. And Madhya Pradesh to BJP. How did the Congress hai. botch up Chhattisgarh? The problem here is that... How did the Congress botch up Chhattisgarh, you think? In both the... See, the biggest picture over here is the... 
Congress is not able to repeat their government. Governments are always repeat purely based on the performance of incumbent government, which is not the case. On the other side, BJP has shown that the kind of credibility and the kind of people believe in the leadership of Narendra Modi and whatever he says, whatever they promise. One top BJP to leader who called this morning while our coverage was going on said, Pradeep tells us that uh, Hindutva doesn't work. This wording says Hindutva works. That is the problem with entire country. Whenever BJP is winning, meaning it is only winning because of Hindutva. This is never the case. Again and again, I keeps on reminding if that was the case, that Atal Bihari types of leader, too tall a leader, and Ram Mandir movement at that time, they never ever secured more than 180 seats. No, but India has changed since then. In, nothing has changed. In fact, in fact, the kind of a religious alignment with the emergence of youth demographically, no youth likes to go in mandir. Tell me how many youths like to go in mandir and uh, go in a religious way. Can I just give no, you... No, I don't agree. No, 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 India no, is more conscious of religious identity than they were previously. People are being made more conscious of religious identity no, it, and it, they it, are more conscious no, 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 of religious identity. No, 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 it's now, the I'll media give you, we speak. I'll give you a distinction. 1993, these same states, because, you know, let's call apples to apples. 1993, then of course Madhya Pradesh was one state, went to the polls in the backdrop of the Babri Masjid demolition at the peak of the Ram wave. What happened? BJP yeah, had... BJP didn't independent. have this just kind of organization no, machinery. I'll, no, so, I'll, I'll just come to it. BJP had to get independent support to win Rajasthan, Bairo Singh Shekhawat. Madhya Pradesh, the Congress won. And uh, uh, the third... Uh, Delhi, Delhi. And, and Himachal Pradesh. Delhi. Himachal Pradesh, Delhi. the Congress won. And Delhi also the... Uh, uh, Delhi, BJP won. Oh, yeah, but these were the three. These were the three big ones that went. What has changed from 1993 to 2023? 30 years have gone. I think three things have changed. A, the BJP, you are absolutely right, organizationally has become much stronger. You know, the ability to do last mile connectivity is much stronger, more robust under the Amit Shah regime. Number two, you've got in Narendra Modi a leader who embodies, I would say, what I call Moditva, which is a mix of this kind of Vikas Purush that I'm going to bring you, you know, the promised land a better tomorrow. At the same time, the core Hindutva vote is still with you. So you've got a core plus vote. He's added a Hindutva plus vote. Number three, I think, we've seen, I believe, a weakening of the Congress over the last 30 years. You see, when you look at a leader, you also have to look at it in the context of the opposition. I just look at the Congress in Madhya Pradesh. I covered that election, 93. On the state, Digvijay Singh, Madhav Rao Sindhya, Arjun Singh, VC Shukla, they had a phalanx of leaders. Look at the Congress today. The only leader from that time is, uh, uh, the two leaders from that time are still around. Everyone else is gone. You don't have a younger leadership. You look at your opposition, your opposition weakens, you strengthen, it becomes a bit of a no contest. Pradeep Gupta, would the BJP be able to change chief ministers or are they likely now in your view? Uh, what is the data telling you? Forget what actually happens. What's the data telling you in terms of the message for who should be chief minister next? Data is clearly... I mean, people have seen whatever last... Uh, I mean, the current chief minister and in the past, who was whoever was the chief minister or if any party declare the chief minister candidate. So again, whatever facts before them, they based on that, they say whatever they have to say. Hey, jalebi Main sawal yes, My sir. question is, on the basis of this verdict, what's your interpretation on who's best suited to be chief minister in Rajasthan? Rajasthan, new face, has to be from OBC and backward class for sure, and youth. I mean, this Why is something... Why new face? Why not Vasundra? If you compare at, for, for, for just for the moment, for just take the example first, the Madhya Pradesh. No, I'm asking you about Rajasthan. Okay, chalo, Rajasthan. Now, if Gehlot, Gehlot Saab was there, the incumbent chief minister, and had BJP projected Vasundra Rajaji, any common man on the earth will definitely say, Gehlot, wait much, much more than that. And that is the probably precisely reason why BJP has never projected and Modi was the face, then things were turned down. Modi versus Gelo. So, so this is the case. Now coming to the Madhya Pradesh, if you see the Kamal Nath on the other side, one side and the Sivra Singh on the other side, again the difference, any common man, 100 out of 99 will say, yaar, ye to jada hai. 
So this is the case. You know, you know, very interesting. And in Chhattisgarh, and Chhattisgarh again because of. Uh, no, no, you're giving your perspective. Cast. No, no, I'm asking you, what is the data telling you? Who's best placed to be Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh now? Chhattisgarh now, based on our data, Raman Singh had a big difference when popularity of Chief Minister when we asked then the Bhupesh Bhagel because of obvious reason. That is the reason why that data has no meaning. You have to see what is the probability on the ground. But provided you project someone, then they select one. Can I, can I just give you, can I just tell you what Pradeep had told me and it has stayed in my mind. I used it in my book as well. After the 2018 election, when the Congress won all three states, we were in the evening discussing and he made this point. He said, if the Congress has any sense, they will make Sachin Pilot or Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, if not both the chief ministers, Precisely. to project an impression of a generational change. Yeah, it is perception. Precisely. It's not as if Gelot is not more popular than Precisely. MLA. When I asked congressmen, they, and they were right in their own way, they said more MLAs are with Gelot. Fair enough. Similarly, more MLAs were with Kamal Nath. But when you win an election, future. you're not winning it only for your MLAs. You're also looking at your future. See, who are you as a leader? You are a public representative. So you have to see what is the ratio of representation individual personality belonging to. If your generation is 65% in the age of uh, up to 30, 35, 35, 35. years of age, then you have to look this demography and take your decisions. But, but Pradeep, in Rajasthan, would you fancy the chances of someone like a Baba Balaknath? He's OBC, he's young, <laughs> and he's also a polarizing figure going ah, into 2020. This is a very good question you ask. And again, I want to give the answer of Rahul uh, that uh, Hindutva work or doesn't work. See, again, the ratios. If your population 70 to 80 percent lives less than $100 a month, do you think it impact their religious any you know alignment or whatever you call following? Whereas definitely it affect the five to ten percent of people who are the affluent class belonging to the upper caste. Definitely it does matter. So you have to decide what you want. That you want whether the lion's share or the real representation, or you are looking for those five to eight percent. Ha, media you will get lots of minds here, not a single percent doubt. But media and, and and one of the things that has also changed when I compare '93 to 2023, and Ashok, you can you were also around in 1993, is the OBCization. You see, in 1993, we almost took it for granted that upper caste ka leader will Digvijay became, for example, chief minister of Madhya Pradesh. Bhero Singh Shekhawat became in Rajasthan. Now it appears political parties are very conscious of caste. No. Caste census may not work, but I want my caste, caste leader. You know, in 1993, just after uh, the Babri Masjid uh, Jam Ramabhumi incident, December 6th, the BJP still loses in Uttar Pradesh to uh, OBC Dalit yes. alliance. I think that was a turning point. Representation. Was a, it was the a share point. of representation. Yes. It you was a turning point in Indian politics. Because after that, the BJP also had to change. Why Navin Patnaik, Patnaik is winning consecutive five elections? You are ignoring all this uh, performance. And here you talk about the performance, performance. When actual somebody come victorious, you ignore the performance when it is the you case know, of the BJP. I, I, I'd like to say one thing. I agree with... Pradeep on one issue that elections are multifactorial. Yeah. Identity is there, of course it is there. I'll but it's not it. the only factor. Okay, one BJP, ten... one BJP leader sent me a message. You are missing on the fact that Mr. Modi will look for a woman face either in Chhattisgarh or Rajasthan. He has to, with 33%. And, and two names, of course, during the round. Saroj Pandey in Chhattisgarh, Vasundra, of course, herself, and the, Diya Kumari in Rajasthan. He says, Mr. Modi is very clear. He needs to see one major woman face in the... I'm just telling you... Diyakumari, Diyakumari. I'm just telling you... That, 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 they are 100 percent right, but both of them belonging to upper caste... That's right, I agree with case. you, I agree with you, I'm just telling you... You will get backward caste, you need back, you will get backward caste chief ministers, no. backward caste Dalit chief ministers. Vasundra Rajay is doing a press conference at this moment. Let's listen to what she's saying. I think... I think you guys are taking the most fun, so you guys are taking it. Ah, 55. Huh? You can't go to 70. Huh? Where are you going to get those votes from? I'm just thinking that they all have to be standing out there. <laughs> ah, 55. 34 last time. Last time, you know the circumstances. So, yeah. ah. circumstances all around Rajasthan. Tha. Otherwise, we don't want Rajasthan. Sir Kar Gai, on that. Ah, ah. That has changed. It wicked. So, Expectation is... That during my Nalawad visa, I was just trying to find out a single poster of Congress candidate. Okay. 
आपने सबसे पहले राजस्थान की ये जो शानदार जीत है ये माननीय हमारे प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी जिनका मंत्र था ये सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास और सबका प्रयास ये उसकी जीत है उनकी दी हुई गारंटी की जीत है ये जीत हमारे माननीय केंद्रीय मंत्री होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह जी की रणनीति की जीत है और ये जीत हमारे माननीय अध्यक्ष श्री नड्डा जी के कुशल नेतृत्व की जीत है और फिर सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट ये भी है ये जीत हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं की जिनके अथक प्रयास परिश्रम की जीत है उन्होंने दिन और रात हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के जो सपने को साकार करने की पूरी कोशिश करते हुए उस दिशा में आ, मेहनत करके ये, ये परिणाम दिलाने का काम किया है और सबसे बड़ी बात तो यह है कि ये जीत हमारे जनता जनार्दन की है जिसने कांग्रेस के कुराज को नकारते हुए और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के सुराज को अपनाने का काम किया है और ये जीत 2024 में मोदी जी को फिर से देशवासियों की सेवा का अवसर देने की जीत ये जीत है सो दैट्स ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू से तरफ से कुछ नहीं है फिर आप बंद कर दो तो फिर अपन एक सवाल नहीं सवाल नहीं सर नो सवाल अब इसके बाद आप स्विच कर दो ऑफ एंड देन अपन बात करें तो ये नहीं करेंगे चाय पिलाओ यू नो राइट थ्रू दिस राइट थ्रू दिस कैंपेन राहुल Uh, Vasundha Rajay has been refusing to take questions, and she's done the same today because the obvious question that was going to be asked to her: Are you See, in the yeah. chief minister? She doesn't want to get into it at the moment, and she's but praised Narendra Modi control. four times but in five minutes. But it's beyond her control now. It's frankly beyond her control. See, but no, but the difference with Yogi Adityanath was the top BJP brass said a lot of MLAs wanted Yogi Adityanath. He was the number one most popular candidate when it came to who people wanted sure. should come and campaign for them. Can't really Again, say that. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't command that so, same pan-Rajasthan appeal at the moment, no, but you Upendra never know. Patel did. But you never know. I want Upendra to spend Patel a moment. Gujarat, Gujarat, Gujarat is sui generis. I can appoint even Rajdeep Sardesai can become chief minister. Looking at Modi vote Desai. share numbers, okay? So we'll start with Rajasthan. I want to show you the vote share numbers it gives because we've seen the seats enough. The vote share breakup gives you a good sense of how each of these states is actually looking. So I'll take Madhya Pradesh for example and give you the vote share numbers. From Madhya Pradesh, uh, what here on your screen now? What you see initially are the previous year's numbers. Now you are seeing the current year's numbers. Forty-nine versus forty-one. That's a eight percent lead for the BJP in Madhya Pradesh in terms of vote share, and that really is hats off to Pradeep for picking it up because your estimates were higher than the BJP's own estimates. Some of yeah. the top BJP leaders I spoke to said, "Ye thoda zada bola, acha hi hoga itte aa jayenge," but they weren't expecting this True. either. So that is as far as. You know, I can do a few other things which makes the vote share numbers more interesting. I'll show you a heat map of uh, Madhya Pradesh. What this does is it shows you in how many seats was the Congress really in the fray. There are only 117 seats where the Congress's vote share is above 40 percent, mm. which means in the other seats the Congress didn't even get 40 percent of the vote share. Yeah. The BJP had 40 percent plus vote share. In 187 seats, this is a very important data point that we're putting out, showing the dominance of the BJP versus how weak the Congress's performance. Once you break it down, so this is called a vote share heat map. What you are seeing is how many seats did the BJP do well in, which is above 40 percent. How many did the Congress put up a good fight in? They didn't do that in too many seats. If we compare this with the historical vote share for Madhya Pradesh, the BJP has actually done. Better in this election than it ever has. In 2003, yeah. the BJP's vote share was 43 percent. 2008, it was 37, 38 percent. 2013, it was 45 percent. Came down to 41 percent. Now it's 49. 
So in 8% increase, the Congress roughly where it was, it was at 41% earlier, it's at 41. It's the BJP that's pulled votes away from the others, brought it to itself. That's a big, big number there. Uh, I can do a dispersion. I'll show you what the dispersion looks like in Madhya Pradesh. What this dispersion does is it shows you how strongly the BJP has done. It's done poorly in very few seats, doing strongly in a lot of seats. And we can do the same now for Rajasthan. Let me do the same for Rajasthan and show you the Rajasthan numbers uh, for vote share. So in Rajasthan, if we look at the vote share, 39-39 it was roughly last time round. This time the BJP at 42, the Congress at 39. So Rajasthan was tighter, more contested. 19% to the others, a lot of vote to the others, a 3% gap uh, in favor of the BJP in Rajasthan, 3% up from the last time. Again, the Congress roughly where it was. Rao. So they're pulling votes from the, uh, they're pulling votes from the others. The Congress holding on both in Madhya Pradesh and in Rajasthan to where it was last time. Yeah, so this is where my poll is. See, 41% we said for the BJP, they are getting 42%. And also we said 42 for the Congress. They are 39, yeah. meaning minus 2 added to 1 to the Three BJP difference. and 2 to the others. I'll show you vote share heat map for Rajasthan. What the vote share heat map does is it tells you how strong a performance the Congress put up. So there are 122 seats where the BJP had 40% plus vote share. 122 seats, BJP's vote share is more than 40%. The Congress's vote share is more than 40% only in 98 seats. So in half the state, the Congress couldn't even get 40%, so it ne never really was in the reckoning on these seats. If I do a historical breakup of the vote share details, uh, for, and I say, as, I, as I've been saying since the morning, this kind of micro detailing is not available anywhere else. I mean, there's no other network that can come anywhere close to matching the level of detailing that we can do. So where does this uh, look in terms of historical vote share? It's kind of where it was. The BJP's biggest victory was in 2013 when it had 45% of the vote share. It now has 42%. Last year it was 39%. In 2008, it was 34%. So this is really it's not the BJP's biggest victory in terms of vote share in Rajasthan. It's actually not so, you know, when you look at those numbers, it just shows you the role that others play in Rajasthan. Correct. You know, in no <laughs> other Hindi heartland state will you feed yeah. such big numbers for others. 21% went down to 19 The Congress, the gap is only 3%. You see, it's not as if the gap, Rahul, when, even when you do the heat map, when you say 98 seats over 40%, that's quite a lot. That's almost half the seats of Rajasthan. Congress was over 40%. Just think about it. Yes. The Congress needed one extra incremental vote. You could have either done that with alliances or you could have presented a more inclusive leadership. These are the small micro details in a I'll state you, right, election I'll management. Give you, I'll give you a small this example. We were, to, we were yes. talking about the Bundelkhand region in Madhya Pradesh. There are four seats now that I have just gone through. One of them that I have in front of me, Nevari where the Samajwadi party has polled 13,000 seats, which is double the winning... Votes. Yeah, 13,000 uh, votes, which is double the winning margin of the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Congress. Yeah, and but you know, the only seats. difference I'll make is that in Madhya Pradesh, it's a washout. When but 162 yes, plays 66, true, true, it would have made every no seat, difference. Every, every seat but counts. in Rajasthan, in Rajasthan, had you concentrated on 20 to 25 seats in making yeah. alliances on the yeah. ground, yeah. in ensuring that you had dropped 20 more sitting MLAs, Gelot would have had half a chance. You see, this is where, as I said, management. when you put ego before your party, I will not have anything to do and with Sachin Pilot till the last moment. It doesn't work. When okay. you say that, I, you know, my welfare schemes are good enough, it doesn't work. I want to come now to Chhattisgarh. In Chhattisgarh, the BJP has 46% of the vote share. The BJP's vote share in this election is 13% up from the last time. That's a 13%. big swing. It looks like... Not as big a victory as in Madhya Pradesh, but given how low they had fallen, a pulling 13% extra voters to get them to vote for you is a very big electoral achievement. And the Congress uh, Rahul, is at 42, 42, that's 1% down. Down and see the others. That is where the BJP and management Everywhere is. they're pulling from the, the others. The DGP and BSP alliance. In Bihar, it was OAC's factor which made BJP win. Right, with only 10 seats extra than the... I want to do a vote share that. heat map for Chhattisgarh so that you understand what this means. How hard did the Congress fight? That's what this data shows. Here it is, on your screen for the first time. 40% and plus BJP had 67 out of 90. So, which means on 67 seats in Chhattisgarh, the BJP fought a very tight, very good election. The Congress fought a good election only on 54 seats. So, a 
forget what the narratives on television and, and amongst the pundits were, the Congress actually fought a good fight at the month. The data might keep changing as you go along because more rounds are getting counted. But from what we know, and we're halfway done, the Congress fought well only on 54 seats. If I look at the historical breakup of Chhattisgarh, uh, here it is on your screen right now. The BJP has actually done better this time than it ever has. BJP in 2003 was 39%, 2008 was 40%, 41% in 2013. 33% last time, this time it's at 46. This is BJP's best performance in Chhattisgarh ever since the state was formed in the year 2000. The Congress has done worse. It got 36% in 2003, 38% in 2008, 40% in 2013, 1% down from the last time. So the Congress is kind of where it was, Ashok. Everywhere we are going, the Congress is kind of where it was. What the is BJP happening? is pulling what votes is, from what everywhere. What is happening in all three states is that all three states have traditionally been bipolar. They're actually becoming even more bipolar. Yeah. They, you know, the space for the third no, But the bipolarity is, is, is benefiting the BJP, in not the election, Congress. Yes, absolutely. Yes. See, I in, want to... in, in Chhattisgarh, the BJP has had a huge swing in its favor. You know, it, it's come back from 33 back Largely to 45, 46. At the cost of others. At the cost of... You see, others, please yeah. appreciate. Last time when you've seen, the others were well organized. JCC, this, JCC and JC, BSP alliance. JCC and BSP were in a solid alliance solid last alliance. time. And they got 20% of the vote. That comes to 12. The BJP picks a lion's share of it. You see, politics is about last... What has changed in Indian politics is simply that. New age election management is about managing Man others, others, managing constituency wise, managing regions, projecting some local leaders. When uh, the BJP sent ministers and MPs into uh, Madhya Pradesh, what was our, as you called it, what pop panditri? BJP is nervous. No. BJP is desperate. <laughs> BJP cannot, does they, not know whether they can put all their faith in Shivraj Singh. Let's send them there. They, what they did is they used these leaders to create a mahal no, in the local areas. No, 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 no. They fielded all these, except Pahela Singh Patel, that to his brother constituency, all are very difficult seats for BJP to win. Yes, but what you did so also... there you need a somebody no, but to... Also, you, no, but what you also... skin do, in the game. You also create... Yeah, a, that, a, yeah, you that, also make sure it. that all these leaders have a skin in the game. Okay. And they're going to also fight. So I think so I, strategy mattered. Strategy hmm. at election time is where the BJP bested and demolished the Congress in the Hindi art. So I want to leave you with one data set before we end. I said that the kind of analytics we'll be able to run are unprecedented. And I'm glad that so many people now, after watching our coverage, feel the same. Here is the aggregate of all elections. 638 seats up for grabs today. The BJP has won or is leading in 339. The Congress only at 232. So game, set, match today to the BJP opening the doors for what could be a historic re-election, not since Pandit Nehru has <laughs> an Indian Prime Minister won three terms in office. From what we've seen, it seems India, Mange, more Modi, more BJP. That's what this verdict is telling us. We're slipping into a break. Our coverage continues. There's so much more we have from the ground, from the election intelligence dashboard. We'll keep pulling this out for you. We'll be talking to the big players on the ground. Uh, many of them messaging, calling to say they want to come live on our coverage. So we'll do that. We'll invite them, get them live. When we return on the other side of a quick break, stay with us. Watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP Group company. Uh, the promise that you have made, if Congress is voted to power, you will remove, shave your beard or leave your tail. What do you want? What do you want to say right this moment, sir? Yeah, after we form the government, probably I'll take off my beard. So what do you have to say about the right, the current politics that is going on in Taj Krishna? We have seen that, uh, you know, Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister is in uh, uh, Park Hayat and other uh, MLAs also are there. So what do you have to say about that? No, any, I see. Any coaching that can be done, any, any MLAs that can, uh, you know, shift sides is what you feel? See, in, in contemporary politics, when we're dealing with people like the BJP and the BRS, we will take our precautions. And uh, while I don't see, I mean, I, I'm not aware of... Uh, uh, whatever is going on about Pochi and all. But I'm confident that our uh, Congress elected MLAs will stay with us, I mean, no, no problem. And if, if our uh, 
party organization is taking any steps to prevent others from having any mischievous ideas in their mind, I think that's, that's the right thing to do. तेलंगाना में हमने पहले से कहा कि कांग्रेस पार्टी 70 प्लस या पे सीता जीतेगी तो वो नतीजे सामने आ रहे हैं तो पहले से ही हम सोनिया जी गांधी ने जो तेलंगाना की निर्मित यहाँ पर की थी तो तेलंगाना आने के बाद यहाँ पर जिस तरीके से केसीआर ने गवर्नमेंट चलाई है जे अपने फॉर्म हाउस से गवर्नमेंट चलाई जो भी उन्होंने वायदे किए थे कोई वायदा वो पूरा नहीं कर पाए या बेरोजगारी बड़ी है बड़े पैमाने पे बेरोजगारों को रोजगार नहीं मिला है यहाँ पर ना कोई दस साल के अंदर ऐसी कोई बात हुई है कि जो तेलंगाना के डेवलपमेंट के लिए उन्होंने कुछ किया हो और इस तरीके से गवर्नमेंट चलाना कोई डेवलपमेंट्स नहीं है सिर्फ एडवर्टाइज के माध्यम से सब तक बार आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाइक Co presented by Nexa Create Inspire Co powered by Parul University Vadodara Gujarat Co powered by Arcelor Mittal Nepal Steel India Banaunga main banega bhai I want to go across now to Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur who'd been campaigning in all these poll bound states quite extensively the Bharatiya Janata Party Anurag ji winning 3 out of 3 Hindi heartland states do you think this makes the path to 2024 that much more clear gives the party and its cadre the confidence of hitting the next election on the back of these big victories let me first thank the voters for their trust in narendra modi in the policies of modi government and the double engine government which has successfully worked in states like madhya pradesh uttar pradesh to assam gujarat where they have seen the impact what is the advantage of a double engine government secondly this is a historic win look at the madhya pradesh results i mean your channel is one of the channel who have shown this kind of landslide victory in your exit polls and uh, let me uh, again say here people have shown their faith and trust in narendra modi ji and modi ji was the face during the election campaign he is not only india's most popular leader but the world's most popular leader for the last 4 years the trust shown by the people we can all i, I can say here with full guarantee that will ensure whatever has been promised during the election time there is only one guarantee which works in india today that is modi ki guarantee in chatisgarh anurag ji the bjp uh, was trailing for the longest time even this morning when i spoke to one of your senior most leaders he thought it will be tight that you should end up slightly in front but he himself said it would be tight you actually ended up 54 versus 33 it's a very big victory for the bharatiya janata party much bigger even in chatisgarh than your own estimates internally including this morning rahul ji if you check with your sources in the state of chatisgarh or in the central media i've been saying it during the chatisgarh campaign also that bjp will win hands down and the reason for that i'll give you that when i went to chatisgarh to launch the bhupe campaign the single line i said bhrashtachar karo bhupe karo it was known to everyone in the state that you can do corruption and can make payment to bhupesh baghel because state of chatisgarh have become a atm for the congress party they've been funding the congress party from the state of chatisgarh one after another scam has tarnished the image of the chief minister and the state of chatisgarh and congress party now look at what they promised 5 years back they could not deliver on that aur main kehta hu isko hindi mein zarur kahunga maa unhone ganga jal ki kasam kha ke kaha tha ki that they'll make chatisgarh liquor free to maa ganga ka shrab congress saaf they did mahadev app 
करप्शन घोटाला महादेव का श्राप कांग्रेस साफ सिमिलरली दे लाइट टू द पुअर पीपल गरीबों का श्राप कांग्रेस साफ गौठान घोटाला माँ गौ के साथ घोटाला माँ गौ माँ का श्राप कांग्रेस साफ सो वॉट एवर दे प्रोमिस दे कुड नॉट फुलफिल दैट ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ यू लुक एट मध्य प्रदेश द गारंटीज व डिलीवर्ड एंड इट इज द मोदी गारंटी विच इज फुलफिल्ड बाय द स्टेट चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड द एंटायर गवर्नमेंट and here whatever we have promised look at chatisgarh congress promised 15000 rupees to the women but they could not give 500 rupees per month which becomes 6000 rupees per per year they could not do that the people were making a comparison if you could not give 6000 rupees per annum how can you give 15000 rupees now so they believed in prime minister modi and his guarantees so i think that is the advantage bjp the leadership of prime minister modi the what does this verdict mean in your view for the 2024 elections given the fact that you've been able to fight off anti incumbency in madhya pradesh deliver this big victory snatch both chatisgarh and rajasthan from the congress increased your vote share in telangana but ended up uh, distant third what does the aggregate of all of this in your view mean for the lok sabha elections I personally feel every election is fought differently on different issues but one thing I would like to say here people are ensuring double engine government for the welfare of the state and in the interest of the country they will pick again prime minister modi why the only reason they see that whatever prime minister says he delivers that they believe that he is committed for the welfare of the poor people they see prime minister modi ensures good governance and development and the bjp's good government development model has been accepted by the people of madhya pradesh chatisgarh and rajasthan and this will ensure a landslide victory for bjp in 2024 in 2018 when bjp lost all these states despite that in 2019 we won majority of the seats in madhya pradesh chatisgarh and rajasthan okay What do you think about the Telangana verdict? That's the one sliver of hope for the Congress. Uh, currently leading and winning 64 seats, up 45. The BJP is at seven, up six. So it's a credible. I'll show the Telangana vote share to Anurag Thakur and to our viewers. Uh, the BJP has done much better than earlier, but not enough to be able to become second. Uh, here's the vote share for Telangana on your screen right now. The Bharatiya Janata Party. which had 7% vote share has doubled the vote share to 15 but you are still quite far from being able to convert that into seats in telangana you rightly mentioned rahul but the issue is bjp was working hard for the last 5 years against the corrupt ksr government it was bjp who created the environment in the state of telangana which is anti brs but if you look at the uh, by elections out of 5 bjp won two by elections and during the greater hyderabad municipal corporation polls we did extremely well here also our vote share has gone more than dub- double which clearly shows people want bjp but yes we could not convert that into those kind of seats the advantage went to congress but there is always a next time and we going to do well next time which is the upcoming lok sabha election in the state of telangana there were lots of uh, laddus at the congress office this morning i wonder what they're going to do with those laddus but how is the bjp going to be celebrating this big victory in the hindi heartland anurag bhai i think they should also enjoy the laddu because this is pro poor and pro people government which has been elected so they also going to get benefit out of this whatever we promise that will also be delivered to the congress karyakartas because they are part and they are part of that state and if you look at this 4 crore houses we never looked at the caste religion they have been given to those you know beneficiaries who actually deserves that 
so it will will ensure that that happens they can enjoy the sweets they can have laddu on the bjp's victory because this is actually going to benefit them because prime prime minister modi believes in delivering what he has promised and finally is this an opportunity you think to institutionalize a generational shift in a state like uh, rajasthan look beyond someone like a vasundhara raje pick one of your new faces in chatisgarh look beyond dr raman singh pick one of your new faces how are you seeing the issue of who becomes the next chief minister in these states i think if you ask most of the bjp panelist or the bjp leaders on these channels everyone will say there is a system in place where the elected representatives will elect the leader and the party high command will also decide on that right. so let us wait for that me and you can't decide on the tv debate okay we we'll leave it over there for the time being thank you very much for joining us there's a new parliament session that's starting tomorrow the winter session is also when we have that journalist versus mp's match you promised to have a cricket match journalist versus mp's now that you won all of this hopefully we can have a match and maybe <laughs> the journalist will win maybe there the journalist can beat the mp's thank you rahul ji thank you rahul ji surely we will play a cricket match for tb mukt bharat with the theme of making india tb free and whosoever win tb harna chahiye tubo crosses harna chahiye chahe patrakar jeete ya chahe sansad jeete whether journalist or whether the mp's win that doesn't make no, much difference I, we can i just play, let our viewers into cause. a secret let's play uh, anurag thakur is being very magnanimous over here he saying tb should win but when he actually gets down into a cricket match and actually is playing he takes his cricket as seriously as he takes his politics abhi ye sab bol rahe ho match start hua to aap full serious ho jate ho when we were shooting jab we met in himachal during the elections we said okay we'll play a few balls just to kind of shoot that he missed the first few then got excited when the bat started connecting with the ball and said ab to aur khelna padega itcha jaldi chhod nahi sakte so he takes his cricket as seriously as he takes his politics <laughs> you know it is very close to my heart cricket and the overall growth of sport so i think let us play rahul ji a match which is which ensures that we meet and we you know play for a good cause and let okay, us you work soon. you worked hard over the last several weeks on this election we worked in bringing the election coverage together so we'll see you on the cricket field anurag thakur union information broadcasting minister for joining us thank you very much thank you Okay I want to go across to some of our colleagues who are out on the field at this moment we've got Pooja Shali joining us we've got Nabila with us and we've got Akshita with us as well and I want to leave you with this one data set you know which just shows you where the BRS has even won in Telangana how slender those victories have been Akshita 12 wins and leads for the BRS are with a margin of less than 5% Seven are with a margin of five to ten percent. So nineteen of those victories are with a very small, less than ten percent margin, which just shows how uh, there was a lot of anti-incumbency, and even the forty seats that they're leading in was actually very, very difficult. Let's go across uh, first to Akshita, who will tell us what's happening in the lovely city of Hyderabad. Akshita. Thanks very much, uh, Rahul. And uh, it's this song essentially what you hear around me that's reverberating right now around the city of Hyderabad. That sings praises for Revant Anna, as he's very fondly known among Congress cadre. Uh, hello and welcome. You're joining us on the special broadcast here on India today. We're going to be getting you all the latest from the ground, where all the action is, where, as you can see, all of the celebration and. introspection for some parties is i'm joining you from the congress office in hyderabad where the celebrations have been on from as early as 10 a.m this morning we've got nabila jamal also standing by she's joining me live from jaipur nabila graph knew what's happening where you are well i i i needn't say much the bjp has managed a victory here in rajasthan they were uh, they were super sure of a victory and it appears they are uh, their wish is now come true with the entire bjp cadre who has come in hordes you see this kind of frenzy here right at the bjp office here in rajasthan uh, in jaipur as they chant jai shri ram now the the uh, of course it all comes down to who is going to be the chief 
Minister for the BJP in Rajasthan. A very interesting contest that we saw that, uh, that came down here in Rajasthan. In fact, we see similar, uh, similar euphoria even in Madhya Pradesh where Pooja Shali is. Pooja, the BJP has managed to come up with a clean hat trick. Over to you on what's happening in Madhya Pradesh. Well, incredible moments that each one of us uh, are witnessing. Akshita in Telangana, Nabila in Rajasthan, and I, Pooja Shali, here in Madhya Pradesh. And this special telecast comes to you from each of these locations because if there is Revan Tanna in Telangana, there is a mama and a bhaiya here in Madhya Pradesh, and he's about to make a record historic victory. And that for the fifth time possibly, he's going to now become the chief minister if there's not a change in name. And that's Shivraj Singh Chauhan. And the deciding factor for him, apart from of course there are the tribal belts of course there are people who support him but then there are the women young women old women who voted for him and mass because of the different welfare schemes that he had announced for them and of course an aggressive bhartiya janata party campaigning till the last minute so as we begin let's take a look first at the state of madhya pradesh getting it exactly accurately right was india today access my india predictions and that was about 140 to 162 and it's touching there it's touching to that maximum number and here at the chief minister's house i'll just briefly take you through where i'm standing because this is where shivrat singh Johan is going to be people refuse to leave they do not want to accept anyone flowers are ready and here's what it looks like let me take you through what the current situation is for the state of Madhya Pradesh what is central India looking like Shivrat Singh Chauhan set to return as the chief minister this is Saffron party leading already touching 160 it's Prime Minister Modi's guarantees and it is Shivrat Singh Chauhan's welfare schemes as well and a certain connect a mass connect that he's been able to pull off all these years bjp workers erupted in joy moments after the bhartiya janata party clearly widened a lead that the congress could not catch up to for the grand old party there is a lot to deliberate upon for the state of madhya pradesh the numbers are exactly what our polls had predicted listen in now to the exclusive reactions coming in from madhya pradesh and then we'll get you more updates देखिए अगर आप विनम्रता के साथ जनता की सेवा प्रमाणिकता के साथ करते हैं तो लोग आपसे प्यार करते हैं ये जनता का प्यार है लेकिन मैं कहता हूं कि श्रीमान नरेंद्र मोदी जी हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी वो जन जन के मन में है एमपी के मन में मोदी ये इस चुनाव ने सिद्ध किया है उनकी गारंटी पर लोग भरोसा रखते हैं और डबल इंजन की सरकार ने जो काम किया हमने अठारह साल में मध्य प्रदेश बदला है ये विकास के कामों पर मोहर है जन कल्याण की योजनाओं पर मोहर लगाई जब आज तक इंडिया टुडे एक्सेस माई इंडिया पोल ने कहा 140 से 162 सीट्स आएंगी काफियों ने कहा ये कैसे इतना बड़ा मार्जिन हो सकता है और आज वही सटीक हुआ नहीं मुझे भरोसा था एक तो आपका जो अनुमान है वो सटीक बैठता है बैठा है लेकिन जनता का जो प्यार सड़कों पर दिखता था लाडली बहने में जहां जाता था गले लगती थी सिर पे हाथ फेरती थी आंखों में आंसू आ जाते थे और कहती थी अपन जीतेंगे उससे लगता था कि परिणाम आएंगे आप मानते हैं कि औरतें लड़कियां इनका वोट सबसे मायने रखा ये कांग्रेस नहीं खींच पाई तो तो आप विश्लेषण करेंगे तो यही सामने आएगा कि बहनों ने जाति और धर्म से ऊपर उठ के भी हमें वोट किया आखिरी सवाल सर हमने जब सपोर्टर्स से और लोगों से पूछा कि मुख्यमंत्री यही रहेंगे या बदलेंगे तो सबने एक साथ आपका ही नाम लिया वो रेडी नहीं है नाम बदलने के लिए देखिए हम लोग कार्यकर्ता हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी एक मिशन है भारत के निर्माण का वैभवशाली गौरवशाली शक्तिशाली संपन्न और समृद्ध भारत के निर्माण का हम उस मिशन के अंग है पार्टी तय करती कौन कहाँ काम कर जिस तरह से प्रदेश में सरकार चली अठारह वर्षो में अच्छा काम हुआ जितना अच्छा काम मान्य शिवराज जी ने किया जितना अच्छा काम डबल इंजन की सरकार ने किया जितना अच्छा काम संगठन ने किया उसका आशीर्वाद आज प्रदेश की जनता ने दिया हमने कुछ बहनों से बात करी जो यहाँ मुख्यमंत्री निवास पर हैं भोपाल में मध्य प्रदेश में तो ये जो लाडली बहना लाडली बहना की बात हो रही है और मुख्यमंत्री ने खुद अभी मुझसे बात करते हुए कहा कि बहनाओ बहने जो बाहर निकली है उन्होंने आके वोट किया 
तो ये क्या है लाडली बहना स्कीम जो इतना डिफरेंट क्या उससे लगता है फर्क हुआ है बहुत फर्क हुआ है हाँ। हमारी भारतीय जनता पार्टी पार्टी में अभी मध्य प्रदेश में आप देख रहे हो पूर्ण बहुमत और अच्छे बहुमत से कमल की का फूल खिल रहा है और इसका ज्यादातर श्रेय सारी योजनाओं के साथ साथ योजनाएं तो मोदी जी में मोदी जी ने भी बहुत चलाई और भैया शिवराज भैया ने भी मध्य प्रदेश में बहुत चलाई है उसका फायदा तो आम जनता को बहुत मिला है लेकिन अभी वर्तमान अभी अभी तुरंत में ही जो लाडली बहना योजना चलाई उससे महिलाओं को बहुत फायदा मिला ऐसा क्या फर्क है लाडली कितना आप मुझे बता सकते हैं कितना पैसा मिलता है लाडली बहना में पैसा जितना उन्होंने बोला उसी हिसाब से मिल रहा है हम लोग को और जैसे ही बोला तुरंत आया है हाँ तुरंत आया है कट नहीं हो जाता नहीं तुरंत आता अगर आज तारीख दी तो आज ही आना है और बच्चों के लिए भी उन्होंने बहुत कुछ किया है छोटे से ज्यादा जो लड़कियां पढ़ रही हैं उनके लिए भी किया है और लेडीज जो बाहर निकल रही है उसके लिए भी भैया ने बहुत कुछ किया है बिल्कुल हैंड टू हैंड तारीख के तारीख पैसे आते हैं कुछ भी नहीं करते उसमें से हाँ जो बहन तो इससे क्या फर्क होता है इससे क्या फर्क कुछ लोग कहेंगे क्यों ऐसे पैसा दे दें किसी के अकाउंट में ये तो सरकार का लोगो का पैसा है तो इससे क्या फर्क हुआ हमें थोड़ा और भी लोगो ऐसी आप बताओ बहुत फर्क पड़ा मैम आपकी जिंदगी में क्या फर्क पड़ गया मतलब मेरे तो बच्चे नहीं लेकिन मुझे काफी मतलब सहयोग मिला है मेरे हस्बैंड को भी बहुत सहयोग मिला है और अर्थव्यवस्था थोड़ी गड़बड़ थी तो उससे भी ये काफी फायदा हुआ है मुझे और भी मतलब जो भी समस्या थी काफी ठीक हो गई और हर महीने जैसे उन्होंने बोला है शिवराज भाई साहब ने तो मतलब काफी सहयोग मिला घर के हालात बहुत चेंज हो जाते हाँ बहुत जरूर चेंज हो जाते हैं लेडीज को हजार रूपए मिल गए उनको आर्थिक सहायता मिल रही है और शिवराज जी का मैं धन्यवाद करती हूँ सीएम राज बनाया गोविंदपुरा में देखिए वो आत्म मतलब महिला सम्मान के लिए बहुत हमारे भाई भैया का आज गोविंदपुरा विधानसभा से जो बहने आपको यहाँ अच्छी नजर आ रही है तो उसका फायदा दिख रहा है कि ऐसे ही महिलाएं घर से निकल के बाहर इतनी एकजुटता में नहीं खड़ी है इसका श्रेय सीधे हमारे भाई शिवराज सिंह चौहान जी को जाता है इसके साथ में हमारी दीदी प्रकाशना गौर भी पूर्ण बहुमत से जीत रही है और अच्छे बहुमत से जीत भाजपा सपोर्टर हो आप एकदम बार बार इस इस आ, सरकार में जो बहुत बात चली लाडली बहना बहना या ये जो औरतों के लिए फर्क है इतनी औरतें क्यों निकल के आई भाजपा को और शिवराज सिंह चौहान को वोट करने के लिए आज तक जो भी सरकार आई है उनने कभी आ, महिलाओं के बारे में नहीं सोचा लेकिन भैया जी की वजह से आप जो सभी महिलाएं सशक्त हो गई है पहले महिलाएं घर से बाहर निकलने के लिए डरती थी लेकिन अब माहौल ऐसा बन गया है की हम अपनी लड़कियों को अकेला छोड़ सकते है ये सब बीजेपी की सरकार की वजह से मामा की वजह से सब बहुत सी बोले सो यू हर्ड इट वुमेन हैव बिकम द डिसाइडिंग फैक्टर फॉर दिस मध्य प्रदेश इलेक्शन बट वॉज इट जस्ट दैट can be such a thumping victory coming just because perhaps a gender so to say came on mass and decided to vote or was there something else too that contributed himendra sharma my colleague who's been tracking all these years madhya pradesh's changing face and one thing that remains constant at least is chief minister shivraj singh chauhan himendra let's take three key takeaways what happened with this thumping victory that is coming to bhartiya janata party what do you think are the reasons for that why could the congress not catch up why has the bhartiya janata party pulled this off well as it was mentioned in the exit poll that india today access my india did the uh, difference between the percentage of women voters who voted for the bjp and to the congress is a huge 10% so if there is a huge 10% gap between 50% of the population uh, because women comprise 50% of the population so there's half of this voter chunk that is uh, voting for the bjp so a 10% uh, shift actually leads to a wave and this wave as was explained um, earlier also was uh, something that led to this huge victory for the bharatiya janata party in madhya pradesh that is point number 1 plus uh, the uh, leadership of the bharatiya janata party they fought this election uh, very strategically uh, they realized initially that there was a anti incumbent possibly anti incumbency against the government so they didn't declare the chief minister's face and then they fielded uh, seven members of parliament and kalash vijayawargi who was the national general secretary and also these seven members of parliament included three sitting union ministers so these three uh, seven members of parliament came from seven different regions of uh, madhya pradesh and so they galvanized their workers over there and plus one more thing that very importantly has not been mentioned yet is that 
the RSS, uh, because uh, Madhya Bharat, this Madhya Pradesh is considered to be the lab of the Sangh Parivar, they uh, activated all their Anushangik, the, the, the organizations that they have, the, uh, because this yes. is an umbrella organization, they've got many organizations, so all those organizations which owe affiliation to the uh, RSS, they were activated and they ensured Correct. that the cadre that initially was mm -hmm. felt, it was suspected that they were not happy with the government, they ensured that the cadre came out in large numbers, canvassed for the party and uh, ensured that the, the voters reached the polling stations. On the other hand, the Congress party kept on saying that it is a people's election, the people are fighting. So the people are fighting, people could fight this much only and the Congress leadership in the last uh, week or so during elections, it was found like not campaigning that hard as BJP was campaigning. Pe BJP left no okay. stone unturned. Jyotra you know, what, what you're saying is absolutely correct. What Hemendra you are pointing out, it was while it was the faces, for example, from Prime Minister Modi to Home Minister Amit Shah's campaigning to, of course, Shivrat Singh Chauhan and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya. Let's not forget him. But it was the cadre on the ground that was activated from all corners to try and approach as many people as they can. And this is something that the Congress Party will have to deliberate on. Where is the anti-incumbency in Madhya Pradesh? That's all from Central India. Now going across to Akshita and Nabila, who continue to be with us. Akshita, over to you now. Well, this is the only state where I am right now, Pooja, that the Congress has reason to celebrate and the BJP has to introspect. And let me get your breaking news first before I get you uh, the excitement around me. Here's a look at the first reaction that's coming in right now from BRS. They've officially conceded defeat. Breaking news that's coming in. KTR has now tweeted, and I quote here, grateful to the people of Telangana for giving BRS party two consecutive terms of government not saddened over the result today, but surely disappointed as it was not an expected lines for us. But we will take this in our stride as a learning and we'll bounce back. Congratulations to Congress Party on winning the mandate. Wishing you good luck. This is the detail message that KTR has put out on social media. Nagarjun Dwarkanath is joining us with more on that first official communication from the BRS. They're conceding defeat, congratulating the Congress over their victory, Naga. Well, that's true. It's official that the BRS concedes defeat by congratulating the opposition Congress party. KTR, who is number two in the government today and who is also the working president of the BRS party, has tweeted two tweets, in fact, as we speak, saying that this time we missed the mark. He had put out a tweet with a gun yesterday saying 3.0 coming soon. Now he has tweeted quoting that saying, I have missed the mark this time around and also congratulating the Congress party. Congress was waiting for this, Akshita, that we will keep our flock together. We never know when BJ, or BRS and BJP will try to poach us, but now officially the BRS has gone in the back foot and has conceded defeat, congratulating the Congress party, thus giving some relief to the Congress that we can keep our flock together this evening and most likely there will be a CLP when all the MLAs will reach this evening to uh, Hyderabad. Most likely in a private hotel there will be a CLP uh, symbolic meeting, not likely to choose an uh, elected representative to be the CM, but just to make sure that all the MLAs are with the party as well. If they will be DK Shukumar, they will be KJ George's observers, sure. Manikrao Thakre is here. So all the negotiations and communication okay. will happen from this evening to Delhi where the next action moves. All right, Naga, request you to stay on with me because we're going to discuss and decode the result further. But right now, as in fact the BRS has conceded defeat, let me show you what the mood is around me here at the Congress or office. We'll go in. I'll show you what's happening inside because that's where you've got all of the celebration playing out. You've got people with crackers, uh, people with fireworks uh, and lighting off every few seconds. Uh, and there you have it. You know, this has been the scene for the last many hours where they've been lighting off crackers every few seconds. I have a feeling my audio is going to go off now because they're getting set to light that massive cracker as well. Uh, but there are people dancing, all of them fully in colors of green and orange in the tricolor and waving the Congress flag. What's also common here is all of them are Raven Threaty supporters. It doesn't stop with just being Congress supporters. Why did some of these people tell us?
మరి కాబోయే రేవంత్ రెడ్డి గారి సమక్షంలో మరి గాంధీ భవన్ కి కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ కార్యకర్తలందరికీ మరి పాదాభి ఉందని తెలియజేస్తున్నాను ప్రజాస్వామ్యం వచ్చిందని తెలుపుతున్నాను ప్రతి ఒక్క కార్యకర్తకి ప్రతి ఒక్క నాయకుడికి ప్రతి ఒక్క తల్లికి ప్రతి ఒక్క చెల్లికి అంటున్నా అమ్మ మీకు పాదాభి వందనాలు కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ కూడా పనిచేసిన నాయకులకి నా పద ధన్యవాదాలు విక్టరీ ఎట్లా వచ్చింది రాహుల్ గాంధీ రేవంత్ రెడ్డి ఎవరి ఎవరికి విక్టరీ వచ్చింది రాహుల్ గాంధీకి రేవంత్ రెడ్డి కా రేవంత్ రెడ్డి రాహుల్ గాంధీ ఇద్దరు ఇక్కడ తెలంగాణలో ప్రతి ఒక్క సభకి Yeah, it is a context between Prajala Telangana and Durala Telangana. Prajala, Prajala will win this in this uh, elections. Jai Congress! Okay, so you're hearing from a, a lot of people here. Obviously, at this point, if they can barely hear me, I can barely hear them. Uh, but most of them saying that this is a combination of the Raven Threaty and Rahul Gandhi factor that's led to this victory. Let me take you to the heart of the celebration. And here, there's no way I can uh, push through because it's a non-stop, uh, you know, essentially like a dance party that's been playing out here, right outside the Congress and Waters. It's been going on non-stop from today. And by the way, Raven Threaty is right here. He's behind me. watching very closely the results to figure out exactly what's happening he's going to be addressing a news briefing also shortly and in that news briefing of course he will go ahead and claim victory but they're waiting they're waiting for the numbers to stabilize so you've got revanth reddy along with of course sunil uh, konagulu who is the other one who's being credited for the victory here in telangana they're all inside this building watching the results very closely in about one hour or so we're expecting revanth reddy to hold a press conference but in the meanwhile with the results as they stand 60 plus 4 the congress and clearly anti incumbency inviting the prs let's take a look at all the reactions that are coming in with the trends uh, increasing towards the congress party in this election telangana elections congress party has uh, on is come on high alert where uh, they have uh, you know called all the candidates to taj krishna hotel here in hyderabad where dk shiv kumar who has been assigned the responsibility to keep the flock of uh, congress candidates together if they uh, you know gain uh, the uh, majority in the state of telangana among 119 seat 60 is the majority if they cross this number uh, then it is a responsibility of dk shiv kumar, shiv kumar uh, to keep them all together and dk shiv kumar is right now stationed with 11 ministers from karnataka in taj krishna hotel we are right now at taj krishna hotel inside the hotel you have three buses that have been stationed here at this particular point uh, where uh, the uh, if at all necessary uh, the uh, candidates will be taken uh, from uh, this taj krishna hotel to a destination what we are getting to know is they will be taken to uh, shifted to karnataka is what we are getting to know so right now these buses have been stationed in taj krishna let us talk and get to know what exactly the buses are for aapka naam bataiye जी मेरा नाम आदिल आपको यहाँ पर बसेस लेके हैं कितने बसेस यहाँ पर आए हैं हमारे तीन बस आए तो कितने लोग एक बस में यहाँ पर बैठेंगे किसने इस बस को बुलाया है 36 बस सीट्स है इसमें वो हमको कोई बुलाएगा मालूम नहीं हमारा मैनेजर इंस्ट्रक्शन से इधर आके कितने बजे आए हैं यहाँ हमें सब पाँच बजे आए तो कब कोई डेस्टिनेशन वगैरह कुछ बताया है अभी नहीं बताए अभी नहीं बताए तो आपको कुछ कांग्रेस पार्टी या किसी पार्टी की तरफ से फोन आया है नहीं आया तो यहाँ पर व्हाट वी सी इज दैट थर्टी सिक्स मेंबर्स इन ईच बस एंड इट इट इज ऑलमोस्ट यू नो अकाउंटिंग टू मोर देन वन ट्वेंटी दैट इज वन नाइनटीन ऑफ दी कैंडिडेट्स कैन बी टेकन इन दिस थ्री बसेज विच हैव बीन स्टेशन हियर दू नो हुर इज बुक दिस बस इज नॉट नोन एक्सेप्ट द मैनेजर हियर बट वॉट वी आर गेटिंग टू नो इज दैट दीज बसेज हैव बीन बॉट टू टेक अवे द फ्लॉक ऑफ कांग्रेस एम एल एज Uh, if they are uh, selected if they are elected uh, in this particular results if the uh, congress gains majority then uh, uh, you know to avoid any kind of uh, poaching of these mlas this uh, step has been taken by the congress party so this is where uh, the congress party has now uh, stationed all its candidates 11 ministers and along, along with dk shiv kumar in taj krishna hotel where these buses are also waiting uh, after the results are clear then uh, maybe if there if necessary uh, the all the candidates will be taken in this buses to a uh, you know unknown unidentified unknown location with camera person damodar abdul bashir hyderabad member uh, the uh, promise that you have made if congress is voted to power you will remove shave your beard or leave your tail what do you want what do you want to say right this moment sir yeah after we form the government probably i'll take off a beard 
So what do you have to say about the right, the current politics that is going on in Taj Krishna? We have seen that uh, you know Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister is in uh, uh, Park Hayat and other uh, MLAs also are there. So what do you have to say about that? No. Any, any coaching that can be done, any any MLAs that can uh, you know shift sides is what you feel. See, in, in contemporary politics, when we are dealing with people like the BJP and the BRS, we will take our precautions. And uh, while I don't see, I mean, I, I'm not aware of uh, uh, whatever is going on about poaching and all, but I'm confident that our uh, Congress elected MLAs will stay with us, you know, no problem. And if, if our uh, party organization is taking any steps to prevent others from having any mischievous ideas in their mind, I think that's, that's the right thing to do. I don't want to tell this is a personal win. This is the win of the people of uh, Telangana. People of Telangana has paid their gratitude to Sonia Gandhi for giving them the Telangana. They have seen the last 10 years rule. They are fed up with the rule. They have decided that there should be a change and change for a progress, change for a development, change for a gratitude. This is what I could say. India today has predicted your win, sir. India predicted your win. I am happy for that. I am happy for that. India today has predicted your win, sir. India predicted your win. I am happy for that. I am happy for that. So the celebrations continue here at the Congress headquarters in Hyderabad. And why not? This is the only result that they actually can afford to celebrate. While everywhere else, the Congress has to consider introspection. This is the saving grace for them. What's happened in Telangana and the Congress week has taken place in the face of BRS losing out on several seats. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Nabila Jamal. Uh, she's reporting from Jaipur where again it's a sea of saffron. Nabila, over to you. Dia Kumari is out. She is waving at the crowds there. Uh, they're all out now just to say hi to all the waiting uh, BJP workers right after their massive victory. A lot more coming up on Rajasthan. Who's going to be the chief minister of Rajasthan? Who will the BJP pick? That's a real million dollar question uh, that we're going to bring to you some of those insights as uh, the BJP just now takes a big sigh of relief. And just while they celebrate their victory, a lot of discussions happening on the high tables on top. Taking you through that on the other side of a short break. Stay with us. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. तेलंगाना में हमने पहले से कहा कि कांग्रेस पार्टी 70 प्लस यहाँ पे सीता जीतेगी तो वो नतीजे सामने आ रहे हैं तो पहले से ही हम सोनिया जी गांधी ने जो तेलंगाना की निर्मित यहाँ पर की थी तो तेलंगाना आने के बाद यहाँ पर जिस तरीके से केसीआर ने गवर्नमेंट चलाई है जे अपने फॉर्म हाउस से गवर्नमेंट चलाई जो भी उन्होंने वायदे किए थे वो कोई वायदा वो पूरा नहीं कर पाए या बेरोजगारी बड़ी है बड़े पैमाने पे बेरोजगारों को रोजगार नहीं मिला है यहाँ पर ना कोई दस साल के अंदर ऐसी कोई बात हुई है कि जो तेलंगाना के डेवलपमेंट के लिए उन्होंने कुछ किया हो और इस तरीके से गवर्नमेंट चलाना कोई डेवलपमेंट्स नहीं है सिर्फ एडवर्टाइज के माध्यम से सब तरफ एडवर्टाइज करना कि हम बहुत अच्छी गवर्नमेंट है के सी आर बड़े का किसानों के प्रति ये है वो है तो ये नहीं चलता है ज़्यादा दिन तक वो सब बातें लोगों के सामने खुलकर सामने आ जाती है उसका परिणाम लोगों के सामने रहता है कि गवर्नमेंट चलाने के बाद हमारे हित में क्या हुआ है अगर गवर्नमेंट चलाने चला रहे हो हमारे हित में कुछ नहीं हो रहा है सिर्फ बातें बना रहे हो हम तो लोग एक बार समझ जाती है कि ये गवर्नमेंट हमारे लायक नहीं है ये हमारा हित नहीं कर सकती सम ऑफ अवर कैंडिडेट्स हैव इन्फॉर्म्ड अस दैट हुम एवर ही हैज स्पोकन 
whomever this party people are uh, speaking, they all have spoken to us. They have informed. We have made elaborate arrangements for all our uh, candidates. All our uh, party cadres will be with them. Our leaders will be, be with them. They are safe. We will see that they are protected. Sir, so is there any possibility that Congress MLAs may break towards BRS? At no point of time, not even a single candidate or MLA will break. They have already informed whomever yes, they have spoken. They all have communicated to us. So we know their political strategy. We are well aware. So we are all are in a, a tight rope with everyone. श्रीमान नरेंद्र मोदी जी एमपी के मन में है और मोदी जी के मन में भी एमपी है उनके प्रति असीम श्रद्धा और अगाध विश्वास है उन्होंने जो यहां सभाएं की जनता से अपील की वो जनता के दिल को छू गई और उसी के कारण ये परिणाम जो अभी रुझान आ रहे हैं ये प्रमुख कारण है You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. हमारे प्रधानमंत्री श्रीमान नरेंद्र मोदी जी एमपी के मन में हैं और मोदी जी के मन में भी एमपी है अमित शाह जी की अचूक रणनीति उनका जिस ढंग से यहाँ साथ मिला और हमारे राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्रीमान जेपी नड्डा जी का मार्गदर्शन हमारे संगठन के नेतृत्व में कार्यकर्ताओं ने अनथक परिश्रम किया प्रदेश अध्यक्ष संगठन महामंत्री उनके साथ टीम जुटी रही और जैसा भूपेंद्र यादव जी ने शिव प्रकाश जी ने अश्विनी वैष्णव जी ने जो मार्गदर्शन किया उससे चुनाव के अभियान को सही गति और दिशा मिली और इसलिए मैंने पहले भी कहा था हम बिल्कुल कंफर्टेबल मेजॉरिटी शानदार मेजॉरिटी भारतीय जनता पार्टी को आएगी आपको लगता है कि मोदी मैजिक ने अपना काम कर दिया मध्य प्रदेश के अंदर ये मोदी मैजिक ही है क्योंकि हमने पहले दिन जब मेरा बूथ सबसे मजबूत का अभियान मानी प्रधानमंत्री आए थे दस लाख बूथों से संवाद किया था उन्होंने और हर बूथ को जीतने का संकल्प दिलाया था तब हमने कहा था कि मध्य प्रदेश के मन में मोदी और मोदी जी के मन में मध्य प्रदेश आज जनता ने ये आशीर्वाद प्रधानमंत्री जी को दिया है कि दो में ताकत के साथ प्रधानमंत्री जी को इतिहास बनाना है तो मध्य प्रदेश में हो रहे सेमीन फाइनल को प्रचंड बहुमत से जिताना है जनता ने आशीर्वाद दिया है जब आज तक इंडिया टुडे एक्सेस माई इंडिया पोल ने कहा 140 सौ चालीस से वन सीट्स आएंगी काफी ने कहा ये कैसे इतना बड़ा मार्जिन हो सकता है और आज वही सटीक हुआ नहीं मुझे भरोसा था एक तो आपका जो अनुमान है वो सटीक बैठता है बैठा है लेकिन जनता का जो प्यार सड़कों पर दिखता था लाडली बहने में जहाँ जाता था गले लगती थी सिर पे हाथ फिरती थी आंखों में आंसू आ जाते थे और कहती थी अपन जीतेंगे उससे लगता था कि परिणाम आएंगे आप मानते हैं कि औरतें लड़कियां इनका वोट सबसे मायने रखा ये कांग्रेस नहीं खींच पाई तो आप विश्लेषण करेंगे तो यही सामने आएगा 
कि बहनों ने जाति और धर्म से ऊपर उठ के भी हमें वोट किया आखिरी सवाल सर हमने जब सपोर्टर्स से और लोगों से पूछा कि मुख्यमंत्री यही रहेंगे या बदलेंगे तो सबने एक साथ आपका ही नाम लिया वो रेडी नहीं है नाम बदलने के लिए हम लोग कार्यकर्ता है भारतीय जनता पार्टी एक मिशन है भारत के निर्माण का वैभवशाली गौरवशाली शक्तिशाली संपन्न और समृद्ध भारत के निर्माण का हम उस मिशन के अंग है पार्टी तय करती कौन कहाँ काम करती Rajasthan has been the state that has voted for the ruling party in every election. Uh, in, uh, basically, uh, has had a, di- a rotating uh, pattern of uh, the BJP or either Congress taking to power here. So BJP has now come. I'm going to take you through all our reactions coming in on Rajasthan's massive victory for BJP. Rajasthan ki ye jo shandar jeet hai. ये माननीय हमारे प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी जिनका मंत्र था ये सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास और सबका प्रयास ये उसकी जीत है उनकी दी हुई गारंटी की जीत है ये जीत हमारे माननीय केंद्रीय मंत्री होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह जी की 
रणनीति की जीत है और ये जीत हमारे माननीय अध्यक्ष श्री नड्डा जी के कुशल नेतृत्व की जीत है और फिर सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट ये भी है ये जीत हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं की जिनके अथक प्रयास परिश्रम की जीत है उन्होंने दिन और रात हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के जो सपने को साकार करने की पूरी कोशिश करते हुए उस दिशा में आ, मेहनत करके ये ये परिणाम दिलाने का काम किया है और सबसे बड़ी बात तो ये है कि ये जीत हमारे जनता जनार्दन की है जिसने कांग्रेस के कुराज को नकारते हुए और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के सुराज को अपनाने का काम किया है मैम जिस प्रकार का रिस्पॉन्स और जिस प्रकार का जन समर्थन मिला आपको क्या लगता है नो 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 ये देखिए ऐसा आप मना कर रहे हैं लोगों को कि आपको सीएम ना कहें पर लोग लोगों को मना कर रही हैं कि आपको सीएम ना कहें पर आपकी बात मान नहीं रहे आपको सीएम जनता में उत्साह देखिए आप सभी को बोल रहे होंगे लेकिन ऐसा है अभी हम लोग बहुत अच्छे मतों से मैं तो जीत ही रही हूँ हमारे सारे प्रत्याशी जीत रहे हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार भारी बहुमत से राजस्थान में बनती हुई नजर आ रही है मध्य प्रदेश में भी और छत्तीसगढ़ में बहुत अच्छा कुमारी जी जिस तरह से पार्टी ने आपको विद्याधर नगर से चुनाव लड़ने की जिम्मेदारी दी और जिस तरह से आपको जन समर्थन मिला है अगर पार्टी आपको कहती है कि आपका अगला पड़ाव मुख्यमंत्री के पद के तौर पर जिम्मेदारी निभाने का होगा क्या आप उसको एक्सेप्ट करेंगी ये कोई ये कोई ऐसी चीज थोड़ी है कि आप एक्सेप्ट करो या नहीं करो देखिए ये सब डिसीजन पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड और टॉप लीडरशिप करेगी और जिम्मेदारी के लिए आप तैयार भारतीय जनता पार्टी का सीएम बनेगा सबसे बड़ी बात तो वही है वही है और हम लोग सब बहुत खुश है की हमारी सरकार बन रही है और ये भ्रष्टाचारी सरकार फाइनली आउट है राजस्थान ऐसी और हमेशा के लिए आउट है जी यहाँ पे कई कदावर नेता माने जाते हैं वसुंधरा राजे राजेंद्र राठौर सबके बावजूद अगर आपको पार्टी कहती है कि आप कमान संभालें लोकसभा से पहले लोकसभा चुनाव से पहले कुछ भी नहीं है अभी हम लोग चुनाव जीते हैं रिजल्ट आएंगे शाम तक ये सारे डिसीजन आगे होंगे टॉप लीडरशिप करेगा ये मेरे लिए जवाब देने का विषय नहीं है राजस्थान की जनता ने भारतीय जनता पार्टी को आशीर्वाद दिया है ऐसा स्पष्ट संकेत लगते हैं इसलिए जनता को और जो हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं ने मेहनत की उनको मैं बधाई और शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ उत्साह कारण मूड संवस कम्मा पैस्थिंदी ए प्रति कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ता मदन पड़ने समय में पीसीसी अमित कार्यकर्ता नूत उत्साह निंपड़मे ऊंचने विधा एवर ऊंदने विधा इवा कांग्रेस पार्टी सीट गेलुटा की मुख्य कारक पीसीसी अद्यक्ष रेवंत रेडी गार अद हनुमतराव गल समुखो इप्ड मुझे मिम्मेल्ल उद्देश्य इवा संव अंदर को इवा कांग्रेस पार्टी राष्ट्र अधिकार रावे की मो कार ठाकरे गार मोदी माटड़ता आ तर गौरव पीसीसी अगर ठाकरे सर पीसीसी प्रेसिडेंट रेवंत रेड्डी जी कांग्रेस के सीनियर नेता हनुमंतराव जी वर्किंग प्रेसिडेंट महेश गौड़ जी और सभी उपस्थित इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया सोशल मीडिया के सभी मेरे भाई सभी साथियों आज 
तेलंगाना असेंबली की मतगणना जो हुई है उसमें कांग्रेस पार्टी को तेलंगाना की जनता सभी ने मिलकर कांग्रेस पार्टी को जिताने के लिए पूरी पूरी कोशिश की है और हम आज कांग्रेस पार्टी तेलंगाना में सरकार बनाने जा रही है सभी का जो साथ मिला सभी जनता का जो साथ मिला तेलंगाना के जो कार्यकर्ता है सब नेता है भाई बहने हैं उन्होंने साथ देकर कांग्रेस पार्टी को जीत की ओर बढ़ाए हैं जिस तरीके से इस चुनाव में प्रदेश कांग्रेस कमेटी के अध्यक्ष रेवंत रेड्डी जी इनके नेतृत्व में पूरे तेलंगाना की प्रचार बड़ी अच्छी तरीके से सभी कांग्रेस पार्टी के नेताओं ने कार्यकर्ताओं ने की अहम भूमिका जो हमारी नेता सोनिया जी गांधी जिन्होंने जिस मकसद से तेलंगाना दिया था उस उद्देश्य को लागू करने के लिए जो मैंडेट है वो तेलंगाना की जनता को जनता ने कांग्रेस को दिया है जो तेलंगाना के लिए सभी हमारे ऑल इंडिया कांग्रेस कमेटी के अध्यक्ष खारगे साहब हमारे कांग्रेस के युवा नेतृत्व राहुल जी गांधी हमारे नेता प्रियंका जी गांधी जिन्होंने धुआधार इस प्रदेश में प्रचार किया है और वेणुगोपाल जी जो हमारे राजकीय जनरल सेक्रेटरी जो है उन्होंने अहम भूमिका की है तो उसके साथ साथ जो भी तेलंगाना के चुनाव में जो हमारे देश के कांग्रेस पार्टी के सीनियर लीडर यहां पर आए हैं उन्होंने प्रचार किया है सभी का भी मैं तेलंगाना कांग्रेस पार्टी की ओर से मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं और जिस तरीके से जिस उद्देश्य से रेवंत रेड्डी जी के नेतृत्व में पीसीसी के नेतृत्व में आज जीत के और हम बड़े हैं जो मकसद से जनता ने जितवाया है वो कांग्रेस पार्टी पूरी करने की कोशिश करेंगे मैं पीसीसी प्रेसिडेंट रेवंत रेड्डी जी को आपके सामने उनके विचार रखने की आप भी मैं सिफारिश करता हूं मीडिया मित्र अंदर के नमस्कार डिसंबर मूड रेल तुम श्रीकांताचारी अमर डिसंबर मूड रेल इरव मूड ना प्रजल विलक्षण तीर्प इन द्वारा राष्ट्र प्रजास्वाम्या श्रीकांताचार्य की घन निवा कांग्रेस पार्टी तरफ 
తెలంగాణ ఉద్యమంలో అనర్హుడైన శ్రీకాంతచారికి నివాళులు అర్పిస్తూ తెలంగాణ ప్రజలు ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని పునరుద్ధరించడానికి కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీని గెలిపించి శ్రీమత్ సోనియా గాంధీ గారికి కృతజ్ఞతలు తెలిపే అవకాశాన్ని కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ నాయకత్వానికి ఇచ్చినందుకు ఈ ప్రజల యొక్క ఆకాంక్షల్ని ఆలోచనని వాళ్ళ యొక్క ఆకాంక్షల్ని అమలు చేయడానికి ఈ తీర్పునివ్వడం ద్వారా కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ బాధ్యతను గుర్తు చేసిందు శ్రీమతి సోనియా గాంధీ గారికి కృతజ్ఞత తెలుపుకునే విషయంలో ఆనాటి ఉమ్మడి హైదరాబాదు రాష్ట్రం ముద్దుబిడ్డ మల్లికార్జున్ ఖర్గే గారి నాయకత్వంలో భారత్ జోడో యాత్ర కన్యాకుమారి నుంచి కశ్మీర్ వరకు నూట యాభై రోజులు భారత్ జోడో యాత్ర ద్వారా మా నాయకుడు రాహుల్ గాంధీ గారు మాకు స్ఫూర్తిని నింపి తెలంగాణ ప్రజలకు విశ్వాసాన్ని కల్పించి తెలంగాణ ప్రజలతో సోనియా గాంధీ గారు రాహుల్ గాంధీ గారు ప్రియాంక గాంధీ గారికి రాజకీయ పరమైన అనుబంధం కాదు కుటుంబ అనుబంధం ఇది ఈ కుటుంబంలో మేము కూడా సభ్యులము మీకు ఏ అవసరం వచ్చినా ఏ కష్టం వచ్చినా ఏ సందర్భమైనా మేము మీ తరఫున ఉంటాము కొట్లాడతాము మేము తెలంగాణ నాలుగు కోట్ల ప్రజలు మేము కూడా ఒకరి నమ్మకాన్ని కలిగించి ముఖ్యంగా నన్ను వెన్ను తట్టి ఏ సందర్భం వచ్చినా నిటారుగా నిలబడి కొట్లాడమని రాహుల్ గాంధీ గారు అండగా నిలబడడంతో నేను మా మిత్రుడు మల్లు బట్టి విక్రమార్క గారు సిఎల్పి పార్టీని ముఖ్యంగా మాజీ పిసిసి అధ్యక్షులు హనుమంతరావు గారు కావచ్చు లేకపోతే పెద్దలు జానా రెడ్డి గారు కావచ్చు మా పార్లమెంట్ సభ్యులు ఉత్తమ్ కుమార్ రెడ్డి కోమటిరెడ్డి గారు దామోదర్ రాజ్ నర్సింహ గారు శ్రీధర్ బాబు గారు క్యాంపెయిన్ కమిటీ చైర్మన్ మధు యాస్కి గారు లాంటి సీనియర్ నాయకుల అందరి సహకారంతో ఈ రోజు ఈ విజయాన్ని సాధించినము తెలంగాణ అమరవీరులకు ఆకాంక్షలని అమలు చేయడానికి తెలంగాణ ప్రాంతంలో ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని పునరుద్ధరించడానికి ప్రపంచానికి ఒక ఉద్యమ స్ఫూర్తిని మానవ హక్కులను కాపాడడంలో కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ ముందుంటుంది అని మానవ హక్కులను పునరుద్ధరించి ప్రజాస్వామ్యంలో ప్రజలు వాళ్ళ అభిప్రాయాలను తెలియజెప్పి చట్ట సభలలో ప్రతిపక్ష నాయకులు ప్రభుత్వం తీసుకున్న నిర్ణయాల మీద హేతుబద్ధమైన వాళ్ళ వాదనను పెట్టడానికి కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ అవకాశం ఇస్తుంది ఈరోజు కాంగ్రెస్ పార్టీ గెలుపును కల్వకుంట్ల తారక రామారావు గారు అభినందించిన్రు వారిని స్వాగతిస్తున్నా ప్రజలిచ్చిన తీర్పుకు తల వంచి కొత్త ప్రభుత్వం ఏర్పాటు చేయడానికి సంపూర్ణంగా ప్రతిపక్షము సహకరించి ప్రభుత్వ ఏర్పాటు ప్రక్రియలో కూడా ప్రతిపక్షాలందరూ పాల్గొని గెలిచిన పార్టీలే కాదు నాయకత్వం వహిస్తున్న పార్టీలను కూడా 
Congress is. All right, so that was our special telecast. Four states, uh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Telangana. Mizoram, of course, is awaited, and we'll be giving you, of course, the latest updates on that as well in the next few hours. That is going to be very important. But we hope you enjoyed watching the special telecast from the studios and from the ground on the assembly elections. There is a double-engine Sarkar in some states, and here it was the triple-engine women influence with this telecast. And women voters clearly have proven they cannot be ignored anymore in the the electoral discourse. Thank you for watching. From Nabila, Akshita and me, signing off for now. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Our Prime Minister, Sri Man Narendra Modi Ji, MP के मन में है और मोदी जी के मन में भी MP है अमित शाह जी की अचूक रणनीति उनका जिस ढंग से यहाँ साथ मिला और हमारे राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्रीमान जे पी नड्डा जी का मार्गदर्शन हमारे संगठन के नेतृत्व में कार्यकर्ताओं ने अनथक परिश्रम किया प्रदेश अध्यक्ष संगठन महामंत्री उनके साथ टीम जुटी रही और जैसा भूपेंद्र यादव जी ने शिव प्रकाश जी ने अश्विनी वैष्णव जी ने जो मार्गदर्शन किया उससे चुनाव के अभियान को सही गति और दिशा मिली और इसलिए मैंने पहले भी कहा था हम बिल्कुल कंफर्टेबल मेजॉरिटी शानदार मेजॉरिटी भारतीय जनता पार्टी को आएगी आपको लगता है कि मोदी मैजिक ने अपना काम कर दिया मध्य प्रदेश के अंदर ये मोदी मैजिक ही है क्योंकि हमने पहले दिन जब मेरा बूथ सबसे मजबूत का अभियान मानी प्रधानमंत्री आए थे दस लाख बूथों से संवाद किया था उन्होंने और हर बूथ को जीतने का संकल्प दिलाया था तब हमने कहा था कि मध्य प्रदेश के मन में मोदी और मोदी जी के मन में मध्य प्रदेश आज जनता ने ये आशीर्वाद प्रधानमंत्री जी को दिया है कि दो में ताकत के साथ प्रधानमंत्री जी को इतिहास बनाना है तो मध्य प्रदेश में हो रहे सेमीन फाइनल को प्रचंड बहुमत से जिताना है जनता ने आशीर्वाद दिया है watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company co presented by aapka joy bharat ka joy joy e bike co presented by nexa create inspire co powered by parul university vadodara gujarat co powered by arcelor mittal nippon steel india banaunga main banega bharat
destroys anti incumbency Madhya Pradesh with a stunning title defense, registers landslide victory in the state. Congress lags way behind in the race. के साथ जनता की सेवा प्रमाणिकता के साथ करते हैं तो लोग आपसे प्यार करते हैं कि बहनों ने जाति और धर्म से ऊपर उठ के भी हमें वोट किया बीजेपी स्ट्रिप एंड ऑफ गहलोत रूल इन राजस्थान विद लैंडस्लाइड विन बीजेपी स्वीट इन ये हमारे प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी जिनका मंत्र था ये सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास और सबका प्रयास ये उसकी जीत है वो मोदीपे कार्यक्रम माणिकराव ठाकरे गोजु विजय वेप नी अंदर सहक मुख्य लक्षला मंदिर कांग्रेस पार्टी कार्यकर्त श्रम कृषि मुफ लक्ष निद्योग युवक पटद मनस्फूर्ति धन्यवाद श्रीमती विजयशा श्रीमती विजयशा प्रचार कार्यक्रम कार्यक्रम आह्वान बल्को वो प्रचार पार्टी मुझे नड़प्चित वो तन दिन शैली कांग्रेस मुझे नड़प्चर श्रेणु स्फूर्ति श्रीमति विजयशा गारी पीसीसी अद्यक्ष धन्यवाद कृतज्ञता मित्र बहुत खुशी की बात है चार करोड़ जनता हमारे नेता श्रीमती सोनिया गांधी जी श्री मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे जी और इस देश युवता को आदर्श के नेता राहुल गांधी जी कन्याकुमारी से लेकर कश्मीर तक चार हजार किलोमीटर पैदल चलते चलते तेलंगाना को आए इक्कीस दिन कुछ कम 400 किलोमीटर तेलंगाना में पाद यात्रा किया हमको बहुत भरोसा उम्मीद देकर आगे कांग्रेस पार्टी को रणनीति तय करके राजनीति में कांग्रेस को जिताने के लिए बहुत कुछ मदद दिए इंस्पिरेशन दिए और प्रियंका जी इलेक्शन कैंपेनिंग में बहुत सारे मीटिंग में पार्टिसिपेट किए ये सब हमारे हाईकमान को ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ तेलंगाना कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड माय इंचार्ज मानिकराव ठाकरे के तरफ से मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूं पार्टी हाईकमान को दूसरी बात तेलंगाना के जनता जब जरूरत है तब सही तरीका से सही जवाब देने के लिए हमेशा हाजिर रहते इस बार तेलंगाना में कांग्रेस सरकार बना देके 
यहाँ के जो शहीद हुए युवा था उनके विचारधारा को आगे ले जाने के लिए हमको संपूर्ण हम इंस्पिरेशन लिए वो हम जो भी वादा किए जो शहीद होकर उन लोग जो देश के लिए क्या किए वो पूरा आगे हम लेकर जाएंगे और के टी आर ने आज ट्विटर में वेलकम किया कांग्रेस पार्टी जीत को मैं भी बीआरएस को धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ ये स्पिरिट आगे सरकार चलाने में भी दिखाना है क्योंकि 10 साल अब सरकार में बैठा हुआ है अभी विपक्ष में बैठने वाले विपक्ष के सुझाव हमेशा हम खातिर करते हैं पॉलिसी हम बनाएंगे सजेशन विपक्ष की जिम्मेदारी है सजेशन देने का तो इसीलिए असेंबली हम चलाएंगे विपक्ष का सुझाव लेंगे अच्छा सरकार बना के गरीब लोगों को मदद करने के लिए हमेशा कांग्रेस पार्टी कोशिश करने वाले इसमें हम बीआरएस और कलवकुंट चंद्रशेखर राव भारतीय जनता पार्टी मिस्टर किशन रेड्डी एमआईएम अध्यक्ष असदुद्दीन ओवैसी एंड सीपीआई सीपीएम एंड तेलंगाना जनसमिति प्रोफेसर कोदन राम सबके मदद लेकर सुझाव लेकर एक अच्छी सरकार बना के देश में एक आदर्श सरकार बनाने के लिए हमेशा हम लोग कोशिश करेंगे